Hello everyone, welcome to another amazing video. If you enjoy the content, I ask that you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss the upcoming parts and new videos. Now, without further ado, let's get into today's video. Are you ready? Let's go. In an airplane flying through the skies, the radio crackles and the crew members were asked to report the situation. If they heard the radio, they were supposed to respond. The young man in a black suit replied that the target had been destroyed. They quickly replied, as expected from a first-class mercenary. Beside him, in seats, there were many unconscious and bloodied people. Suddenly, he began to scream, asking what was happening. They responded to him, saying that he had worked hard for the organization all these years, but he knew too much. So let him take all these secrets to the grave. At that moment, the plane started to plummet, and many flashes of fire swept through the cabin, followed by a brilliant explosion. A moment later, Lin Yuan woke up in an unknown place, completely frightened. He clutched his chest and looked around, wondering where he was and if he hadn't died in the explosion. He grabbed his head and realized that something seemed to have damaged his brain. He bowed to the ground, still holding his head. A thousand years ago, when the red moon of blood shone in the sky, spatial fissures opened everywhere and the era of monsters began across the world. Hordes of monsters started ruthlessly destroying everything they saw. Human weapons were useless in the fight against these monsters. After 10 years, only 100 million people remained on the planet, and humanity was on the brink of complete extinction. But, in a moment of profound despair, the hope of salvation emerged. The master of spiritual beasts. Gradually, many people received their spirits, and each generation of soul beast lords inherited and developed their abilities. Humanity successfully created a new civilization that could resist the monsters. People had hope again, but each awakened beast has its own rank, from the lowest rank to SSS rank. And he, Lin Yen, his beast soul is of the lowest rank. He has no family or friends, must rely on the beast soul to establish himself, but he is mercilessly mocked that he is just a low-rank beast soul. He is so weak, how does he still have the courage to come to school? They humiliate him whenever they want. He is just a piece of trash thrown away by the world. A group of rough people beats him on the street and shouts at him not to approach Sumu, or they will beat him to death. Lin Yuan scratches the back of his head and thinks, so that means he has moved. God took pity on him because he was brutally murdered in his previous life. Then he saw in front of him a person similar to him. This clone asked if he had also been abandoned. Lin Yuan looks at all of this suspiciously and realizes that it's terrible because he can't move his body. The clone told him that if that's the case then leave this cruel world with him. Lin Yuan asked if he didn't want revenge. The clone replied that he was dead and wouldn't have a way to seek revenge, and that Lin Yuan is just a pathetic kid who took over his body. He responded with a threatening look that pathetic doesn't mean weak, because they should just accept defeat and let the world decide their fate, as they can't change it, and choose their own path. The clone asked if it was necessary to keep living only to die after another betrayal and if that wasn't painful. Lin Yuan shouted that it hurts not being able to choose but now he wants to live by his own rules. The clone replied, touching his hair, that it all sounds great, but if he continues to live in his trashy body, sooner or later he'll end up like him. He replied that if he doesn't try, he'll never know. He will prove that even trash can rise to the top and show the world that his destiny is in his hands. The clone told him that he was strange and wondered if he would die again. The clone said it was good he keep his word and seek revenge for him and disappeared into the air. From that day on, he called himself Lin Yuan. He suddenly realized that he could move and told himself not to worry. He would definitely keep his promise. But how could he strengthen himself? The hierarchy of this world's law is that owners of low-rank beast souls only do low-paying jobs, barely managing to survive. Of course, in extreme cases, he can return to his previous job, becoming an assassin again. The system informs that the beast has awakened and mastered the beast evolution system, after which all the characteristics of the black lizard beast appeared. Lin Yuan saw the system window in front of him and wondered what it was. Long greeted him and said that from now on, he would accompany and observe his growth. He asked again if this is his beast. Long replied yes. Now they are partners whose bond is built on trust. 
they will definitely get along well with each other. Lin Yuan quickly got up and walked in the other direction, causing Long to ask where he was going and if he wasn't curious about how he could help him. He replied that he would definitely ask when the time comes, but now he had an important thing to do. Long said again that if he needed help, just ask. Meanwhile, a girl named Sumu was walking in the middle of a narrow street, and someone stopped her and told her not to run away anymore. She asked this man what he needed. The guy brought her a bouquet of roses and invited her on a date. She told him he was daydreaming. Did he really think she would be interested in tyrants? He replied that he knew she had an S-rank beast, but she had awakened it recently. He had specially found some B-rank beast soul masters. The guy asked, did she think he couldn't get what he wanted? She shouted at him furiously. He told her that he had also beaten that trash. Sumu shouted at him and asked what he did to Lin Yuan. He replied that he was too arrogant and dared to cross his path. Now only the two of them were left, and she had no choice but to go out with him. At that moment, someone suddenly ran through all of his guards with incredible speed and approached him from behind. It was Lin Yuan, who grabbed him by the neck and began to strangle him. The guy realized it was him and shouted his name. Lin Yuan smiled and said, so this is where he is. As soon as his guards realized what was happening, they jumped and started approaching Lin Yuan, but they didn't have time to do anything before Lin Yuan kicked the guy in the back and moved away from them. The guards tried to catch him, but in a moment, he was already far away from them. While the guards turned to him, the guy who took the blow fell face first on the ground and many petals flew out of the bouquet. He became very angry, pointed his finger at Lin Yuan, and shouted to his guards to kill him. The men split up and started walking toward Lin Yuan with a threatening look and shouted, Yes, we need to use transformations. At that moment, each guard transformed into a huge beast. Lin Yuan saw this and thought about the transformation, and they looked exactly like animals. And he wondered if he could do that too. Long replied that his beast was just a common lizard. Evolution points were granted by absorbing others and winning battles, thus obtaining chests with rewards. He said he didn't need to use the transformation to win. Long shouted in fear, asking if he wanted to expose himself to attack in a human body, saying he was crazy because he would be killed with just one attack. He replied that if he transformed, he would die even faster, remembering that in his past life, he was an assassin. At that moment, the man shouted to his guards, asking what they were waiting for. They should attack him. The guards, who had turned into monsters, began to approach him growling loudly. Lin Yuan silently watched what was happening, and at that moment, a bright light shone in the space. The man watched everything with a treacherous expression on his face, saying that Lin Yuan was an idiot because he would be torn apart. After reaching this conclusion, he laughed, but suddenly a dense cloud of dust appeared in front of him, through which he noticed two shadows and became alert. Lin Yuan ran quickly and jumped on the shoulders of one of the monsters, wrapped his legs around the monster's neck, and began to twist its head. And after a moment, he succeeded, and the monster's blood spurted. He descended to the ground and the monster was completely destroyed. Sumu watched what was happening and was stunned to realize that he was able to defeat a B-rank beast with his own hands. He knelt down, thankful that his skills from his past life had not disappeared because this body was much weaker. Sumu continued to admire his strength. Long shouted to him, congratulating him on defeating a B-rank beast and receiving a black ear on chest. He asked it with interest about the chest. A chest descended from the ski in front of him, and Long shouted that this chest could contain useful things like super equipment or points to level up skills. He yelled for the chest to open, and Long said it was a random skill book. He could obtain a random skill, whose level would range from rank E to rank A, with a 1% chance of getting an A rank skill. He reached out to the system window, thinking that everything was fine as long as it wasn't a rank E skill. Suddenly, there was a gleam of light, and Long shouted in surprise. It was an A-rank skill daylight. Once the beast soul was activated, it would be able to emit white light capable of melting even steel, with a maximum temperature reaching 100,000 degrees. He was thrilled it was an A-rank skill, and Long said he was really lucky. It was amazing. Maybe they should buy a lottery ticket. Meanwhile, Lin Yuan pointed his finger at the man standing in shock, with the three beasts still behind him. 
and he said that now was not the time to celebrate. The man pointed his finger at him and shouted, running behind his monsters, that these creatures should kill him, and he would give them ten million. The animals were very eager for this victory, and suddenly, Sumu turned to Lin Yuan and offered to summon the beast and help him. He stopped her with his hand and said there was no need for that, asking her to go further away. At that moment, he thought she was one of the few who had been kind to him, and he would not allow her to be harmed. Suddenly, a huge monster appeared above him, creating a whirlwind around his body. He made several quick movements and dodged all the approaching attacks, after which he jumped on the beast's head and with a quick hand movement, destroyed the creature turning its head again. After such sudden movements, he jumped away from the monster, and this creature was thrown straight into the wall and completely destroyed. Long cheered, shouting that this was a victory, and another chest was obtained. Lin Yuan smiled and took a defensive position, thinking they shouldn't assume he was the same guy from the past. After these thoughts, he quickly ran towards the remaining monsters, both shouting at the same time, God, he's doing it so fast. With just one movement, he ripped off the heads of the monsters and destroyed them. The man raised his hands and shouted that this simply couldn't be. He begged to let him go because he was wrong. Lin Yuan's eyes gleamed with intense light, and he said with a threatening expression that it was already too late. The man was very scared by this response and stood stunned, his body covered in cold sweat from fear. Sumu, who was still behind him, looked at him and thought he was a very strong person. He looked the other way and said, holding the backpack in his hands, that they were already leaving. She replied, looking at the broken-headed bully, Okay. She thought it seemed that he wouldn't bother her anymore. She felt embarrassed for being an S-rank beast soul master and not protecting herself, but Lin Yuan saved her, and she didn't even imagine he was so strong. He was surprised by her look and asked what was wrong, if he had something on his face, because she was looking at him that way. She spoke with a slight fear. No. After what happened, she tried to say in a trembling voice that she wanted to thank him and ask him to forgive her for dragging him into all this. He replied that it was normal because they were classmates and should help each other. She told him she thought they were friends. He asked her what was wrong. She smiled and answered with embarrassment. Nothing. But it's already late. She had to go home and said they would see each other at school tomorrow. At that moment, she wondered in her mind what was wrong with her. Long spoke to Lin Yuan, saying he was very lucky. Lin Yuan lowered his gaze and asked him not to say such nonsense. She is one of the friends of the original owner of the body, and if she now belonged to him, then of course, he needed to protect her. Okay, now it's time to talk about their case, said Lin Yuan with a trembling voice. Lin Yuan pondered, as expected of a former assassin. His look and tone were quite intimidating. He arrived at Lin Yuan's house, entered, and shouted, activating the beast soul, after which his body shone with a bright yellow color. Long closed his mouth in surprise when he saw Lin Yuan transform into a beast and said that in the world of monsters, he would only serve as a snack. He thought it wasn't surprising that his best beast soul was called Trash. Long asked if he needed his advice. Lin Yuan shouted at him that he could go ahead and say it. Long retorted that he could absorb and earn enhancement points and use them to strengthen himself. He had just received the points from the chest. Lin Yuan asked again what he meant by absorption. Long told him to eat and pointed his claw towards the refrigerator. Lin Yuan looked at him confused, and Long continued to say that he needed to eat. Beast souls were like ordinary animals, and first, he needed to consume a lot of protein. He also needed to remember to stay in shape and eat raw meat. Lin Yuan looked silently at the raw chicken and didn't approach the table. Long got a little upset and asked him to eat quickly. Then he would strengthen immediately. Lin Yuan thought that yes, he would do it to level up. He grabbed the raw chicken by the throat and took a bite of the meat. Long told him after a moment that he had successfully consumed the fresh chicken meat. Lin Yuan was satisfied with the food he had eaten and rubbed his stomach. Five enhancement points were received. Lin Yuan asked to use them to grow, and Long told him okay. Lin Yuan continued lying on the floor and suddenly he stood up and shouted that he had eaten without blinking and he needed more meat, saying there would be a meat feast that night. Long said he approved of that. The next day, as a result of absorbing 100 wild rabbits, 
his characteristics increased, and now his beast was much larger, and he thought not only the level but also the talent would increase. He arrived at school, sat at his desk and, spinning a pencil in his hand, thought that although he was no longer so insignificant, it wasn't enough because he needs to get more points and, when he becomes even larger, he will need to find a secluded place, not to attract attention. He was reborn and will rise to the top of this world. Suddenly his classmates approached him and shouted something with a threatening look on their faces. He looked at one of them and wondered if Feng, this bully, often bothers Lin Yuan and Jiang. He wondered why they always act like idiots. It's simple. Among them is Wu Mo Xuan, the master of one of the S-rank beast souls in the school. Feng continued to shout, calling him trash, asking how much longer he should repeat, that he should go faster and not make them wait. The other guy shouted that he should feel honored just by the fact that they allowed him to do something for them. The guy asked if he understood, calling him an idiot. Lin Yuan shouted back at them to leave him alone, and broke the pencil in his hand in anger. Feng pointed his finger at him and shouted, asking what he was saying. Lin Yuan asked calmly if he didn't understand the human language. Wu Moshuan approached and said that the weakest a rank beast soul was so bold today. He could easily end his lizard, so he shouldn't show off. Lin Yuan looked silently at him with a threatening look, and he continued to say that trash should stay in the trash. It's a shame there's such a weak beast soul like him in their school. If he were in his place, he would have died in the ditch. Lin Yuan replied that, unfortunately, he planned to live comfortably. Wu Moshuan told him threateningly and loudly, leaning over his desk, that he would make him change his mind. Lin Yuan asked him to try, with a smile on his face. At that moment, the teacher entered and asked the students to take their seats. It was the class teacher named Zhang Yue. Wu Moshuan saw her and told him that he was lucky today, but he wouldn't be lucky every day. Long flew to Lin Yuan and said loudly that this guy is so arrogant, but he remains so calm. Lin Yuan replied that he is an S-rank beast soul, and it's natural for him to be arrogant, but sooner or later, he will be defeated. Long thought. He said such ruthless words with such a calm tone, it seems he's becoming like a master. Zhang Yue said that she would now distribute the school's cultivation resources to them, called beast soul crystals. The boys listened attentively to the teacher, and Lin Yuan wondered what that was. Long replied that, Beast soul crystals are the blood and flesh transformed from a monster after death, usually divided into high, medium, low, and worst ranks, containing enormous energy suitable for absorbing beast souls, and they can also significantly enhance one's abilities in the world of masters. Such beast soul crystals are equivalent to the existing currency. The higher the rank of the crystal, the higher the price, with even low rank crystals costing $1,000. Lin Yuan responded that it was indeed a good thing. Zhang Yue announced loudly that the school distributed the beast soul crystals according to the rank of their awakened beast souls. This was done to show how cruel the world of beast soul masters is, where everything is based solely on strength. The strong are at the top, and the weak are eliminated. Survival of the fittest is the highest justice in the world of beast soul masters. Wu Mo Xuan, whose awakened beast soul is the S rank skeleton king, received 10 high rank beast soul crystals. Wu Mo Xuan stood up and stated that he is the master of one of the two S rank beast souls in the school, the other is Sumu. Before them, there was a high school student who awakened the soul of an S rank golden sun crow beast, and now he is the strongest lord of the nine stars. Wu Mo Xuan would definitely become just as strong. Zhang Yue approached him and said that, although he had risen so high, he shouldn't relax with his talent. If he develops gradually, he could become the beast soul master, Wu Mushan replied, thanking her, and assured her that he wouldn't disappoint. She then turned to Jiang, whose awakened soul is an A-rank giant stone beetle, and awarded him five medium-rank beast soul crystals. Li Feng, with a B-rank hurricane demon wolf soul, received five low-rank beast soul crystals. Lin Yuan, with an E-rank lizard beast soul, received five of the worst-rank beast soul crystals. Wu Moshuan decided to ask aloud if, with an E-rank beast soul, Lin Yuan intended to break the school record with such a useless beast soul. He didn't think Lin Yuan would become a master. It's better to become an ordinary worker and spare himself the shame. 
He and a group of guys humiliated him and laughed loudly. Lin Yuan approached the teacher and thanked her for the crystals he received, and she asked him to work harder. Wu Mo Xuan asked again with a smile. If the worst rank beast soul crystal was worth 1,000 coins, could he buy a bag with radiation inside? It's not suitable for cultivating a beast soul. He started shouting that he didn't want such trash, even if it were given, but who cares? At this moment, Long whispered to Lin Yuan in his ear that lower grade beast soul crystals are formed when monsters are destroyed by nuclear weapons and their flesh and blood are contaminated by nuclear radiation after death, but they contain a huge amount of energy that his devouring ability can absorb. This is a great thing for him. He listened attentively to Long's statements and pondered that this is how it works. Zhang Yue said it was okay. She would give him a high rank beast soul crystal herself. He smiled and thanked her for that, but asked if he could request to exchange the high rank crystal for a low rank one. She shouted at him angrily, asking if he could hear what she was saying. She knows he's eager to increase the beast soul's power, but she can't feed it countless extremely harmful crystals. He thanked her again and said that, in that case, he would accept it. He sat in his place with a high rank beast soul crystal. Wu Mo Xuan looked at him, thinking how Lin Yuan's talent was insignificant, and how could Professor Zhang Yue be so supportive of him? Long said once again, next to Lin Yuan's face, that the cost of a high-quality beast soul crystal is 10,000, while a low-quality one costs only 100 coins. He could exchange it for 100 low-quality beast soul crystals, but ordinary people don't carry so much money with them. He asked what he should do. Long suggested going to the Beast Soul Palace after school and exchanging it there. He replied that it was a good idea. At that moment, someone called his name. It was Sumu, who approached and asked with a smile on her face why he was there. She offered to go home together after school because she needed to tell him something. He said it was okay, and she continued to say that she had just heard from the principal that the guy who bothered her had left the school, which was great. At that moment, Li Feng, Wu Moshuan, and Jiang were surprised to see her approaching him. Li Feng asked in surprise if she wasn't the school beauty, Sumu, and wondered if they knew each other. Li Feng was also very surprised and exclaimed why she, the owner of the S-rank snow-niled fox beast soul, was hanging out with trash. They had a good conversation with Lin Yuan, and Wu Moshuan wondered why this Lin Yuan was so lucky. He has the weakest soul, and he became very irritated, questioning why everyone was so kind to him, from the teacher to Sumu. In the evening, after school, this group stopped Lin Yuan at the classroom exit. He asked with a smile what else they wanted from him. Wu Mo Xuan asked aloud what kind of love potion he gave to the teacher, and what means he used to get close to Sumu. Last time, he made that rich guy detain her, so he could intervene heroically and become the savior. As a result, that bully left the school and disappeared. Lin Yan asked with a threatening look if it was him. He realized that it was him who killed Lin Yuan. Wu Mo Xuan shouted that a beautiful girl like Sumu is suitable for a talent like him, not for useless weaklings, so why is she with him? Wu Mo Xuan said he should stay away from her, and asked if he understood that. Furthermore, Wu Mo Xuan told him that wherever they appear, he should run away with incredible speed. Lin Yuan thought that if a fight started at school, he would be punished. Teacher Zhang Yue is so kind to him, and he didn't want to make things difficult for her. After these thoughts, he approached Wu Moshuan's face and said that he couldn't and didn't want to do that. Wu Moshuan angrily shouted that, for an arrogant person like him, he would do him a favor and open Sumu's eyes to the fact that he is just trash. But he doesn't want her to think that he is bullying the weak. Wu Manxuan proposed the following. If he passes the seven-day beast tests, he will eat a bag of lower-grade crystals, and if he loses, he will disappear from their sight. Lin Yuan replied that it was a serious bet and asked if he was sure he could handle it. Wu Moshuan said, why should he be afraid to bet with trash like him? Lin Yuan agreed with him with a smile and shook his hand in approval. After some time, he went out to meet Sumu, and she told him that he was late. He replied that something had happened, asking why she called him. She said with a smile that nothing important had really happened. She has an S-rank snow-niled fox beast soul, so the school gave her ten high-quality crystals, and she wants to share half of them with him. He asked what exactly she wanted to share, and she replied crystals, what else would it be? 
She heard that he only received low-rank crystals because he has an E-rank beast soul. In that fight where he defended her, he was so resilient and not inferior to a B-rank. As long as he trains hard, he will definitely be able to develop. She wonders how they could give him only low-quality soul crystals. He thanked her for the concern but said he couldn't accept her crystals. She retorted that she heard that the beast test difficulty is not easy. Even B-rank individuals can fail. She doesn't need all of them, and he should absorb them because it will help him a lot for the test. He asked if she wasn't afraid that by giving him half of the crystals, she wouldn't be able to pass the tests. She turned to him with a slight smile and told him not to underestimate her. She has an S-rank, nine-tailed snow fox beast soul. She can pass it even without soul crystals. He heard her and asked how that would be, although he couldn't tell her the reason. But if they could pass the tests, he would accept her proposal. She asked again if that was true, so they agreed. He replied that of course it was true, but if he failed the tests, then the game wouldn't be worth it, so he needed to prepare well. She replied that she agreed with that. He looked into her eyes and thought that on the day of the beast test, she would be shocked by his strength. Long told him that she cared a lot about him. They said their goodbyes and went their separate ways. Lin Yuan told Long in response that he was talking nonsense to take him to the Beast Soul Palace. Long said how quickly his mood changed. Beast Soul Palace. They entered, and Long said that the palace is intended only for Beast Soul Masters. It is where the beast will be tested. He agreed and said that he first needed to exchange the crystals. He approached the manager and asked to exchange it for low-grade Beast Soul crystals. The man looked at him questioning this attitude and adjusted his glasses to carefully examine the crystals. He thought Lin Yuan had gone mad, trading a high-quality crystal for garbage. He slammed the bag of crystals on the table and said, 100 low-quality crystals, the commission fee is 500 coins. Lin Yuan replied that it was okay. Long asked him if he didn't think he was some kind of crazy. Lin Yuan responded, putting the bag on his shoulder that there's a fine line between genius and madness. The man, still shocked, observed them closely. In an abandoned warehouse outside the city, a huge monster stood up and roared loudly. The system window reported, beast soul, giant black lizard, status, growth phase. Talent evaluation, rank B, level, seven star battle beast, height, 3.1 M, weight, 540 kilos, attack methods, bite, Claw attack, daylight ability. Magical sparks appeared around the black lizard's body, and a small purple crystal appeared on its paw. Long was surprised by this, and shouted that it had successfully absorbed nuclear radiation, receiving 1,000 evolution points. Lin Yuan, reincarnated as a lizard, said that a chicken gave only 5 points, and by absorbing a low-quality soul crystal, he received 1,000. These 100 stones are equivalent to 100,000 evolution points. Each level is divided into 9 stars. His current level is a 7-star battle beast. There are ranks like Emperor, Beast Lord, Beast Master, Beast General, and War Beast. After absorbing all the crystals, in his opinion, there is nothing difficult in the beast test. A week later, at the Beast Soul Palace, many people were communicating and discussing urgent matters. A guy said he was so nervous. He absorbed all the soul crystals issued by the school and only had a four-star battle beast, unsure if he could pass the test. Another guy told him it was terrible. He already had a four-star beast, which is at least a rank B, while his was rank D, barely reaching two stars. This year there are two S-rank individuals in their school, the Skeleton King Reptile Wu Mo Xuan and the Nine-Tailed Snow Fox Sumu. He didn't even know what their level was. The other guy feared that only they could enter the Yanjing Beast University or the City Beast University. Wu Manxuan shouted and reached out towards Lin Yuan, saying that the soul crystal Professor Zhang Yue gave him helped his pathetic lizard advance to the first level of martial beast. Lin Yuan didn't pay attention to his questions and continued on his own. Suddenly Lin Yuan turned around and decided to ask him if he was ready for this. Wu Mo Xuan crossed his arms and continued talking that his beast soul had already reached the level of an eight-star martial beast. He would easily pass the test. Lin Yuan replied that he didn't ask that. He asked if he was willing to eat a bag of low-quality crystals. 
The people around were very surprised by the question and began to whisper to each other. Lin Yuan had gone mad. Wu Mo Xuan possesses an eight-star battle beast. Wu Mo Xuan and his group of threatening guys were irritated by his behavior. But suddenly, Professor Zhang Yue turned to the students and announced that the exam would begin soon. She asked them to bring their identification and ticket, entering the palace one by one. Many students were scared of the imminent events. Wu Mo Xuan pointed his fist at Lin Yuan and shouted to him to wait until the end of the test, as he would be finished. Lin Yuan responded emotionlessly that it was okay. In the Beast Soul Palace on the third floor exam area, the man in the center of the exam area said, Exam number 95821. Lin Yuan, please prepare for the exam. He approached the man and replied that he was there. The examiner asked him, carefully examining the documents in his hands, if he had awakened an E-rank beast soul. He replied yes. The man thought it was a pity that he probably wouldn't pass the exam and wished him good luck, giving him a pat on the shoulder. Lin Yuan thanked the professor for his support, then sat in the system chair, put on the helmet, and the system informed him that the combat simulation would begin shortly. The countdown from five to one began, and a moment later, his eyes opened, shining with intense light. He found himself in a barren desert and realized there seemed to be no terrain advantage he could exploit. He heard a loud noise, prompting him to look around, and in the distance, he noticed a monster approaching, making him very cautious. It was a desert wolf, a three-star war beast, the opponent of the first phase of the beast test. The desert wolf began to growl loudly and opened its mouth widely. Lin Yuan tried to dodge the sudden movements of this monster, wondering if it was really so weak. Long asked Lin Yuan if he wouldn't merge with the beast soul. He replied, while observing the monster being attacked, that after being attacked by low-level beasts, it wasn't necessary. Seizing this opportunity, he would warm up his muscles well. Suddenly, there were several monsters behind him. The professor was very surprised to watch what was happening and wondered if this guy had passed the first level. Suddenly, Lin Yuan began to attack new monsters with his own hands, twisting the necks of these creatures. The professor shouted for the others to look. Another man was surprised by his reaction and asked what was happening. The professor wondered what was happening. Lin Yuan had killed a three-star desert wolf without using the power of a beast soul. He hadn't even merged with the beast soul yet. Everyone was surprised by his talent. He destroyed the last monster and the blood of this creature was spilled. He made a decisive move and finally finished off this creature. The teachers started shouting and asking how he managed to do that. He was just a monster, defeating three three-star desert wolves without merging with a beast soul, an unprecedented event. The professor grabbed his head and shouted to the other man, so he thinks Lin Yuan is cheating after all. The purpose of the exam was to test the strength of the beast soul, and he didn't even take advantage of it. The other professor said with a serious expression that this is indeed against the rules, but it's not cheating. They will see if he passes the third level, if not he will fail the beast test. The professor replied that it's true. The first two levels are designed for candidates to adapt to the pace of real combat. The third is the key. It's almost impossible to pass the third level without resorting to the power of the beast soul, even with the strength he is showing now. It's a pity that his beast soul talent assessment is only rank E, but if his beast soul were stronger, his future would be promising. Long asked him to save his strength. This is just an appetizer. The real test is yet to come. He was among the monsters attacking each other, and suddenly, an incredibly huge monster, with bright red eyes, appeared before him and looked at him threateningly. Long said that this is the six-star king of the desert wolves. Lin Yuan's mouth opened in shock, and cold sweat broke out on his face. He spoke with a serious expression that defeating a beast of this level requires a high level of beast soul talent. No wonder they say that only candidates with rank A and above beast souls can pass the beast tests in the first year of training. It's time to show his true strength, he spoke aloud, merging with the beast soul. Long told him that he finally did it. At that moment his whole body lit up in blue, and the system window showed him all the characteristics of the enormous black lizard he had transformed into. After a moment, Long shouted with joy that he had reached a higher level. This is a new beginning. He opened his huge mouth and roared loudly at the monster. Suddenly, one of the teachers watching what was happening became pensive and wondered what happened to the weak animal soul of the lizard. 
even something as small as the ability to turn into a Tyrannosaurus. The professor shouted and asked if he made a mistake during the inspection, and asked if he really was rank E. Another professor shouted, showing him the documents, he's not blind if he doesn't believe it, then he should check for himself. The registration card shows exactly rank E. The professor asked again, shouting in perplexity, then what's happening? A giant beast like this should be at least a general rank. This is incredible. Only a few days have passed since the awakening of the beast soul, and he already has a general rank beast soul, which means his talent is not inferior to S rank in fact, it's SS or SSS. The enormous lizard stood before the small, frightened and defenseless monster. He was able to reach this level. The monster bared its teeth and leaped high, growling loudly. The lizard's body continued to shine with magical light. Lin Yuan swung his paw and effortlessly destroyed his opponent. The teachers were incredibly shocked and exclaimed that he killed the six-star beast in a second. One of them ordered the other to stay there and continue recording the details while he reported the situation to the chief examiner. The professor urged him to hurry. Another professor, who ran to report what was happening, smiled and thought that finally, an extraordinary talent had appeared in their city. Many wolves began to approach Lin Yuan, and he wondered if more wolves had appeared. The difficulty level of the exam was a bit disappointing for him. Long flew closer to him and shouted that the first three levels are necessary to achieve a passing score. He should continue to fight to get a higher score, as many famous universities recruit beast soul masters based on the beast test results. Six star desert wolf and ten three star wolves. This level seems to test the combat ability of the soul masters. He roared loudly and realized that for him, this was child's play. The rest of the wolves approached him, but at that moment he made a sudden move and the blood of the monsters spilled. After that, there was a bright flash of light and one of the wolves was destroyed and heavily bloodied. Lin Yuan continued to destroy one monster after another, and after some time, he had defeated all the monsters. After defeating them all, he wondered how many more levels there were. Meanwhile, Chief Examiner Xiuan asked why he was called and why the rush. He asked if they didn't know that proctors are not allowed to leave the examination area without authorization. The professor told him, Mr. Zhao Shan, that a candidate had extraordinary indicators, so he wanted him to look personally. Zhao Shan asked, What did he say? Is something out of the ordinary? The examiner continued to explain that his talent assessment did not match the strength he demonstrated. Zhao Shan replied that there was nothing unusual about that. Many people surpass their limits during real combat. A rank B can outperform the performance of a rank A. He is exaggerating too much. The examiner shouted back that his talent was rank E. Zhao Shan turned abruptly to him and asked again, shouting, How dare he participate in the beast test with such low talent? This guy is bold, and he was only summoned because the student awakened a rank E beast soul. The examiner shouted back, Mr. Zhao Shan, first, you need to look at his fight and then draw conclusions. He went to the computer to show everything that was happening in the examination area. Zhao Shan said that it couldn't be that a rank E beast soul master was able to pass the tests. At this moment, around the lizard's body, there was only the remaining dust from the fierce battle. Zhao Shan saw this and became very cautious. After seeing it, he shouted and asked if they were sure he is rank E. Another examiner asked, so now he understands why they called him here. He thinks Lin Yuan has the strength of at least a beast general. Many monsters formed around him again. Now he is on the 10th level of the test. The 10th level is the last level, and it's very difficult since each of the ten wolves has the strength of a seven-star war beast. It was asked again, so does this mean that if he can pass level ten, it will be proof that he has the power of a beast general? Zhao Shan replied, yes, and furthermore, the top universities will start fighting for him without exception. Everyone who managed to pass the ten levels of the test is a genius at least. This young man's future is that of a beast soul master of lord rank maybe even an emperor rank beast soul master. The examiners were very surprised by this information and opened their mouths. Zhao Shan spoke. Okay, it's too early to talk about this. It remains to be seen if he can pass this level. 
At this moment, Lin Yuan was thinking that he believed the final stage of skill assessment would be the boss of the monsters, but here, there were only ten desert wolf kings. These creatures looked at him with a threatening gaze. Lin Yuan suddenly moved to attack these creatures, shouting that they are just trash. He pointed his claws at them and continued to shout, destroying one after another with incredible speed, saying that no matter how many there are, they are just a bunch of garbage. More and more wolves were heading towards him, but he destroyed them with agility and speed. These creatures couldn't bite his body, demonstrating a terrifying defense. The examiners realized that he was able to withstand the attacks of Seven Star War Beasts. Attack, defense, speed, and explosive power, all at a perfect level. The examiner said, If this is truly a ranky talent, then I can commit suicide. Everything around was filled with the blood of the deed monsters, and Lin Yuan looked into the distance, thinking, Six more. He opened his mouth and the wolves became very cautious, seeing such a monster in front of them. Zhao Shan wondered, in fear, what kind of power this was. In this case, he created a bright burst of energy that illuminated the entire area and decided to get rid of them all at once. He created a bright beam aimed at the monsters and crushed everything in its path. After this, Lin Yuan roared loudly and lifted his head. The examiners were perplexed and didn't understand what kind of technique this was. They watched with fear what was happening in the examination field. Everything turned into dust, and a moment later, the system reported that candidate Lin Yuan successfully passed all stages of the beast test. Lin Yuan felt relieved that the beast trial was much easier than he expected. Since he passed the final level, it means he is guaranteed a good score. He wonders how many people will be surprised when the results are announced. After all, even Wu Mo Xuan with an S rank talent definitely couldn't pass the beast test. He wants to take this opportunity to show all the universities that even an E rank beast soul can have tremendous power. Long also thinks that the exam is over. Lin Yuan then removes his helmet. Next to him are two men, looking at him in perplexity. Lin Yuan's profile is displayed on the computer screen, indicating that he is male, 18 years old. His awakened animal soul is a black lizard. His talent rating corresponds to rank E, and his actual strength is equal to a three-star beast general. This data was obtained from forces demonstrated in a real combat simulation, subject to some errors. The men look at him and think in horror. At 18 years old, less than two weeks after the awakening of the beast soul, he reached the rank of three-star beast general, a simply terrifying power. Zhao Shan looks at Lin Yuan and, with a stern expression, congratulates him on passing all levels of the beast test. He asks if Lin Yuan knows what this means. Lin Yuan smiles happily and asks if it means he has a good score. One of the examiners happily explains that it means more than a good score. He demonstrated talent and strength, so the beast universities of Yan Jing and Mo Du will surely compete for him. Lin Yuan replies that this is good and asks when the results will be published. The examiner replies that if nothing happens, the lists will be announced that afternoon. At that moment, one of the examiners thinks that usually others feel excitement or joy, but he is very calm. Lin Yuan exits the capsule, bows, and thanks everyone. Then he adds that if that's all, he will leave. General Zhou Shan calls Lin Yuan and asks him to wait. Lin Yuan asks in surprise if there is something else. Zhao Shan asks, why his talent is only rank E, and if something went wrong during the awakening of his animal soul. If he has any problems, he can go to him, and he will help. But Lin Yuan explains that no. His beast soul was indeed weak during its awakening, so it was classified as rank E. General Zhao Shan was worried in vain, but almost immediately, one of the examiners turns to the chief examiner suspiciously and asks if he thinks this guy was telling the truth. He answers confusedly that it doesn't seem like he was lying, but was very surprised by his character. Zhao Shan observes Lin Yuan and notes that, after achieving impressive results, he didn't seem arrogant, which is very commendable. In the future, another Beast Soul Master with immense power will appear. At this moment, near the Beast Soul Palace, numerous students were animatedly discussing the imminent exam. Sumu's voice suddenly rang out as she cheerfully shouted to Lin Yuan. She was near a tree waving at him with all her might. 
When she ran up to Lin Yuan, he immediately asked how it went, if she passed the exam. Sumu exclaimed that, of course, she passed, and the grades were good. Lin Yuan asked if it was really so, how many levels she completed. Sumu replied with a smile. Nine. Lin Yuan looked at her in surprise and observed that this was really good. He didn't expect her to complete nine levels. It seems that her powers have increased more than he expected. She wanted to ask him about his evaluation, but she didn't know how, after all. People with rank E usually hardly pass the first level. Later, she will be very surprised. Lin Yuan then happily says that the exam is over. They don't need to think about grades anymore. He also invites her to dinner to celebrate her success. Sumu smiles and extends her hand, exclaiming that it's okay. Then she wants a big bowl of noodles. Lin Yuan asks in surprise if that's all, just a bowl of noodles. Sumu explains that she is so hungry that she will eat whatever he gives her. Then, Lin Yuan starts thinking that the restaurant is far away, and they will miss the announcement of the lists. Well, Sumu takes his hand, starts running and says with a smile that, anyway the results have already been determined, and what will be announced is just a ranking. Lin Yuan mentally agrees and thinks that, no matter what happens, no one can surpass his grades. Sumu keeps pulling his hand and shouts that they should go faster, she is hungry. Lin Yuan immediately responds that he understands. At one in the afternoon on the Beast Soul Palace Square among the crowd, someone shouts and demands that people get out of the way. Students are wondering who this guy is. It is Wu Mo Xuan, an S-rank Beast Soul Master, who completed seven levels, the same result as the winner of the previous year. He is strong and should be the main candidate this year. The talent of an S-rank Beast Soul is terrifying. With these results, he will be able to enter one of the best universities. Just at that moment, Wu Mo Xuan triumphantly thinks that an exceptional personality like him is attracting attention from all sides. He was preparing for this exam and even asked his parents to buy an expensive pill to maximize the potential of the Beast Soul in a short period. Then, one of his friends asks why he hasn't seen Lin Yuan. Wu Mo Xuan confidently replies that it's not even worth asking, obviously. He was hiding somewhere, daring to challenge him with his level. Then the friend exclaims with a malicious smile that Lin Yuan is so funny. If he were in his place, he wouldn't dare say a word and would have buried himself in the ground long ago out of shame. Another friend sighs and also adds that he would like to watch this show, but Lin Yuan didn't even show up. He is a true coward. Suddenly Wu Mo Xuan interrupts their conversation and says, Okay, since he doesn't want to come out, then he will remain a coward for the rest of his life. He also thinks that Lin Yuan's escape is exactly what he wants, so he doesn't appear again. At this moment Lin Yuan's voice is heard, turning to Su Mu and saying, As he said, the restaurant was far away, but she wanted to eat there. She responds with a laugh that everything is fine, they are just in time, but she ate deliciously. Wu Mo Xuan turns around and sees them passing by. Su Mu smiles happily while Lin Yuan says something to her. Wu Mo Xuan starts to get very irritated and thinks that Lin Yuan is an idiot. How dare he appear in front of him with Su Mu. Wu Mo Xuan then approaches them and asks irritably, if this isn't Lin Yuan, he looks so calm, it seems that the test score is not bad. Lin Yuan replies briefly, yes, he is completely satisfied. One of Wu Mo Xuan's friends mockingly asks if he's happy with it, so modest. It must have been hard to pass the first level. Another friend also smiles maliciously. You can overcome the first level without any skill, and asks if there are people who couldn't. Those around who heard this began to laugh and say that they shouldn't shame Lin Yuan so much. It's great that a guy with an E rank had the courage to participate in the exam. Wu Mo Xuan leans towards him and pointing a finger, reminds him that he hasn't forgotten about their bet, right? In response, Lin Yuan scratches his head and replies that he almost forgot, but since he remembered, Lin Yuan asks if he is ready to lose. Upon hearing this, Wu Mo Xuan starts to get very angry and exclaims, lose, how can he play around with someone like him? At this exact moment, the clock strikes exactly two o'clock, and people start shouting that the lists have been published, exam results announced, questions immediately arise. The lists have been announced, so first, Wu Mo Xuan immediately exclaims joyfully, he is this year's champion. He then starts reading the list and sees that Su Mu is in second place, and her score is nine levels passing the beast test. He looks at it in perplexity and wonders if he has the third place. 
Are there really two in front of him? He reads the list further and sees that he is in third place. The beast test was passed. Wu Mo Xuan is even more surprised. Sumu is in second place. She managed to complete level nine. He didn't expect her talent to be greater than his. No. If she completed nine levels and is only in second place, then what kind of monster is in first? Drops of sweat trickle down his face from excitement. In the grand announcement, it is revealed that Lin Yuan received a score equivalent to 10 levels of the beast test. Wu Mo Xuan can't believe it. Lin Yuan, how is this possible? How could he pass 10 levels with his E-rank beast soul? People in the crowd start wondering, who is Lin Yuan? He is amazing to complete 10 levels. There are only 10 of them in the exam, right? Yes, he is a true monster. He doesn't know what kind of beast soul Lin Yuan awakened, but its power has reached an incredible level, even surpassing Sumu and Wu Mo Xuan. She completed nine levels, but unfortunately encountered a monster. The most embarrassing thing is that Wu Mo Xuan boasted more before the results were announced, but ended up only in third place. Wu Mo Xuan grabs his head with his hands and is horrified. At this moment, Lin Yuan approaches him and reminds him with a smile that he said, Wu Mo Xuan lost. Isn't it time for him to fulfill the terms of the dispute? He then adds with a smile that he prefers to eat the dried inferior crystal pouches, with or without seasoning. Suddenly a crowd sees him and exclaims with joy, Here he is, Lin Yuan, who took the first place. Sumu also looks at him and thinks that his rank is higher than hers. That's why when she said her results he wasn't surprised. But the question is, how did he do it? Wu Mo Xuan starts shouting frantically that this is impossible. How can an E-rank idiot get such a result? He cheated. A crowd hears this and chaos begins around. People ask, perplexed, isn't that Wu Mo Xuan? He thinks Lin Yuan cheated. Is this true or false? Is this possible during the exam? Number one deceived everyone. Isn't that Su Mu? She's there too. Lin Yuan hears this and asks angrily if he cheated. Does Wu Mo Xuan really think he would do such a thing to win? But Wu Mo Xuan starts screaming back that Lin Yuan has an E-rank beast soul. How then did he pass the 10 levels of the beast test? People hear this and immediately start wondering. It's an E-rank beast soul, isn't it the weakest thing? How did he manage to complete 10 levels? He really cheated. This is a real combat simulation, and nothing from the outside world can be brought inside. Disappointment is hardly possible. Long appears next to Lin Yuan, looks around in surprise, sighs, and says that doubts have arisen. Lin Yuan then turns to Wu Mo Xuan and asks, Who said that a beast soul of rank E couldn't pass the exam? It's not written anywhere in the reference books, right? However, Wu Mo Xuan continues to insist on his own opinion, and shouts that Lin Yuan should not be complacent. He declares that he will file a petition with the beast soul palace court and expose the questionable methods Lin Yuan used. Lin Yuan inquires about the court, and Long explains that if candidates have doubts about the evaluation, they can go to the Beast Soul Palace Court. However, such meetings are rarely convened based on the assessments of others. Lin Yuan then turns to Wu Moxuan, and resolutely says that he can do whatever he wants, but if it turns out he is not guilty, then Wu Moxuan will not forget to fulfill the terms of the dispute. Long also adds that an S-rank Beast Soul is not good at losing. Wu Mo Xuan responds by pointing his finger at Lin Yuan again and shouting, How dare he? Suddenly someone asks what all the noise is outside the palace. Then people see someone walking towards them, above the person. A bear appears with its mouth wide open. People see it and exclaim, Examiner Zhao Shan. Long also notes their surprise. As expected from a master beast soul of Lord Rank, his suppression power is very powerful. Lin Yuan also sees this and thinks about it, a master beast soul of Lord Rank. People in the crowd begin to exclaim again, Is this chief examiner Zhao Shan? It is said that his big and ferocious bear has already reached the level of a seven-star lord. He can't be among all the master beast souls of Lord Rank. He is quite strong, right? He is a talented master who decided to come here as an examiner. Zhao Shan approaches and threateningly asks if he heard that someone wants to go to court. Wu Mo Xuan approaches him, lowers his head, and replies that he wants to file a complaint because he believes that the evaluation of the student Lin Yuan is unfounded. He then turns around, points his finger at Lin Yuan, and exclaims that he awakened a beast soul of Lord Rank, but was able to pass ten levels. This is not normal. 
In this regard, he would like to ask the Beast Soul Palace for a reasonable explanation. But Zhao Shan explains that, by chance, he was present at Lin Yuan's exam and watched everything that happened from start to finish. He found nothing unusual. Zhao Shan asks Wu Mo Xuan if he means to say that he helped Lin Yuan cheat. Wu Mo Xuan immediately tries to explain everything. Zhao Shan is the pride of Zhen Hai. He wouldn't dare to doubt him. But the beast soul awakened by Lin Yuan was ranked as a talent of E rank. He thinks that everyone present is absolutely clear about what that means. Someone in the crowd also asks how he was able to complete 10 levels with such a soul. Zhao Shan continued, so he thinks that examiner, Zhao Shan should at least release the video of candidate Lin Yuan. The display of Lin Yuan's battle to convince the public in his favor is intense. People in the crowd shout that they are also very interested in how he did it, but Zhao Shan responds threateningly, saying that he is sorry, but cannot agree to this request according to the regulations of the Palace of the Soul. The examiner is prohibited from disclosing information about the candidates, except in special cases. In response to this, Wu Mo Xuan smiles slightly and says that since the fight video cannot be published, there is another way to verify the authenticity of the results. Zhao Shan orders him to speak. Wu Mo Xuan immediately exclaims that they should be allowed to have a duel. If Lin Yuan wins, he will prove the accuracy of the assessment, but if he loses, it will be enough to prove that his score was obtained by dishonest means. The crowd begins to cheer that Wu Mo Xuan will humiliate Lin Yuan. Hearing this, Su Mu angrily exclaims how repugnant Wu Mo Xuan is, doing whatever he wants to humiliate Lin Yuan. However, Lin Yuan gestures for her to calm down and says that it's okay. Long, discontented, observes that Wu Mo Xuan's thoughts are obvious. He wants to take the chance to fight Lin Yuan and then prove to everyone that he is a loser. But Lin Yuan looks closely at Wu Mo Xuan and responds that this is very timely. Wu Mo Xuan turns to the examiner Zhao Shan and clarifies that it is not prohibited to challenge soul beasts on the palace grounds. This is confirmed as true, but it is also necessary to find out the opponent's opinion. At this moment, those around are wondering if Lin Yuan will accept the challenge. Someone responds that the situation is so tense that he has no other choice. If he refuses to accept the challenge, everyone will consider him a cheater. Wu Mo Xuan smiles slightly and asks if Lin Yuan dares to fight him. Su Mu stands beside Lin Yuan and tells him that if he's not sure, he can refuse. But Lin Yuan explains that if someone provokes, then it's useless to tolerate. The only way to make him fear is to break his bones. With these words, he raises his hand and says he agrees to the fight. The crowd hears and is perplexed. He accepted the challenge. An S-ranked beast soul will fight against an E-ranked soul. This has never happened before. However, the level difference is so great that Lin Yuan will be defeated. But he is the first person in the city to pass the 10 levels of the beast test. The outcome of the battle is difficult to predict. Zhao Shan also explains that, to be honest, he believes that this fight is unnecessary. They are both the pride of Zhen Hai City, holding the first and third places. There is no need to fight to the death over such a trivial matter, since he has already said that he was able to personally verify that Lin Yuan did not cheat during the exam process. Wu Mo Xuan hears this and angrily wonders why both are helping Lin Yuan. He wonders why he is so special that they cover for him. He then shouts to Lin Yuan that, if that's the case, then he should fight him. It would be great if Examiner Zhao Shan witnessed this battle. He will show how he will tear him to pieces. Zhao Shan announces that in this case, the fight will take place in the Beast Soul Palace arena. Anyone who wants to watch can come. After some time, the Beast Soul Palace arena was filled with spectators. Zhao Shan announces that if both sides are ready, they can start the fight. But first, they need to explain the rules. This battle is just a practice. They can give it their all but cannot kill. The battle will end as soon as one side admits defeat. It is forbidden to use any foreign objects during the fight. If any rules are broken, it will be considered a defeat. All clear. Wu Mo Xuan and Lin Yuan, staring intensely into each other's eyes, simultaneously respond, yes. Then Zhao Shan says, okay then, and declares the battle started. Wu Mo Xuan immediately turns to Lin Yuan and says that he must understand that everything that happens is his fault, but Lin Yuan also responds that he didn't expect him to make such a fuss to avoid the terms of the bet. 
If he simply begs for mercy, he will consider sparing him from his lunch with inferior crystals, he mentally adds. After all, if she gives them to Wu Moshuan, it will be a waste. Immediately after the start of the fight, Wu Moshuan shouts for Lin Yuan to die and uses the Beast Soul Fusion. He immediately transforms into a large skeletal lizard. The audience exclaims, in perplexity, what kind of monster is this, the reptilian skeleton king? Yes, it's all five meters tall, so what is an S-ranked soul, truly? Visible talent to the naked eye, he really is a third-place genius. At this moment, Wu Moshuan tries to hit Lin Yuan with his tail, but he jumps and avoids the blow. Wu Moshuan wonders if this idiot is afraid to merge with a beast soul. The crowd also wonders why Lin Yuan doesn't transform, and if he can really defeat an S-ranked soul, and if that means he didn't cheat. Sumu watches from the side and thinks that Lin Yuan's beast soul is just a small E-ranked lizard, although it's not clear how he passed the ten levels of the test, but if Wu Moshuan dares to hurt him and Zhao Shan doesn't stop him, she will. Long is also by her side and turns to her saying, although she can't hear him, that she shouldn't worry, Lin Yuan won't lose to this guy. At this moment, Lin Yuan smiles slightly and says that since Wu Mo Xuan is hoping for him to merge with the beast soul, then he will satisfy his wish. After that, he begins to merge with the animal soul. He rises into the air and is surrounded by bright rays of light. In the next moment, a large black lizard appears in his place, which turns out to be larger than Wu Mo Xuan. The audience sees this and can't believe it. It's an E-ranked beast soul. They go crazy. The reptilian skeleton king is also perplexed. This is impossible. This is an E-ranked soul. How can it have grown so fast? The black lizard looks down and asks, what happened to Wu Moshuan's beast soul? Then, it raises its paw and asks, who said an E-ranked soul should be weaker than an S-ranked one? Immediately after these words, it attacks. The reptilian skeleton. King sees this and dodges the blow at the last moment, thinking indignantly that if he had been touched by the claw, he would have become cripplet. Lin Yuan has the strength of a beast soul general, at the minimum, but it's impossible to rise to such a level in just a few days. He won't have time to dodge. He sees the paw of the black lizard moving towards him and exclaims horrified that it can't be, how he, the reptilian skeleton king, can lose to a E-ranked idiot. Then, he tries to swing his tail, but the black lizard responds mockingly that Wu Mo Xuan didn't expect him to dare to fight back. Lin Yuan then grabs the tail of the reptilian skeleton king. He starts screaming in horror, asking what Lin Yuan is going to do. The black lizard asks what he thinks, and with these words it begins to swing him from side to side. Loud sounds of impacts are heard, stones clash around. Wu Mo Xuan sees Lin Yuan showing his claws, and the crowd screams desperately that Lin Yuan defeated Wu Mo Xuan. Is this his true power? After all, Examiner Zhao Shan wasn't protecting Lin Yuan, he was trying to protect Wu Mo Xuan. Sumu also looks at this in surprise, thinking that although she knew Lin Yuan is not weak, the E-ranked beast soul is incredible. At this moment, the reptilian skeleton king screams impossible for his S-ranked beast soul to be weaker than an E-ranked one. Suddenly, a strong black lizard grabs him, Lin Yuan announces that Wu Mo Xuan has lost. He crawls to the side and shouts, Who said that? Then opens his mouth, and there is a small red pill on his tongue. Then he abruptly closes his mouth and bites it to pieces. Zhao Shan sees this and realizes it's a blood capsule. Long appears next to the black lizard and announces that Wu Mo Xuan just took a pill that allows him to increase his level in a short period. His strength would rise from the level of an eight-star battle beast to a three-star beast general. However, after taking such medication, recovery will take a month. He's crazy, wants to defeat him at all costs. Lin Yuan also adds that he's just a clown, but suddenly Zhao Shan grabs the microphone and loudly announces that Wu Mo Xuan is declared the looser for violating the rules of the fight. He then continues to observe what's happening and realizes that Wu Mo Xuan is even more useless than he imagined. The Black Lizard prepares to attack, and Zhao Shan wonders if Lin Yuan will continue the fight with Wu Mo Xuan even after he took the blood pill. Suddenly, the reptilian skeleton king opens its mouth wide and shouts that it will kill Lin Yuan, but Lin Yuan just stares at him. The reptilian skeleton king wonders why he is so calm, as it's obvious that he is now stronger than him. But suddenly, 
He sees that the black lizard opened its mouth wide and wonders what kind of power this is. There's no turning back for him. Lin Yuan must die. At this exact moment, a great brightness appears from the black lizard, which begins to hit Wu Mo Xuan. This bright ball turns into a long beam of light that sends him straight into the wall. He reverts to being human and falls to the ground. Zhao Shan shouts, officially announcing that Lin Yuan won this battle. Furthermore, Wu Mo Xuan took illegal pills during the fight to artificially increase his strength. Then, he asks if anyone objects to the assessment of student Lin Yuan. The crowd exclaims angrily, It can't be that Wu Mo Xuan couldn't win even with the help of pills. Lin Yuan is very strong. What blind person evaluated his E-ranked beast soul as a talent of E-rank? They have seen a person of E-rank defeat an S-rank. At that moment, Zhao Shan approaches Wu Mo Xuan, grabs his hand, and asks one of the examiners to take him to the infirmary. The injuries are not fatal, but the side effects after taking the medicine are enough to keep him in bed for a few months. The examiner responds briefly that he understands everything, so two men accompany Wu Mo Xuan, sadly noting that now no reputable university seems to accept him. The other adds, as you make your bed, so must you lie in it. At this moment, Zhao Shan approaches Lin Yuan and congratulates him on winning the duel. Lin Yuan immediately thanks him, but Zhao Shan asks what he is thanking for. Lin Yuan explains that he gave him the opportunity to test his skill on Wu Mo Xuan. He also thinks that Zhao Shan should have stopped him in time, but didn't. Then, Zhao Shan bows in his direction, puts his hand on his shoulder and says that, in fact, he is not only the head of the examiners, but also a member of the admissions committee of the University of Animals in Mo Du. Does he want to join them? Lin Yuan asks again. What? At that moment, Zhou Hiong is next to him and explains that the animal universities of Yanning and Mo Du are the most prestigious. Only the best of the best go there. So, Lin Yuan asks with a satisfied smile. If Professor Zhao Shan is recruiting people for his benefit, and he is the best in the city. Zhao Shan hears this and worriedly wonders if this guy is even normal. He's doing a favor for the university. The first thing he thought was what advantages the university would give him. Lin Yuan says that a first-class educational institution should be able to offer certain conditions. Zhao Shan responds with a smile that, of course, if he wants to enroll with them, then he can apply for a full payment including 500,000 coins, 20 high-quality beast soul crystals, 5 high-quality beast soul capsules, and a general-ranking beast soul sword. Lin Yuan hears this and begins to reflect. 20 high-quality crystals cost 200,000 coins, and 5 beast soul capsules cost 250,000 coins. Long flips a coin and tells him to think twice. Zhao Shan then adds that, this is the best offer the university can give him and he and the university leadership are sincere in their intentions. But suddenly, someone shouts that Zhao Shan is shameless. A sturdy man approaches them and angrily asks if the recruitment campaign hasn't even started yet, and he has already lured this guy to his academy. Lin Yuan looks closely and wonders who this is, speaking in such a tone with Zhao Shan. It turns out to be Cheng Yu from the University of Animal Yanjing. Zhao Shan closes his eyes and asks him not to say anything stupid. Young talents cannot go to any university except his. But Cheng Yu vehemently shouts, then turns to Lin Yuan and exclaims, not to be deceived. Their university is in many ways superior to the University of Modu. If he goes there, he will receive 500,000 coins, 40 high-quality beast soul crystals, and 10 beast soul capsules. Lin Yuan exclaims in surprise, as expected from Yanjing University, they are really rich. Then. A boy from the audience says that's how geniuses are treated. Two popular universities not only compete for students, but also offer resources. One of the spectators also tells the other that if he passes all ten levels of the exam, he can also enjoy such honors. At this moment, Zhao Shan partially merges with the beast soul and shouts how Cheng Yu dares to recruit the student right in front of him. But Cheng Yu, who also partially merges with his beast soul, exclaims who he is trying to scare. At some point, a confrontation begins between them. Lin Yuan thinks surprised that this is the energy of Lord-ranked beast soul powers. Then, he prepares to fight, but suddenly someone asks what mess the two have made. 
At this moment, a person with a sloth beast soul approaches them, and Cheng Yu's and Zhao Shan's beast souls immediately disappear. Lin Yuan looks carefully at the man and is surprised. He suppressed the auras of the furious great bear and the ghostly tiger. Could this man's strength be greater than that of Zhao Shan and Cheng Yu? The man approaches and gently says that Lin Yuan should go to Xuchuan Animal University. They will give him 300,000 coins, 50 high-quality beast soul crystals, and 10 beast soul capsules. This man's name is Ding Lu. He is from Xuchuan Animal University. He adds that Lin Yuan will receive 20 high-quality crystals every semester until he graduates. He also won't lie by saying that they spare no effort in talent development. Lin Yuan listens attentively and thinks how Xuchuan University is so rich. Then there are people around him who also persistently ask why he doesn't consider their university. They can offer him such conditions. Another person insists that Lin Yuan needs to choose their university. Someone also holds up a piece of paper and shouts that he needs to go to their university. Last year, they ranked 8th. Lin Yuan smiles awkwardly and thinks that although everyone wants to accept him, it's clearly to use him as free publicity. Cheng Yu then orders them to stop making noise and asks Lin Yuan what he thinks. Lin Yuan bows and says that he is grateful to everyone, but regrets that, besides Yanjing Animal University and Modu Animal University, he doesn't consider other organizations. Ding Lu adds that if he changes his mind, he can go to him anytime. Lin Yuan also responds that if something happens, he will contact him. Zhao Shan and Cheng Yu menacingly order him to answer whom he will choose, but Lin Yuan waves his hand and responds that, before the start of the admission campaign, he will give an answer. Zhao Shan humbly replies that he will wait. Cheng Yu exclaims with a smile to think carefully. Lin Yuan again responds that he understands everything. After that, Zhao Shan and Cheng Yu leave Lin Yuan. Zhao Shan is indignant and exclaims that he stole Lin Yuan from him, but Cheng Yu immediately tells him that he is shameless. He was the one who took Lin Yuan away. Then Zhao Shan asks if he wants to fight. Cheng Yu also responds decisively that he can. He's not afraid of him. Gradually they move away, and Lin Yuan no longer understands what they are talking about. Long congratulates joyfully. The system has just ranked his beast soul as a general rank. A silver chest has been obtained. Lin Yuan must quickly open it and see what's inside. This is his first silver chest. Lin Yuan sighs and looks into the distance. At that moment, Su Mu runs up to him and exclaims that Lin Yuan is amazing. Now he is the number one in the city, and popular universities are fighting for him. So what will he choose? After all, he achieved everything through talent and grades. He asks her which academy she would choose. She replies that she is considering Yanjing Academy and Modu Academy. She asks if he doesn't want to go where she goes. Lin Yuan replies that it would be nice. They could take care of each other, but he still needs to think about it. Sumu adds that, objectively, Yanjing University is stronger, but she will choose Modu University. Lin Yuan asks why. Sumu looks away and replies that there are people in Yanjing whom she doesn't want to see. Lin Yuan realizes that she feels uncomfortable talking about it and decides not to continue the conversation. After some time, Lin Yuan is at home, sitting near the bed, holding an open chest in his hands. At that moment, Long swiftly flies from one shoulder to the other and exclaims, 10,000 evolution points and also a general class weapon, the Flame Claw. When attacking an enemy, fire appears on its claws, causing extra damage. Lin Yuan looks at it and notes that it's not bad. Hearing this, Long crosses its arms and indignantly asks what not bad means. This is a very cool weapon. Weapons are divided into War Beast, Beast General, Beast Master, Lord and Emperor rankings. A weapon at his level costs hundreds of thousands of coins. Lin Yuan is very surprised. It's so expensive. Long explains that it's still cheap. Anything above the Beast Master rank can reach a value of tens of millions of coins. If they're lucky, they might acquire one in the future. Long says that he needs to rise to the Lord rank as soon as possible. Suddenly, Long asks him what he thinks about the universities. Lin Yuan asks what information he has. Long immediately responds that Yan Jing University trains strong masters, and Mo Du University has strong masters as well. Besides, he thinks Lin Yuan will like it there. Lin Yuan asks why. Long says that they prioritize military matters above all. Everything is based on strength. 
they have created three special rankings, Dragon Rankings, Beast King Rankings, and Beast God Rankings. All resources are distributed according to the ranking. If Yanjing University is a comfortable bed for strong masters, then Modu University might be a ruthless coliseum. Lin Yuan immediately asks why a coliseum. He then wonders if one person would ultimately be more valuable than millions of people, so why couldn't he be that person? He then exclaims that he is choosing Modu Animal University. After some time, Cheng Yu bursts into Zhao Shan's office with a loud cry. Zhao Shan smiles sweetly and asks him what he needs. Lin Yuan has already applied to their school, and he has no chance. In response, Cheng Yu angrily replies that he shouldn't boast. He respects his choice and asks if Sumu also joined them. He asks. The news reached him very quickly, and Zhao Shan asked if he knew her. Cheng Yu also responds furiously that he knows more than just her. When she arrives at the university, he must take care of her. He should also remember that he warned him. Her background is complex. At that moment, Zhao Shan remembers when Lin Yuan and Sumu were sitting in front of him, and Lin Yuan asked when he could receive the scholarship. Clarified, usually after enrolling in the course, but he can apply for it in advance, and will be able to receive the scholarship soon. He then points to Sumu and asks about her, if she also needs to apply in advance. She responds displeased that it's not necessary. Zhao Shan thinks that indeed, she seems to have better financial conditions than Lin Yuan. Cheng Yu responds that he cannot disclose all the details. He just has to take care of her. Three days later, Lin Yuan is in front of the Beast's Soul Palace and tells Long that he didn't expect the scholarship to arrive so quickly, along with subsidies of 500,000 coins, 20 high-quality crystals, five Beast Soul capsules, and a general-class Blackthorn armor. Long responds that this equipment makes his scales harder, and at the same time, his spine will be covered with thorns protecting him from injuries. It seems that the university still values his abilities a lot. Lin Yuan smiles and thinks that it's not the equipment that matters, but the 500,000 coin subsidy. With this money, he can get 5,000 low-quality crystals and 5 million evolution points. When he goes to exchange coins for crystals, the man menacingly asks if he wants to exchange money for low-quality crystals again. How much does he need this time? Lin Yuan replies that he will buy 5,000 low-grade soul crystals. The man is surprised and asks, What? But after some time, the loader shouts to the car driver, fully loaded with bags, that everything has been loaded. Lin Yuan, sitting in the car, waves to the man and thanks him. The man politely responds that there's no need for gratitude. When Lin Yuan leaves, the vendor wonders why he bought so much. Is he going to feed it to the pigs? After some time, Lin Yuan sits in front of his bed surrounded by bags of low-quality crystals and becomes indignant. It was inconvenient to tell the driver the address of the secret warehouse, so he brought everything home. He wonders how long it will take to absorb everything while maintaining a fusion. Long suggests that he stay at home and absorb them in human form. Lin Yuan immediately asks if that's possible and questions if he doesn't need to merge with the beast soul to absorb the crystal energy. Long explains that normally that's how it happens, but he has a system that can be used to absorb the crystal in human form. Lin Yuan asks immediately why he didn't say that before. Long explains that the absorption rate will be a bit slower, but compared to the huge energy spent on maintaining the beast form, this is the best option. Then Lin Yuan sits on the bed, focuses, and starts absorbing the energy from the crystals. Moments later, Long happily congratulates him, he successfully absorbed the nuclear radiation and received a thousand evolution points. Lin Yuan begins to think. It took 15 minutes, a bit slower than during the transformation. He needs to speed up to absorb all 5,000 pieces. On average, that's 48 pieces per day. As night falls, Lin Yuan continues to sit on the bed and absorb the energy from the crystals. Long cheerfully announces that his body underwent a mutation in the process of absorbing nuclear radiation and is now able to resist it. Lin Yuan asks, what does that change? Long explains that with this ability, he fears no concentration of nuclear radiation. Lin Yuan then understands that to destroy monsters, nuclear weapons were used in many areas and now his body will not be affected by those polluted restricted areas. Wonderful. 
There are still two months ahead. He must swallow all the crystals and increase his strength as quickly as possible. Long responds with a smile that it's good. After some time, a meeting was held in the conference hall of Modu Animal University. Director Wang Ting sat at the head of the table and said that everyone had worked hard in the past few days. Currently, the student recruitment at their university has been successfully completed. The freshmen this year are even more outstanding than in previous years, and not only their university but also other prestigious institutions had incredible talents and geniuses at their disposal. However, the process of waiting for them to grow is really costly. If he has to wait until then, he fears he will already be retired. Then he stood up and continued, saying that he had discussed with directors from other universities the issue that concerned him and decided to hold a national freshman competition to find out which of these talents is the true beast. In the conference room of Modu University, many people began to discuss whether it would be a good idea to hold a competition for talents from different universities to come together and compete against each other. A good opportunity to show the students that there is always someone of greater magnitude, but the freshmen shouldn't waste time on this, right? Wang Ting said that, in fact, everything had already been decided. Everyone can participate, and he hopes they provide him with a list. One of the staff members turned to the director and asked how many people should be registered. He replied that there should be about 12 people, 10 starters, and 2 reserves. In his opinion, it's better to choose according to the ranking, as there is nothing superfluous about it. According to one of the three lists, incoming students can also challenge, but if they follow the dragon ranking list, there may be omissions, as it only determines real combat ability. This is what happened with Songlan, the champion of Modu. His beast soul, the multicolored glass butterfly, is of the auxiliary type. Although he has reached the level of a seven-star beast general, if he were to fight alone, he would be at a disadvantage. Perhaps he wouldn't make it to the top 10 of the dragon list. This means that Song Lan is weak. If he joined a fellow 9-star general class beast soul, his abilities could rival those of a beast king. The man raised his hand again, stood up from his seat, and spoke to the director. That he understands what he means. He uses the dragon ranking as a guide, but doesn't adhere to it completely. After all, there may be double battles in the competition, right? Director Wang Ting said that is correct. This is the first national competition and will be broadcast nationwide, so he hopes everyone will give their best and strive to surpass others. The staff understood the instructions and said that everything would be done. A staff member approaches Zhao Shan and asks if he is very happy with the new students this time and requests to take a look at them. He took the tablet from Zhao Shan's hands and said with an enthusiastic look that this young woman named Sumu is great. Wait, because they are recruiting rank E talents, Zhao Shan asked to look further down. He scrolled a bit and suddenly shouted with incredible surprise, student Lin Yuan, beast soul, black lizard, rank E talent, level 10 in the exam results. How is that possible? Zhao Shan responded that if he hadn't been the examiner, he would never have believed it because this was Lin Yuan's first participation in the test. The man asked, what's so special about him? Zhao Shan replied by asking if he could be a genius and is looking forward to seeing his strength after training. Meanwhile, outside, night had already fallen, and a bright purple light was shining through Lin Yuan's apartment window. He was still sitting on the bed, in human terms like a monk he cultivated, not moving for an entire month in the process of absorbing nuclear radiation. He mastered the S-rank nuclear breathing skill. Lin Yuan inquired about nuclear breathing. Long replied that breathing nuclear energy can emit light particles with nuclear radiation, and the infrared rays can reach 550,000 degrees. Long asks if he wants to spend a million evolution points on training. Lin Yuan responded confidently that, of course, it's profitable to exchange a million evolution points for an S-rank skill. Long shouted that he had successfully acquired the top-level nuclear breathing skill. In this month, he absorbed 2,500 crystals. Now he has one and a half million evolution points left. Lin Yuan told him that, as he can see, the monk's practice paid off. He suggests seeing how much these evolution points can improve his level. Let him spend 500,000 evolution points to increase his size. For a monster, size is the most important thing. Long replied that it's okay. After that, 
Lin Yuan asked to increase the hardness of scale armor by 200,000 points, the sharpness of claws by 200,000, and the power of the nuclear reactor by 300,000 points. He should increase them. At that moment, a system window appeared in front of him. He examined it carefully and long shouted to him that he is now the leader among beast general level masters. A little more, and he would become a king. Lin Yuan replied that he thought one and a half million points would help him reach the king level at once. But in the end, he managed to jump from three stars to seven. Maybe he's just being too ambitious. Long responded, pointing to the bags that he still had 2,500 crystals remaining. If he absorbed them all, he could get at least two and a half million evolution points. Lin Yuan doesn't know if this number of points is enough for him to advance to the king level at once. He didn't expect that from the general level. His cultivation would be in the millions. The higher the level, the more points are needed. Long said that even if that doesn't work, then high quality crystals and capsules can be sold and replaced with low quality crystals. Lin Yuan raised his hand and shouted, yes, the goal before school starts is the King Beast rank. A month later, at the train platform, Lin Yuan holds a ticket in his hand. Someone shouts to him, Lin Yuan! It was Sumu, who waved to him and approached with a suitcase, walking with Zhao Shan. He asked Professor Zhao Shan why he was there. He replied with a smile that he had returned home for business and was just picking them up to take them to the university. They should get on. Lin Yuan replied that it's okay. After a while, they boarded the train, and Sumu asked what he had been doing for the past two months. He didn't reply to any messages. Lin Yuan replied that all this time he was practicing, couldn't talk to anyone. She must have trained too. She replied that of course, she not only reached the general rank, but also achieved three stars. She told him that two months ago, he was a three-star general, and now he is strengthened, so no matter how hard she tries, she would be unable to catch up with him. Lin Yuan replied that she is already very strong, and her level has increased significantly. At that moment, Zhao Shan informed them that they had arrived at the right place. He opened the doors, and they entered a room with all amenities, which surprised Samu. Lin Yuan thought about it upon entering. Regular seats on this train cost more than a hundred thousand, and Professor Zhao Shan has a separate room just for him, a lord-class master is treated specially. Zhao Shan said that if everything goes well, they will reach the university at night. Lin Yuan asked what he means by, if everything goes well. He replied with a serious look that fights between monsters could occur along the way. They call it the Beast Tide. Accidents mainly happen when a hundred beasts or several lord-class monsters attack the train. Sometimes even king-class monsters are caught. Lin Yuan replied that it sounded very dangerous. Sumu turned around surprised and became cautious with those words. Zhao Shan continued to say that they shouldn't worry. The probability of them appearing is extremely low. Anyway, if that happens, he will try to stop them so that they and the people on the train can escape. Even against an emperor class level, he can resist for five minutes. Lin Yuan was alert and thought that with Zhao Shan's strength, he can only hold an emperor class monster for five minutes. This seems to be much more terrifying than he imagined. At that moment, some loud noises occurred on the train. A man entered their carriage and shouted to Zhao Shan that, 10 kilometers away, the radar detected that a beast tide was approaching them at high speed. He then continued to speak with a trembling voice, fearing that in 10 minutes they would collide with the train. He was very scared and grabbed Zhao Shan's clothes with all his strength. Zhao Shan asked about the size of the beast tide. He replied that there were three beast kings, more than 50 generals, and about 300 war beasts. The other two beast soul masters ran to meet them. Zhao Shan turned to the boys and asked if they wanted to go together, because the threat was small, and they could consider it as a real combat model before starting training. Lin Yan replied yes, and Sumu said she would go too. The train abruptly stopped, and Zhao Shan and his students got off. Zhao Shan asked Lin Yuan, pointing to the side, if he could pilot one. He replied that it shouldn't be a big problem. Sumu said she had never seen anything like it. Zhao Shan said it was okay. She would go with Lin Yuan and they should follow him. He grabbed the shiny transport and ran ahead. Lin Yuan said he just left quickly, leaving them behind. How irresponsible. He got on an equally long vehicle that looked like a motorcycle 
and asked Sumu to get on with him. She climbed on and asked Lin Yuan if he really knew how to pilot it. He said no, but he didn't think it was difficult. He would learn as they went. After that, he sharply pressed the accelerator and they raced towards the destination at an incredible speed. He thought, as he continued driving, that it was almost like riding a motorcycle. After a while, they caught up with Zhao Shan in a desert area, and Lin Yuan asked Professor Zhao Shan if there should be a wave of beasts ahead. He said he would warn them before entering battle that if they encountered a beast beyond their strength, they needed to get away as much as possible and not waste time. These were not training fights, their safety came first. Merging with the beast's soul, with this shout, he ran towards the monsters growling. Lin Yuan looked at Zhao Shan's transformation into a huge and roaring beast bear, which other wolves began to surround. Lin Yuan and Sumu stayed alert and watched what was happening attentively. The monster's entire body lit up with a bright light, and he used the Earth Claw spell. Then, he pounded the ground with his fist, creating several cracks in the path for the wolves. After that, the ground began to split, and the wolves fell into the huge fissure that appeared, and a moment later, the gap closed again. Lin Yuan thought, surprised, that he split the ground. If the beast soul master is capable of this, then the emperor rank would be able to easily destroy mountains. The wolves ran towards them, Sumu used the fusion spell and transformed, and Lin Yuan did the same. They turned into monsters and started fighting against the attacking wolves, using their abilities. Sumu unleashed an ice wave at one of the wolves, and Lin Yuan destroyed the enemy with his sharp claws. After that, one of the monsters approached Lin Yuan from behind. Sumu turned quickly and realized this. She shouted for him to run, and sent many ice shards towards the monster, but these shards collided against the creature's incredible defense, and the monster continued to approach. It's all useless, she thought. He used the red flame claw spell and sent his powers towards the approaching monster. The creature was bleeding and was thrown back with a bang. Sumu watched what was happening and thought, This porcupine at least in the last phase of the general rank, and he defeated it with a single blow. How strong is he now? The train continued to travel at high speed. One of the crew members asked the commander to take a look and inquired if the detection radar was malfunctioning. The commander asked, surprised, is it out of order? But how is that possible? The guy asked. Aren't the purple points supposed to be the beast kings? The commander shouted for him to wait, because something was wrong. There were only three kings, so where did the fourth point come from? After his words, it disappeared from the radar, and he said it seems like this is a beast king that can hide its presence. They should report this immediately to the soul masters on the front line. At that moment, one of the masters on the front line had already been destroyed by another monster whose paws were covered in blood. It leaned towards the master, after which the man's blood appeared in the creature's mouth. Sumu asked Lin Yuan how many general class beasts they had killed. He replied that he didn't know, and suggested it was about twelve. At that moment, a kind of magical light appeared behind her, creating a vortex. She turned quickly and became very alert. A dark purple light was approaching her. It was a monster that roared loudly at her and approached with bright red eyes. Sumu looked at it with fear and was stunned. But at that moment, Lin Yuan shouted for her to close her eyes or else the blood would enter. At that moment, he attacked the approaching monster and skillfully destroyed it. The creature's entire blood spread in a scarlet flow, and the monster fell to the ground. Long reported that this beast master is classified as the best in stealth. Lin Yuan replied that it seems they were misinformed, as there is another king-class monster. Sumu asked him, perplexed, and he said he was facing the monster rising from the ground, and said this was a cowardly mutt that only knew how to hide, he would bark back at it. At that moment, the monster disappeared from their eyes, and they started to turn around. Sumu asked Lin Yuan to be careful, because it could appear anywhere. At that moment, the monster appeared directly above Lin Yuan's transformed body, which quickly attacked with its back spikes. Lin Yuan turned and asked if it had decided to scratch its back. At that moment, he pierced its right paw directly, and much blood was shed from the monster, making it roar in pain. After that, he was stunned to realize that Lin Yuan had grabbed him with his hands and asked a question. Now it's his turn. He smiled and began to crush the monster in his hands. The monster was scared, but couldn't move. 
Lin Yuan opened his mouth and shouted to experience his nuclear breath. A bright blue light lit up in his mouth, and he directed that flame directly into his opponent's mouth. After that, everything around shone brightly, and many flashes occurred. Sumu stood by watching what was happening. Also nearby was Zhao Shan, who was very surprised and stunned. Lin Yuan transformed back into his human form, picked up the purple crystal from the ground, and wondered how much the core of the King-class Beastmaster could be sold for. Zhao Shan approached him, asking in surprise how he killed it. Lin Yuan asked if he hadn't seen it. Zhao Shan asked him to be honest about what level his strength is now. He replied, looking away, that he had just broken through to the one-star King-class rank. Zhao Shan opened his mouth in shock and asked how he achieved this during the test. He was a three-star general. How did he grow so much in two months? He whispered in his ear. Professor, he has a secret. Just don't tell anyone. In fact, he can absorb nuclear radiation from lower soul crystals. At that moment, Sumu ran up to him and asked with a scared expression if he was okay. He waved his hand and said calmly that he was fine. She thanked him and said that if he hadn't done that, it would have been the end for her. He replied that, in fact, she is very strong. She was just scared and lost her composure. Zhao Shan told her that, after all, it was the first time she faced such a situation, and it's normal for a person to get nervous. She turned to the professor and said that Lin Yuan is right. Unexpected situations on the battlefield can happen at any time. She must try harder not to disappoint her comrades. After that, she and Lin Yuan smiled at each other. Zhao Shan looked at them and thought they were truly extraordinary. At sunset, the train continued its journey. Zhao Shan entered the boy's room and saw Sumu lying on the bed and Lin Yuan looking out the window. He thought he didn't expect that this guy could absorb nuclear radiation as energy. He is a true genius among all beast soul masters, as the director said, an exceptional talent. He approached Lin Yuan and said he had collected loot in that safe badge when he was at the beast soul palace. He would sell everything and give the money to him. Lin Yuan asked about the storage icon. He replied that yes, he had never used one like that. He could request the same, but for 10 cubic meters of space, he would have to pay a million. With that money he should buy lower grade crystals and could borrow the emblem if needed. Lin Yuan took the badge in his hands and thanked him for telling him about it. This thing could be useful for him, so he would consider buying it in the future. Zhao Shan asked him not to worry. In their university, true talents are not deprived of resources. If he can enter the top 10 in the ranking, he can choose a private room in the dormitory and also have the opportunity to represent the university in the national competition. He asked, surprised, about the ranking. He understood. At that moment, Sumu tried to open her eyes slightly, stood up and said, Professor, the university is so rich and the dormitory rooms are designed for multiple people it will be inconvenient for them to practice. He replied that the dormitory is a place to sleep and relax. Students can visit training rooms for free, which are open 24 hours a day. Lin Yuan thought he was lucky to have such facilities. Otherwise, he would have been quickly found out. He took a deep breath, and Zhao Shan said that if she still wants a separate room, she can donate five million to the school. Lin Yuan was very surprised and shouted, five million, that's a lot. Sumu shouted that it was so little, and Lin Yuan was very surprised by her reaction. He looked at her carefully and thought, questioning who she is. Animal City University Dormitory Lin Yuan walked to the door and thought that before conquering the ranking, he should first settle into the dormitory. It's good that Sumu decided to use the university housing, although she has money, she can't spend it like that. An unknown guy opened the door for him with a smile on his face and asked if he was a new roommate. He greeted and said his name was Zhao Ming. His beast soul was an eight-headed snake, and he is a freshman. Lin Yuan entered the room and said his name was Lin Yuan, and he was from Zhen Hai. Another guy in the room asked him if he's the talented guy. He still has a rank E beast soul. Lin Yuan asked if he knew him. The guy replied that he didn't, but he read his dossier. And he is amazing. He was eating a bag of chips and continued talking to him. Lin Yuan asked if he saw his file, but where can anyone review the personal data of freshmen? The guy replied that he has his own methods. 
there's nothing in the university that he, Wang Jin, doesn't know. Zhao Ming sat at the computer table and said with a smile that this guy is great at collecting information. Wang Jin said he could talk about anything that interested him, but of course, information has a price. He continued eating a bag of chips, approached him, and asked then what his place is in the ranking. He realized he was an informant. Wang Jim responded that today is only the first day at the university, and he wondered how he could find the list so quickly. However, if Lin Yuan is so interested, he can provide another list that includes all the freshmen who are likely to be in the top 10 of the rankings. Lin Yuan asked how much he would sell it for, and Wang Jim replied with a smile that, since they are roommates, he would give a 20% discount, making it a total of 4,000 coins. He was about to give the card number, but Lin Yuan interrupted, thinking that he's a good informant. But where did he get such information? Lin Yuan sat at the computer and saw a piece of paper on the table listing Shen Kang, Awakening White Prison Beast Soul, One Star Beast Master Strength, Chen Mo Awakening Demon Tree King Beast Soul, Nine Star Beast General Strength, Wakuandu Awakening Golden Wing Centipede, King Beast Soul, Three Star Beast Master Strength, Xing Awakening, Eight-Headed Serpent Beast, Soul, Eight-Star Beast General Strength, Song Lan Awakening, Colorful Glass Butterfly Beast Soul, Two-Star Beast Master Strength, Lin Yuan pondered that there are many hidden geniuses in the Modu City University, with half of the freshmen already holding king-level rankings. Zhao Ming, who seemed cheerful, is an eight-star beast general. Lin Yuan wondered about Wang Jin's strength. At that moment, one of the guys mentioned that the last roommate had arrived. The door opened, and a tall, muscular guy entered with a threatening expression, introducing himself as Song Lan. He expressed pleasure in meeting them. The guys looked at him in silence, thinking about how intimidating he was. Zhao Ming called him by name and mentioned he is this year's champion in Modu City. Wang Jin exclaimed with a surprised expression, considering it lucky to share a room with the winner. Lin Yuan wondered if he's indeed Song Lan. If he remembers correctly, his spirit animal is a colorful glass butterfly, and his talent rating is SSS. Wang Jin extended his hand to him, expressing excitement and offering a 20% discount if he's interested in information. Zhao Ming suggested having lunch together, and Lin Yuan accepted with a smile. Lin Yuan thought that his neighbors are not simple. One is an eight-star general, the other is a two-star king. The third is an informant. They went out together, and Zhao Ming walking ahead expressed his dream of entering the university and feeling like he's dreaming now. Wang Jin warned him not to daydream when it's time to pay bills. Suddenly, they noticed two girls not far away, one of them being Sumu. Zhao Ming looked at them passionately, and Wang Jin identified them as Xu Qingqiu, with a snow silkworm as her spirit animal, S-Class, and Sumu with a nine-tailed snow fox, S-Class. Zhao Ming asked how Wang Jin knew all the details, and he attributed it to the power of information. Sumu noticed them and approached, waving and claiming they hadn't seen each other in a long time. She approached him with her friend. He reached out to her and asked what she was talking about. They had seen each other during the day but had recently separated. Sumu smiled and said yes, this is Xu Ching Chu, her roommate. He greeted her, and Wang Jin was very surprised that they knew each other. Zhao Ming smiled at him and asked if he was their informant because he didn't know about it. He shouted back that he was collecting information, not playing matchmaker. How would he know what's going on between them? Lin Yuan decided to introduce his friends and said, turning to the guys, that these were his neighbors, Wang Jin, Zhao Ming, and Song Lan. Wang Jin approached and said they were going to eat together and asked if they wanted to join. Sumu held her friend's arm, turned to the other side, and with a smile on her face, replied that no. Today she agreed to have lunch with her neighbor, so another time. Lin Yuan said it was okay, and they bid farewell going their separate ways. Wang Jin suddenly started shouting and asking Lin Yuan how he knew Sumu. It seems they are quite close. He turned to him and asked if there's anything he doesn't know yet. If he wants, he can sell that information to him with a 20% discount. As neighbors. Wang Jin was very surprised and stunned. Lin Yuan looked at the sky and thought that campus life would be fun. Two hours later, Lin Yuan sat on the floor in a lotus position with closed eyes, magical sparks shimmering around him. 
He considered that even if he wanted to relax in the dorm, he couldn't, given the strong students at the university. Long informed him of a high-energy concentration, good for practice. Lin Yuan responded that this is a free room for initial-level training, and there is a paid room for intermediate and advanced levels where the energy concentration should be higher. However, those rooms are expensive. A mid-level room costs a thousand per hour, and a high-level room costs five thousand per hour. Long put on his glasses, crossed his arms, and looked through the system window. Afterward, he mentioned that it's a coincidence. He absorbed all the low-level crystals, leaving only high-quality ones in the beast soul capsule. Lin Yuan pointed at him and suggested checking how many evolution points he would gain by absorbing a high-quality crystal. Long did so, and Lin Yuan congratulated him on earning a thousand evolution points. Lin Yuan was upset, expressing dissatisfaction, stating that the result is the same as absorbing low-quality crystals, and he wasted 10,000 coins. Long flew closer and assured him that nothing bad happened. He still had the capsule. He put the capsule in his mouth, and after a moment a bright spark appeared in his stomach, emitting many rays of light. Long was surprised and congratulated him again for successfully absorbing the beast soul capsule. He gained a new talent. Long raised his hand and joyfully spun several times, while Lin Yuan looked up in surprise and asked if he has a talent count in his characteristics, if these are hidden parameters. Long continued loudly informing him that talent could increase absorption rate by about 5%. Lin Yuan responded in a low voice, looking to the side, that it's true. He feels he's absorbing energy faster. Long said that since he's there, he shouldn't limit himself to one capsule per month. He should absorb as much as he can. Lin Yuan mentioned that the beast soul capsule is a good thing but expensive, costing 50,000 per piece. The next day, inside the university dormitory walls, Lin Yuan woke up, got out of bed, looked around and remarked that it's only morning. But where are those two? Wang Jin, sorting papers on the table, replied that they must be in the training room. Lin Yuan realized that he wasn't the only one training diligently. He needed to go to the Beast Soul Palace and buy a batch of lower-level crystals. He picked up the phone and greeted someone who called him. The caller greeted him and asked if he was awake. He should come to pick up the money. After a while, he met Zhou Shan on the street, and he mentioned that all the crystal cores were collected. The portion given to him is two million, two hundred thousand. Lin Yuan, with the phone in hand, looked at Zhao Shan's phone and wondered how much that would be. This would solve his problem. Zhao Shan spoke. Furthermore, he exchanged one million for ten thousand lower-level beast soul crystals. The crystals and the remaining money are in this badge. He will lend it to him for a while. Lin Yuan thanked him, calling him a professor, and at that moment, he looked into his eyes and thought that indeed, Zhao Shan is someone he can trust. After that, a smile appeared on his face, and he asked the professor if he could help him with something. He wants to exchange the remaining money for some beast soul capsules. This money is enough to buy 24 pieces, which would last for two years. Zhao Shan asked why he needs so many. He asked him not to worry, and said he knew the right amount. Zhao Shan replied, okay. As soon as there is time, he will go to the Beast Soul Palace and he should train hard. The rankings will be announced soon. Suddenly, he patted his shoulder and began to speak loudly, saying that if he gets into the top ten, he will try to secure a spot for him as a representative of their university in the competition. Lin Yuan responded with a serious expression that he understood everything and thought that his goal is not to be in the top ten, but to be the first on the list. A little later, he was back in the training room, studying hard alone, except for the presence of Long nearby, who congratulated him for successfully absorbing nuclear radiation, earning a thousand evolution points this time in just ten minutes. Lin Yuan continued to sit in silence with closed eyes, but suddenly, he asked if it was due to the five reward capsules he absorbed. Does that mean not only does the air energy absorption rate increase, but also the crystal assimilation rate? Long responded with a surprised expression that honestly, he himself isn't sure. When the professor sends a batch of capsules, he'll be able to check. Lin Yuan gripped the purple crystal in his hands and shouted with a threatening expression that, yes, they will continue to absorb the crystals to increase their strength. Time passed. Days followed mutually. Sometime later, 
A few days after, Lin Yuan entered the dorm room with a shopping bag in hand. His neighbors were all in the room, facing each other. Lin Yuan entered and asked if today is a special day, because everyone is here. At that moment, he thought that normally, these three leave early and return late. Well, except for Wang Jin, who collects information all day. Wang Jin told him that today is the freshmen's meeting. He was so engrossed in training that he forgot about it. Lin Yuan exclaimed with a surprised expression that he really forgot. Wang Jin smiled and shouted that the three of them are training like monsters. They really want to be in the top ten. Zhao Ming retorted, Come on. With his nine-star general, he can only get in the top hundred, but Song Lan with his strength will surely get into the top ten, right? Song Lan spoke in response, scratching the back of his head. Although he holds the rank of king, his soul is auxiliary, and he is not skilled in battle. Furthermore, there are many talents in the university, so it's uncertain. Lin Yuan thought as he watched the conversation. It seems that this year's competition will be intense, and he must train hard. After some time, the boys entered the huge assembly hall. Wang Jian turned to him and said he heard that Director Wang Ting would give a special speech at the freshman meeting. He is the Beast Emperor, and his presence will show that the students are crucial to the university. However, he is unaware that there will be a national competition among the first classes of famous universities this year. The director attaches great importance to selecting students who will represent the university in competitions. Zhou Shan touched Lin Yuan's shoulder, who abruptly turned to him and asked, Professor Zhao Shan, why is he here? He replied that teachers should also attend the freshman meeting. After that, he returned his attention to the boys sitting beside him and asked if they should be neighbors. Wang Jin turned to him and said he admired him for a long time. Lin Yuan pointed his finger at him and said that he was his neighbor, after which he mentioned his name and said he specialized in gathering information. Zhao Shan asked, Gathering information? After which he laughed and said it was very similar to his father. Wang Jin smiled and thanked him for the compliment, addressing him as a professor. Lin Yuan turned to him with a surprised expression and asked, What's going on? Do they know each other? Zhao Shan replied, His father is a very famous person. You'll find out soon, and now it's time to go. Zhao Ming asked Wang Jin who he was. Wang Jin replied, This is Zhao Shan, the great furious bear, an eight-star beast lord, one of the promising candidates for the position of emperor. At that moment, he asked to look at the stage where the director appeared. Director Wang Ting arrived at that moment. Lin Yuan looked at Wang Jin in astonishment and wondered, Wait, his name is Wang Ting, so Wang Jin is really his son. Incredible. Wang Ting ascended the stage and spoke loudly, with confidence in his eyes. He greeted the teachers and students. He is the director of Most City Animal University, Wang Ting. He is happy to see them all here. They are the freshmen of his university and also a great hope. Soon the ranking will be officially opened. They will face the first stage of the fight. The higher the ranking, the more generous the rewards they will receive. Destiny is always in their hands. Talent matters. It means anything as long as they fight. They can change their destiny. The strong must fight. The Beast University of Mo Du has the highest mortality rate, but since each of them chose to be here, it means there are no weaklings and cowards here, ladies and gentlemen. They realize this, and all the students shouted together, Yes. The list was released. The system window reports in first place, Wo Xian Gu, Beast Soul King Awakens, Golden Wing Centipede. In second place, Shen Gang, Beast Soul Awakens, White Fang. In third place, Wang Lin Hu, Beast Soul Awakens, Red Flame Tiger. In tenth place, Song Lan, Beast Soul Awakens, Multicolored Glass Butterfly. Wang Jin's information turned out to be useful. The assumptions were correct. Then, as he looks after some time, he realizes that he is only ranked 312th. His awakened beast soul is a large black lizard. He sadly realizes that he is ranked very low. Lin Yuan continues to look at the list and thinks that Modu Beast University really has many super talented students. He was ranked this way after only 10 rounds of tests. He wonders what the rules for ranking are. Suddenly, Long appears over his shoulder and cheerfully says that he knows. 
The first rule is that only a lower rank can challenge a higher rank, and the difference in rankings cannot exceed 20. The second rule is that each day you can only challenge once. In the first two times, one cannot refuse a challenge thrown by someone. The third rule is that each participant has a chance, once a week, to challenge an opponent with a difference of up to 100 rankings. The fourth rule is that the use of illegal substances is prohibited, and the weapon used must match one's own level. The fifth rule is that if either party admits defeat during the fight or can no longer continue, the fight will end immediately, according to their ranking on the list. Now, it would take about 16 days to reach the top. If they add that there is an opportunity once a week to challenge an opponent with a difference of up to 100 rankings, then the time can be halved. Suddenly, Lin Yuan hears someone in the crowd asking where Wu Xiangu is. He ranked it first as soon as the list was released. In response, another man exclaims that if he remains in first place after seven days, then they will admire him. The girl adds that in three days, there will be serious changes in the rankings. Lin Yuan hears this and thinks that there will indeed be many people competing for a higher position. The situation will become tense, and because of this, he will have to focus a lot on training. At this moment, his roommates approach him, and Zhao Ming turns to Wang Jin, noting that Lin Yuan is strange. Even at this moment, he is focused on training. Wang Jin responds that he wanted to buy information from him for a million, but he refused. He then remembers how Lin Yuan told him that when he reaches the top of the rankings, they can discuss the price of his information again. Wang Jin observes Lin Yuan as he leaves and thinks that, obviously, his goal is to fight for the first place in the ranking. What a formidable power he must have. After a while, Long looks forward in surprise and asks about the capsules that Zhou Shan sent. There are 24 in total. Lin Yuan holds a bunch of pills in his palm and explains that he will try to do it in parts. Then, he abruptly consumes all 10 capsules in his hand. Immediately, he feels a great surge of strength. Long congratulates him several times on his successful intake. He gained another talent and earned 10 talent points. Lin Yuan observes that it is obvious that the absorption rate has increased significantly. Now they need to check if the fusion rate with the crystals will also be increased. After that, he takes one of the crystals and begins to fuse with it. Seven minutes later, Long happily congratulates Lin Yuan for successfully absorbing nuclear radiation. He received a thousand evolution points. Lin Yuan looks at Long with a smile and responds that it's already seven minutes. It used to be ten minutes. His assumptions were correct. The absorption efficiency suddenly increased. The phone rings. Lin Yuan answers the call. He hears the voice on the phone announce that in 10 minutes, Wo Xiangu, Wang Lin, who will fight in the third arena, needs to hurry. Lin Yuan asks with joy if the first and third places are going to fight. He will come soon. After some time, he arrives at the third arena of Mo Du Beast University. As soon as he enters, someone in the audience shouts for him to come closer. Lin Yuan turns to see who it was and sees Zhao Shan waving at him. He approaches, and the man next to him notices that Zhao Shan treats this guy like a treasure, even bringing him to competitions. Maybe I should tie a rope around him. Zhao Shan immediately responds, Mang Changan, it would be better to help those in need instead of gossiping. He then introduces Mang Changan and says that this is his friend. He is one of the teachers. Lin Yuan greets him, and Mang Changan asks if he is Lin Yuan. He also asks if Lin Yuan has already chosen a mentor. Why not become his student? Zhao Shan jokingly exclaims that he called Mang Changan to watch their fight, not to recruit students. Then Mang Changan turns to him and asks, Finally, which of the two has a better chance of winning? But Zhao Shan responds, How can he know if he's not familiar with them? Mang Changan then turns to Lin Yuan and asks what he thinks. Lin Yuan also responds that he doesn't know them. At this moment, people start exclaiming that they are coming out and they need to watch. This is the third in the ranking Wang Lin, and in front is the first on the list, Wo Xiangu. The host announces that in this fight, Wang Ling, ranked third, will fight against Wo Xiangu, ranked first on the list. The battle begins, and the host exits. Wo Xiangu, with crossed arms, asks Wang Lin. He challenged him first, does Wang Lin think he is a coward? In response to this, Wang Lin shouts that the first place belongs to him. Then, Wu Xiangu asks with a cunning smile. 
if he should teach a lesson to Wang Lin, who is so confident. After that, he starts to merge with the beast soul. Lin Yuan sees this and exclaims in his mind, this is the SSS-ranked golden centipede king. Its oppressive strength is at least at the king level. At this moment, Wang Lin looks threateningly back and exclaims that it seems there is an opponent here for whom he will be waiting. He then also uses the beast soul fusion. Lin Yuan watches this closely and observes Wang Lin. He is also a king level beast master and he wonders who will win. At this moment, Zhao Shan and Meng Chang'an are closely watching the battle. Meng Chang'an thoughtfully says that these kids have a lot of energy at their age. He could only dream of such strength. Zhao Shan observes that they have raised this question before. This year's freshmen are not simple. One is better than the other. Suddenly, a threatening roar of a tiger is heard. It opens its wide mouth and shoots a fire beam directly at Wu Xiangu. He sees this, but repels the attack. Wu Xiangu then asks Wang Lin if that's all he can do, but Wang Lin, who starts running forward, shouts not to be deceived but to win first. Then, he propels and jumps high. The Golden Centipede King sees this and is very surprised, freezing in place. The tiger attacks him. Lin Yuan watches this closely and notes that Wang Lin's red flame. Tiger surpasses his opponent in strength, speed, agility, and explosive power. There is a chance that even Wu Xiangu may not be able to dodge it. Mang Chang'an also observes that Wang Lin acts cautiously, testing the enemy from afar and then approaching quickly, catching him off guard. Zhao Shan adds that this guy's fighting experience is simply amazing. Mang Chang'an asks thoughtfully, observing the situation, if Wu Xiangu really deserves the first place on the list. Zhao Shan looks at Lin Yuan and asks if he is afraid of them. The fight for the top rankings will be very difficult. Mang Chang'an continues to think with the soul of a ranked beast. Entering the university is by no means easy, but their desire to lead the ranking is very arrogant. Lin Yuan says quietly that it's a trap. Mang Chang'an and Zhao Shan sharply turn in his direction, and Mang Chang'an asks again how he knows. Then, they look back at the arena and see the red flame tiger continuing to deal with Wu Xiangu. He looks at his opponent and realizes that there is one last move left. So, he is about to attack, but suddenly, Wu Xiangu rises and uses his paws to grab Wang Lin, who shouts furiously to let him go, but he tightens his grip on his paws. The tiger opens its mouth, from which green smoke streams begin to emanate, penetrating directly into the nose of the red flame tiger. Mang Chang'an is surprised to note that he really lured him into a trap. But how did Lin Yuan know this? Lin Yuan explains that the best way to deceive the enemy's vigilance is to show weakness. Wu Xiangu may remain at the top of the rankings, whether he deserves it or not. His fighting talents are by no means inferior to Wang Ling's. Zhao Shan closely monitors what is happening in the arena and realizes that he could not even imagine that Lin Yuan would be so insightful. Usually they ignore the details, but he was completely immersed in the process without relaxing. Then. He turns to Mang Chang'an and pats his shoulder, saying that the young ones are smarter than him. In response to this, Mang Chang'an turns around and asks him to choose his words carefully. Zhao Shan was probably just waiting, but he exclaimed in response that even if he didn't notice anything, he has an attentive student. Mang Chang'an responds confused that he shouldn't have been underestimated. At this moment, the battle continues, with Wang Lian shouting for Wu Xiangu to stop. He then starts emitting flames from his chest, pushing Wu Kangu away from him. Immediately after that, the red flame tiger leaps and tries to attack the golden centipede king. The crowd is perplexed. Will Wu Xiangu really lose in such a situation? Wang Lin, who can change everything in his favor? No, an SS rank cannot defeat an SSS rank with just one beast soul. He is still inferior to Wu Xiangu in abilities. Mang Chang'an turns to Lin Yuan and asks how he thinks Wu Xiangu could lose. In response to this, Lin Yuan says seriously that Wang Ling will lose. Mang Chang'an, surprised, asks how Lin Yuan can know this if at the moment Wang Lin is in the lead, of course, he has absolutely every chance of winning. But Lin Yuan responds with a smile. They definitely noticed. They are probably just testing him. Zhao Shan smiles. Really? Nothing can be hidden from this guy. Lin Yuan explains that Wang Lin's attacks are fierce but hasty. The poison is about to take effect. The red flame tiger growls heavily and prepares to attack. 
Wu Shengu insists that he give up soon, that he has no chance. Perhaps it is not too late to go to the medical center and remove the poison, but if he doesn't go, he is not responsible for the consequences. But in response, Wang Lin shouts with a loud roar, No way! He then jumps directly towards Wu Xiangu. Wu Xiangu looks at this and exclaims, What a fool! Then he hits him with his tail and pushes him back. Wang Lin who falls hard to the ground. Lin Yuan observes this and notes that by falling into the centipede's trap, Wang Lin had already lost. Although Wu Xiangu is currently in first place, he will face tougher opponents in the future. The host's voice is heard, announcing that Wu Xiangu won. Zhao Shan sees this, saying it's a shame. If Wang Lin hadn't been poisoned, the battle could have been more exciting. Mang Chang'an looks at Lin Yuan and says that if he thought like him, the result would certainly change. He thinks that the guy is obviously a novice, but his vision is like that of an experienced hunter, which is scary. Zhao Shan then turns to Lin Yuan and asks if he knows why he invited him to watch the fight. He assumes that Zhao Shan wanted him to admire the young talents. Zhao Shan exclaims sternly, That's right. He needs to clearly understand his own position, the enemy's strengths, and realize the need for self-development. If he wants to be at the top of the rankings, then he cannot relax. Lin Yuan thanks the professor with a smile and says he understood everything. An hour later, in the meditation room, Long asks Lin Yuan what his impressions of the fight were. Lin Yuan responds with a sigh that Wu Xiangu definitely reached the four-star level of a king-level beastmaster, and Wang Lin, if not four stars, then at most three stars. The first simply releases a poisonous cloud, while the second skillfully controls the Scarlet Flame. Considering these data, their real combat strength is much higher than others at the same level. Long agrees. They truly deserve their place on the list. Lin Yuan continues to speak. Furthermore, aiming for the first place, Wu Xiangu undoubtedly has an ace up their sleeve. The question is whether Wang Jin can obtain detailed information. Long asks what are his chances of winning against them. Lin Yuan starts to think. Perhaps around 3 to 5 for him, 7 for Wang Lin. He has good intuition and developed combat skills, but in a life-or-death duel, there isn't much chance, not to mention Wu Xiangu. Long tries to cheer him up, saying that his soul is above the S rank. He is a genius. And with the system on his side, there's no way to lose to them. But Lin Yuan must compensate for the deficiencies to ensure victory. He decisively responds that, yes, he will definitely try. The national championship is less than a month away. He should be on the list. Long adds that he still has one million unused evolution points. He will be able to rise to the level of a two-star king. Lin Yuan then picks up the low-quality crystal and exclaims that he needs to continue his meditation. Long adds with a smile. That's true. A week later, Lin Yuan continued to meditate and breathe steadily. Long looks at the information window and cheers. The information window specifies that his animal soul is a large black lizard. State and growth stage, talent rating is equal to SS rank, the class is a unique beast king. The height is 20 meters and 7 centimeters, weight is 7,840 kilograms. Attack methods, bites, and claw attacks. The ability is an A-ranked attack, daylight, and an S-ranked nuclear breath. The beast artifact is a scarlet flame claw, similar to the beast level. The black scale armor is also similar to the beast level. The remaining number of evolution points is 3,250,000. Lin Yuan also looks at it and feels relieved. He has been accumulating evolution points since reaching the Beast King rank. At the moment, he already has over 3 million points. If it weren't for the boost from the pills, it wouldn't have been possible to accumulate so much. In response to this, Long asks how he will distribute the points. Lin Yuan shows two fingers and immediately responds that he will spend 200,000 points on scale resistance, another 200,000 will be spent on sharp claws, another 200,000 for sharp teeth, and the same amount to increase the power and capacity of the nuclear breath. Half an hour later, Long congratulates him as a master for receiving the second star. There is still 1,750,000 points left. Lin Yuan examines his hands and notes that it's a pity he didn't reach the third star, but it's still not bad. Then, 
he stands up leaves the room and says happily that it's time to test his abilities. Long agrees, saying that it's true. He hasn't shown up in the dorm for a week and has only slept for two or three hours. He also thinks that the description makes him seem like a real monster. A few moments later, in Wang's room, Jin asks, perplexed, why Lin Yuan came back. Lin Yuan, embarrassed, asks, but isn't this a dorm? Why can't I come back? Then Wang Jin packs things into a bag and says that Lin Yuan has gone crazy from training so much. How long has it been since they last saw each other? Lin Yuan asks confusedly where Song Lan and Zhao Ming are. Wang Jin continues to pack his things and explains that Zhao Ming got seriously injured. He came to change clothes. Song Lan arranged a meeting with Zhao Ming's attacker for tonight, but in the meantime, he is probably training. Lin Yuan asks again, confused. What is this? Why does he need that? Wang Jin picks up the bag and explains that someone as kind as Zhao Ming would never get into conflict with someone. There are just too many hunters attacking, so Song Lan had to expose himself to protect himself. Lin Yuan asks about the attacking hunters. Wang Jin closes his eyes and explains that they use strong students to reach the top and then give up places to weaker ones, thus gaining profits and manipulating the ranking. Lin Yuan is very surprised and continues to ask for more details. Wang Jin continues to explain that initially, the strongest freshmen fight for a place on the list, and then lose to the weakest member of the group to transfer the ranking to them. Also, to maintain scores, participants must pay a weekly fee, and those who want to get a higher ranking are required to pay more. Lin Yuan leans in and asks perplexed if they shouldn't be removed from the list if they don't meet the skill level. Wang Jin responds, No. Their position is maintained as long as the money keeps coming in. If anyone dares to challenge the person they are protecting, they become a target. Zhao Ming couldn't bear all of this, so he challenged them, but he was seriously injured. Upon hearing this, Lin Yuan agrees. This is really his style. He asks if the university doesn't care about this. Wang Jin asks with a smile. He forgot that our university admires fights more than anything else. Of course, no one will interfere. Then Lin Yuan realizes that this university is even more ruthless than he imagined, and he begins to like it more and more. Next, he asks who founded the organization. It probably isn't one of the strongest to create such a thing. So Wang Jin says that the creator of the hunters group is Wo Xiangu. Lin Yuan asks if Wo Xiangu isn't the first on the list, but Wang Jin responds that he hasn't been in the first place for a long time. Among the current freshmen, he is considered a hidden talent. Wang Jin then shows the phone displaying the leaderboard on the screen. Today, at 3.30, the first place is occupied by Chu Tiani, the best solo soul of the black-headed Golden Eagle. The second place goes to Shen Kung, the White Fang Beast Soul. The third place is Wo Xiangu, the king of the golden-winged centipede beast soul. The fourth place is Li Qinggan, the dark purple monstrous vine beast soul. The fifth place is occupied by Wang Lin, the Red Flame Tiger Beast Soul. The eighteenth place is occupied by Song Lan, the Multicolored Glass Butterfly Animal Soul. After this, Wang Jin adds seriously. On the second day after the list was published, Wo Xiangu created a ranking hunters organization. He recruited Li Qinggan, Shen Chang, and a bunch of other strong guys. Wo Xiangu promised many benefits. Now, one-third of all students are in his organization, but guys like Wang Lin and Chu Tiani didn't join. Lin Yuan observes thoughtfully. Wang Lin and Wo Xiangu don't get along, so it's not surprising. If we talk about Chu Tiani referring to Wo Xiangu, we had no idea about his strength. Wang Jin, sitting in the chair in front of Lin Yuan, exclaims, Chu Tiani would need only four days to reach the top. The funny thing is that many hunters challenged him, but they were just another obstacle. This left Wo Xiangu very irritated. Lin Yuan smiles and asks if Wo Xiangu also lost to him. Wang Jin explains, to be honest, their souls are different. Chu Tiani, for example, can fly. It's impossible to catch him with venomous spit, so he won. He added that he would later send a battle video for Lin Yuan to watch, but now he needs to rush to Zhao Ming. However, Lin Yuan replied that he would go with him. After a while, they arrived at Zhao Ming's room. He was lying on a hospital bed with his arms and legs wrapped in bandages. Upon seeing Lin Yuan, he immediately asked how he had gotten there. Lin Yuan went to his bed, 
put a basket of tangerines on the table and asked how he was feeling. Zhao Ming replied that he was okay, but Wang Jin immediately exclaimed that he would be fine if those people hadn't done anything wrong. Zhao Ming, in turn, smiled awkwardly and said that it's because his skills are inferior to others. Then he asked if Song Lan was meeting with that guy today. Wang Jin replied yes, tonight, at the 7th arena. Upon hearing that, Zhao Ming sat up in bed and said angrily that it was all his fault. If he had been a little stronger, none of this would have happened. Seeing this, Wang Jin tried to calm him immediately, saying that he should be quiet or he would have to bandage him again. Lin Yuan observed Zhao Ming with concern and asked if Yuan Li was the one who did this to him. That night, Lin Yuan and Wang Jin were at Modu University's Arena No. 7. Wang Jin was eating a snack and explained that today's opponent is called Yuan Li. He is ranked 25th, but he's fighting hard for it. He also hopes that Song Lan can make it because in the battle with Zhao Ming, Yuan Li didn't show his full strength. Lin Yuan turned to Wang Jin and asked it in surprise why Wang Jin doesn't seem to care about his ranking. Wang Jin confirmed with a smile that, yes, it's very difficult for him to fight for a place on the list, so he can only improve his intelligence. He doesn't rely on anyone to gather information and then sell it. He wants to become the biggest seller of intelligence services in China. Lin Yuan adds that it seems even the wealthy are facing difficulties. Wang Jin looks at the starry sky and explains that, to be honest, he has a brother, incredibly talented, but due to conspiracy issues, he entered Yanjing University. He really wants to be his brother's assistant, that's why he collects information. Upon hearing this, Lin Yuan is very surprised. In his imagination, an older brother should be both an older brother and a father at the same time. It's hard to imagine what kind of person his older brother is. Suddenly, Wang Jin puts the snack aside and says that it has already begun. At this moment, Yuan Li enters the arena and sneers, ironically asking if Song Lan will stand up for that idiot. Song Lan stands in front of him, points his finger and says he went too far. In response, Yuan Li also points his finger and laughs, asking if he's talking about a fight with that fool. Very funny. He's so weak that he asks others to defend him. Song Lan hears this and, clenching his fists angrily, begins to merge and transform into a multicolored glass butterfly. Yuan Li sees this and can't believe what he sees. This is his spirit. With these words, he starts to laugh a lot and says how cute the butterfly is. He's very scared. Suddenly, he looks furiously at Song Lan and exclaims that his shiny wings are perfect to be destroyed by him. Then, he starts to merge and transforms into a large ape-like monkey. People in the crowd are very surprised because Song Lan's spirits are very different from his. Someone responds that they heard it's just an auxiliary soul with no combat power. How can it fight against the armed demon monkey? Yuan Li is an aggressive soul. Song Lan is in danger now. Wang Jin turns excitedly to Lin Yuan and says, Yuan Li is incredibly strong. He has every chance of entering the top 10 in the rankings. He asks if Song Lan has a chance of winning. Lin Yuan watches closely what is happening and answers that he still doesn't know, but now the monkey clearly has the advantage. At this moment, the monkey reaches out for the butterfly, but it uses acceleration. When Yuan Li thinks he has caught it, it appears behind him. Yuan Lai wonders what this is, but the butterfly uses fury and attacks the monkey from behind. The monkey then screams in pain and falls to the ground. Lin Yuan understands, this is the power of the glass butterfly. Wang Jin says, despite the mediocrity of the soul, it still needs to be taken into consideration. If Yuan Li relaxes, he will suffer. The butterfly looks at him mockingly. He shouts angrily that Song Lan must die. With these words, he stands up and jumps toward the butterfly, and in an instant, it flies around the monkey and hurts it. Wang Jin exclaims in horror, he has gone mad. But Lin Yuan explains that no, these are attempts to push Song Lan to the edge of the ring to limit the space of movement and create an opportunity to attack. At this moment, the butterfly is watching attentively. Lin Yuan continues to explain that fighting in a confined space limits the combat area, which is different from fighting in an open field. Therefore, Yuan Lai tries to shorten the distance and minimize the effectiveness of the butterfly's attacks. At that moment, the monkey jumps to attack Song Lan. 
Wang Jin asks horrified and finds out that Song Lan's situation is terrible. The monkey raises its fist and confidently shouts that butterflies are not capable of anything. She needs to stop running away and accept defeat. With these words, Yuan Li leaps, aiming his fist straight at the butterfly, but Song Lan exploits the weakness, and the monkey freezes. He exclaims in horror, not understanding what is happening, he can't move. The butterfly responds that it won't be able to narrow the space. The battle's outcome is already predetermined. Then, the butterfly starts flapping its wings intensely, but the monkey smiles bloodthirstily and says that although Song Lan is stronger than that idiot, he never ceases to be a fool. Yuan Li starts gathering energy to attack Song Lan, who sees this and anxiously shouts for an aerial attack. At that moment, the monkey uses a series of strikes, and many sharp red spears burst from its chest. The spears fly directly at the butterfly and tear its wings. Song Lan falls helpless to the ground. Yuan Li jumps and maliciously smiles, saying it's time to torture this fool a bit. With these words, he intentionally falls onto the butterfly and tries to crush it. Yuan Li then stands up and says he knew Song Lan could fly, so he prepared an aerial attack. At that moment, the butterfly tries to fly, but the monkey presses it to the ground with its paw and asks if Song Lan keeps trying to fight. With these words, he further injures the butterfly and starts laughing furiously. Wang Jin wonders with tears in his eyes where the referee is because no one is announcing the fight results. This monster is going to kill him. Yuan Li continues to hurt Song Lan's eyes and asks him what a failure. The auxiliary soul couldn't protect anyone. He is weak but likes to defend others. He also hopes that Song Lan remembers today's lesson for a long time. At this moment, the referee appears and announces that based on the duel results, Yuan Li will take Song Lan's place in the rankings and become the 18th. Yuan Li turns back into a human and laughs loudly, saying that if Song Lan wants to continue, he'll be waiting for a call anytime, but now he belongs with his idiot friend in the infirmary. Then he starts to leave, but suddenly Wang Lin's voice is heard going straight to him, asking if he has no shame. He approaches quickly. Yuan Li, mocking, asks why he cares. It only concerns him and Song Lan. If he wants to fight, he can go to Wuxiangu, but Wang Lin clenches his teeth in anger and asks threateningly if he dares to say more, because if he says more, he will tear his mouth himself. Yuan Li turns to him, opening his arms and asks if he's threatening. Too bad the person highest on the list can't challenge the person lowest on the list. Wang Lin, hearing this, exclaims in irritation how he dares to speak like that. Wang Jin sees this and is also irritated. So, he descends to the arena and questions Lin Yuan about it. At that moment, Lin Yuan enters the arena and says, Since it's like this, Yuan Li should fight with him. Yuan Li asks, surprised who he is. Lin Yuan explains that he is Song Lan's friend and occupies the 312th position in the ranking. Yuan Li must accept the challenge. Yuan Li does this, pointing his finger at him and starts laughing loudly. The 312th place in the ranking, he wants to fight. According to the rules, he has no right to challenge him. He's tired of living. Lin Yuan responds with a smile that he really can't do it now, but in 12 days, he'll be ready. Yuan Li asks, 12 days. Then he thinks that to challenge him in such a short time, he must undergo extreme tests one after another every day. After that, he adds that since Lin Yuan is so confident, then he'll wait. If Lin Yuan fails, he will personally break his bones. Lin Yuan also adds that Yuan Li doesn't need to worry. He will wait. He then looks at Song Lan and runs to him with Wang Jin. Song Lan holds his hand and, with the last of his strength, begins to apologize for losing. Lin Yuan immediately calms him and tells him to rest and regain health. He will take care of the rest. Then he turns to Wang Lin and thanks him for defending Song Lan. Wang Lin explains that they were not satisfied with the hunter's behavior before, but as he sees that Lin Yuan is not a coward either, he decided to challenge Yuan Lie. Lin Yuan replies, If I were afraid of everything, what's the point of coming here? He then apologizes and says they need to go to the infirmary. Wang Lin remains silent for a while and watches as Wang Jin and Lin Yuan help Song Lan walk. After a few seconds, he responds, It's okay. Then he realizes that friendship with Lin Yuan will be useful later. Wang Jin and Lin Yuan stay close to the hospital bed where the injured Song Lan is lying. 
Wang Jin turns to Lin Yuan and asks if he was just fooling around in the arena. He replies, It seems like it. Wang Jin wonders, Can't you handle Yuan Li? Wang Jin looks at him suspiciously and responds that he doesn't know his true power. But Lin Yuan says that in 12 days, they will find out. Wang Jin is very surprised by this response. The next day, Wang Jin is in Arena 57. He observes Chen Hai, a mutant sea serpent ranked with eight stars in the Soul Hierarchy, who is in the 262nd position in the ranking. Mockingly, Chen Hai tells Lin Yuan that he really has high self-esteem, challenging Yuan Li and jumping 50 positions in the ranking to fight him. But Lin Yuan raises his hands and shouts that he needs to talk less. Then he starts merging with the beast soul. Chen Hai is surprised by his impatience, so he also begins to merge. After a few moments, he transforms into a large sea serpent and roars loudly. Lin Yuan also transforms into a large black lizard. The serpent immediately warns him to be careful, then attacks and coils around the lizard's body. Chen Hai yells at Lin Yuan not to move and die in his body. Lin Yuan notices that his movements are good but unfortunately not good enough for him. With these words, he throws the serpent aside and thinks that this is the power of a beast master. They are not equals. Then he grabs it and says it's time to finish, but Chen Hai immediately admits defeat. The host announces that the victory is Lin Yuan's. The audience wonders how it was so fast. This guy turns out to have a king level, so it wasn't that difficult for him to win. After a while, Lin Yuan enters the room under the spectator's gaze. Wang Jin exclaims with a smile that he is a rascal for hiding such power all the time. Lin Wen is also surprised and asks if he really came to his senses and decided to help him with recognition. Wang Jin smiles and responds that no, he had great ideas on how to make money. And he asks if he is interested. Lin Yuan immediately asks him to tell. At this moment, he thinks that money wouldn't hurt. Wang Jin says that his story in yesterday's battle quickly spread throughout the university, so now he is incredibly popular. He will open a betting office. The bet will be whether Lin Yuan can remain undefeated for 12 days or not. But to prepare well, he needs to know Lin Yuan's true power. Lin Yuan then whispers in his ear that his strength is approximately equal to that of a two-star beast king. When Wang Jian hears this, he immediately exclaims that Lin Yuan is stronger than Song Lan. He realizes that Lin Yuan was pretending on purpose. He approaches him and asks how confident he is that he will last the full 12 days without defeat. He thoughtfully replies that about 95% or more, opponents below the top 20 don't pose a threat to him. Then, Wang Jin responds with a smile. Okay, I'll bet 10 million. We'll split 60% to 40%. Lin Yuan indignantly asks if that's too much. Wang Jin responds with a smile. Of course not. He is the key to their success. Lin Yuan asks, perplexedly, why him? After a while, in the university's cafeteria number two, Mo Du, Yuan Li sits at the table and devours food furiously. Suddenly, they hear someone saying that he is doing well. Yuan Li immediately asks what he's doing there. Wu Shengu explains that he heard someone challenging him after the duel with Song Lan yesterday. Yuan Li continues eating and responds that it was some clown outside the top 300. What's so interesting about that? Wu Shengu leans over the table and responds that it seems the news hasn't reached him yet. That guy's already risen to the 262nd ranking and says he's on the level of a beast king. Yuan Li is very surprised by the level of a beast king. Wu Shengu smiles and responds that he heard about it, so he decided to inform him. Yuan Li calms him down and says that this guy could be anyone. He doesn't need to worry. He won't let this guy know anything about the organization's affairs. Wu Shengu then leaves, saying he'll wait for good news from him. After that, Yuan Li starts getting irritated and thinks, A Beast King. I can't wait to see him in action. Three days later, at noon in Arena 53, Lin Yuan stands still thinking. As far as he knows, this time the opponent will be a guy with the soul of a moon shadow leopard, ranked 242, known for his speed. Wang Jin trusts him completely and is even more inspired than yesterday. He remembers asking Wang Jin if he should continue pretending. Wang Jin naturally responded that after opening the bets, the odds change in real time. How can they make money if he finishes quickly? Lin Yuan clarifies, 
You mean a staged duel? Wang Jin explained. Of course not. Where did he get the idea that the duel would be staged? This is just a business strategy. In the end, he still needs to win. The idea is to take full advantage. First, they need to convince the public of the high probability of his defeat and then win, so they can earn much more. After listening carefully to Wang Jin, Lin Yuan agrees. They will do it then. Wang Jin puts his hand on his shoulder and exclaims that their earnings depend only on him. Lin Yuan thinks that he demonstrated the power of a beast king yesterday. Wang Jin is promoting their bets well. Now at least half the university knows he's going to challenge him, so it's no wonder there are so many spectators. Suddenly, someone's voice is heard asking, Is that Lin Yuan? Lin Yuan looks up and sees a guy who says it's unlucky to accept a Beast King's challenge. Then he exclaims that he won't admit defeat so easily. Lin Yuan must show what he's capable of. He then starts merging with the Beast Spirit. After a few moments he transforms into a Moonshadow Leopard. Lin Yuan sees this, and also merges with the Beast Soul, turning into a Black Lizard. The Leopard sees this and thinks it would be a good idea to suppress the Beast King. After all, he is a Nine Stars. He should be able to. So he quickly runs around the lizard from behind and attacks. The lizard groans in pain, and the leopard mentally notes that he injured him. His advantage is speed. Meanwhile, Lin Yuan thinks he'll do as Wang Jin said, play around a bit. So, he strikes the leopard, but misses. Then, the leopard attacks him again from behind. He understands. It seems this is the essence of the true power of the Beast King. At this moment, the audience exclaims in perplexity, How is it possible? The Beast King can't handle him, and how will he fight against you and Yuan Li? One spectator said, Someone organized a bet on whether Lin Yuan would be able to win in 12 days or not. Another spectator replied, It seems that with this strength it will be difficult for him to win. Wang Jin hears this and thinks with a smile, It seems the goal has been achieved. The more people doubt Lin Yuan, the better he demonstrates his acting skills the more money they can earn. At this moment, the leopard attacks the black lizard again. He thinks that if it continues like this, maybe he can defeat the beast king. Then, he approaches the lizard again and stabs him in the back, but suddenly the lizard turns around and throws him away. The leopard hits the wall directly, and as he falls, returns to human form. The audience is surprised. Lin Yuan looks at the enemy, and then smiles. The enemy is perplexed, Maybe it's a coincidence, but he couldn't avoid the blows. At this exact moment, the audience starts cheering with joy. How did this happen? The Beast King still proved to be stronger than the ordinary Soul Master. What are we talking about? Lin Yuan is so strong that he can seriously injure with just one blow. Apparently, in the first half of the battle, he was just pretending and didn't show his true strength. Wang Jin hears this and smiles. Then he runs to the arena towards Lin Yuan and shouts that everything went very well. Lin Yuan confirms and says he acted like a true actor. Wang Jin raises two fingers and responds that it was even better. Most people are now suspicious of him, but he doesn't think his plan will be discovered quickly, so they can continue. Lin Yuan agrees. After that, late at night in the dormitory room, Lin Yuan lies on the bed and thinks that today, after the fight with Qi Ying, he not only received two silver treasure chests, but also a beast artifact. He can just sell that and continue defeating weaker opponents, besides receiving a generous reward for opening the chests and a share in the composition. Five days later, Lin Yuan climbed from rank 242 to 141. He enters the room feeling very sad, thinking that in the past few days, he unexpectedly encountered several opponents who bought their ranking. They admitted defeat before the start of the battle, and that's why he didn't win the treasure chests. Wang Jin looks at him and asks why he's so sad. They still have a chance. He should be happy. But Lin Yuan, tired, asks if he has any information about tomorrow's opponent. Wang Jin then hands him the tablet and says he prepared this especially for him. Lin Yuan takes the tablet and reads that his opponent tomorrow is ranked 92. His name is Li King Ming. He is a beast thunder a strong attack soul. His form is that of a giant blue beast with lightning on his body, capable of controlling thunder, and possesses enormous explosive power. He defeated Liu Changfeng, 
a one-star Beast King, and also defeated Wang Taoist, a one-star Beast King, but lost to Yuan Li, the two-star Beast Lord. His estimated strength is that of a one-star Beast King at the maximum level, and it is the entry level for a two-star Beast King. Lin Yuan notes that he seems very strong. Wang Jin confirms, of course after being defeated by Yuan Li, he joined the hunting group. All students think Lin Yuan will lose, but he adds with a smile. When Lin Yuan defeats Le King Ming, everyone will finally see his true strength, so he will close the bets before the fight. In a duel with him, Lin Yuan doesn't need to hold back, he can show everything he's capable of. Lin Yuan exclaims, Okay, it's finally time to have some fun, in the advanced training room. Sumu is sitting on the floor with her eyes closed, magical sparks shining intensely around her. Suddenly, a message from Xu Qingchu arrives on her phone, and Sumu asks if something happened. She replies that there will be a fight between Lin Yuan and Le King Ming today, and asks if she'll watch. Sumu looked into the distance and wondered how strong this guy is. Xu Qingchu replied that he was ranked 92, a one-star Beast King. Sumu lowered her gaze and said, repeating, a one-star king. Xu Qingqiu spread her hands and suggested that she didn't seem to worry about Lin Yuan possibly losing. Sumu raised her arms and, with a smile on her face said aloud that he is very strong and she believes in his victory. Xu Qingqiu said with a smile that she realized she was confident in her boyfriend. Sumu felt embarrassed by such a statement and shouted awkwardly that he wasn't her boyfriend. She shouldn't say such nonsense. They are just compatriots. Xu Qingqiu replied to her, Okay. She wanted to know something else, why she doesn't participate in attack battles. She should be able to handle at least the next 50. Sumu replied that the teacher said, there's no point in fighting just for a reward. First, she needs to level up, and then act. Xu Qingqiu took a deep breath and said that the teacher's reward is a lot of money, apparently, to pay for the best leveling room every month, equip an energy collection system with high-level crystals. Okay. Now she will watch the fight and then tell everything that's happening. Sumu thanked her for that, and after a while, it was seven in the evening, many people gathered at Modu University's sports area, number 26. Lin Yuan was near the entrance of the arena with Wang Jin and asked him, hearing the loud voices of the crowd, why there were so many people today. He replied that about half of them are betting. The rest just ran for the noise. The betting pool will be closed, so he must do his best. Lin Yuan looked at the arena confidently and said he could count on him. At this moment, Le King Ming had already entered the arena and shouted, Where is Lin Yuan? He turned sharply. Le King Ming is ranked 92 in the ranking. Lin Yuan walked towards him, stopped in front of him and said he was there. Le King Ming approached him. He seemed much more powerful than him, and suddenly asked him a question. Were you the one who threatened Yuan Li and dared to say that you would never lose in 12 days? Lin Yuan asked him, but what couldn't he do? Le King Ming shouted at him with a threatening look. Of course it's possible, but unfortunately, his self-confidence will destroy him. Lin Yuan, with the same threatening tone, told him to try. After a moment, both made a sudden move and shouted at the same time, merging with the soul of the beast. They transformed into beasts and faced each other. Thick dust formed around them, and bright sparks emanated from their bodies. People around were very surprised by this transformation, and one of the guys shouted, This Le King Ming is so strong, he's one of the strongest freshmen. Another guy next to him shouted back that although Lin Yuan, the beast master, didn't impress especially in the last competition, now everyone calls him a chatterbox. The girl next to him also shouted, Anyway, she bet on Lin Yuan's defeat, and can't even imagine what goes through the minds of those who rely on him to win. At this moment, Le King Ming, with eyes burning with a bright light, said, By the way, I forgot to say that I bet on your defeat and that's five million. Lin Yuan asked him if he really bet five million that he would lose. Le King Ming asked the question with a smile, showing his teeth. So what? He needed to bet on victory. Lin Yuan replied, It doesn't matter. He just wanted to thank him. Le King Ming asked him, puzzled, if he said thank you, but why? 
Lin Yuan shouted back that he would soon find out, and after these words he rushed towards him, causing a loud roar to echo throughout the arena. Lei King Ming shouted how fast he was. The man of intelligence said that his soul belonged to the strength category. At that moment, he stretched his paws, looked up, and his whole body shone with intense light. At that moment, they started attacking each other in the air, roaring loudly, making sudden movements. After the first blow, Lin Yuan was thrown to the side with a roar. Le King Ming looked at him and thought with a malicious expression on his face. Although he has only one star, he can match the speed of two stars. If he doesn't die, he will suffer a lot. At that moment, his eyes widened in surprise, and he wondered, is this it? But how is this possible? He saw how quickly Lin Yuan recovered after his blow and ran to attack him. Le King Ming tried to prepare himself and realized how monstrous he was, forcing him to do so. He stopped abruptly and directed a bright magical beam towards him. Lin Yuan smiled and said, looking at him, that he was unlucky. He was caught when the audience no longer needed his performance. He opened his mouth from where a beam of bright light emerged, defeating his opponent with incredible speed and bidding him farewell. Le King Ming flew to the side and said, How could this be? His body sent many fragments flying in all directions after this attack. There was a loud scream, and Lin Yuan looked around. Le King Ming fell to the ground and was destroyed. The host announced that the duel was over. Lin Yuan was happy about it and won. Many people in the arena were perplexed by this surprise, opening their mouths in amazement. No one expected such a turn of events, and everyone continued to watch Le King Ming's suffering, who opened his bloody mouth and screamed. People began to rejoice and shout, Wow! One of the guys exclaimed that he couldn't believe what his eyes were seeing. Lin Yuan really won. How great is that? He decided to bet 200,000 on it, and his intuition didn't disappoint him. People laughed loudly and rejoiced. Xu Xingqiu was also stunned by the end of this battle, and mentally wondered if he was able to destroy Le King Ming with one blow. Although she is a beast queen with a second star, it would also be difficult for her to resist such a thing. No wonder Sumu trusts him so much. Long flew to Lin Yuan and said that he won and received a golden treasure chest. Lin Yuan looked at the attacked enemy and asked if he could open this chest now. Long replied that, of course he can. Only he can see the contents. A moment later, the chest was successfully opened. 50,000 evolution points and a Beast King level artifact were obtained. Kang Li's claw is a Beast King level artifact. When hit, the claws are infused with lightning, granting an increase in attack speed, as well as a bonus to lightning attribute damage. Lin Yuan looked at the chest with his mouth open and shouted with a satisfied expression on his face that this was much better than the Flame Claw. It's of a general level, but can be sold for a good price. Wang Jin started yelling at him from afar and asked, Friend, what was that? He ran towards him with a joyful feeling and shouted, Lin Yuan! Lin Yuan turned to him in surprise, and he continued to shout, What a beautiful victory! Now they are incredibly rich. They exchanged satisfied looks. At that moment, someone began to approach them from afar and said, He reveals himself capable of something more. He clapped loudly and said he had watched the duel, and it was incredibly exciting. Wang Jin turned to him tiredly and asked why he came. He replied that he just wanted to ask how his roommates were. Lin Yuan told him that he shouldn't care. Yuan Li said, there's no talk of any emotion. He has only a few days left. Let him go and check on them. He approached faster and pushed Wang Jin out of his way, who blinked at his sudden movements. He passed by them, looked back, and said that while fighting Le King Ming, he shouldn't have wasted so much time. Wang Jin spoke and asked how he's not tired of mocking everyone yet. Lin Yuan replied that, let him infuriate now, but they will look at him when it's time to bid farewell to life. Three days later, Lin Yuan rose to rank 32. He was in the training room in the lotus position, with closed eyes, many sparks emanating from his body, long floating above him, watching what was happening with a smile on his face. Lin Yuan opened his eyes and spoke seriously that he finally reached the three stars of the Beast King. Long said that tomorrow he can challenge Yuan Li. Lin Yuan replied that in the last few days, the opponents didn't bring anything valuable. He can already imagine what the chest will be like after defeating Yuan Li. 
The next day, Lin Yuan was walking with Wang Jin on the university grounds and spoke to him with a smile on his face. By the way, a few days ago, I opened a new bet. Lin Yuan looked tiredly at the bag in his hands and asked if it was something like, Lin Yuan can defeat Yuan Li, and what bet he made. Wang Jin replied, one to one and two to one. People no longer decide to make large sums after seeing his true strength, so there is little chance of hitting the jackpot. Lin Yuan replied that he bet six million. Wang Jin replied back that this is all the profit he gave him. It seems he's really serious this time. Lin Yuan replied back that he's been waiting for this day for a long time. Meanwhile, Zhao Ming, who was in the hospital with Song Lan, jumped out of bed and shouted at the door, asking what their fate would be by coming here. Lin Yuan and Wang Jin entered their room. He handed a bag to Zhao Ming and said that they brought hot buns from the third cafeteria. Zhao Ming bowed to him and joked, Thank you, Dad. Lin Yuan asked how Song Lan was. He responded with a sad expression on his face that he wasn't doing well. The injuries were really deep. But fortunately, he had the level of a king. Otherwise, he would have already been expelled. Song Lan opened his eyes and asked with a trembling voice why they suddenly came. Wang Jin approached him with a package and said with a smile that they brought breakfast for them and he could eat it. Lin Yuan looked away and thought that in the battle with Yuan Li, not only Song Lan's body was defeated but also his spirit. His damaged pride wouldn't allow him to live in peace and he would start doubting his abilities. No one would help him here. Only by facing himself in a struggle could he realize the value of life. Wang Jin took a bite of the sandwich and said that today Lin Yuan would definitely get revenge for them. Zhao Ming and Song Lan looked in their direction, confused, wondering what was happening. Wang Jin told them that in 12 days he had never lost, and that's all for today's fight. Zhao Ming asked him, with an astonished expression on his face, when he became so strong. Song Lan was wide-eyed, surprised for a moment, after which he decided to speak with a threatening expression on his face. That even though Yuan Li used techniques last time, he doesn't think that's all he is capable of. He should be careful. Lin Yuan was saddened by the situation and thanked him for his advice, after which he confidently said he would not lose. Sometime later, at noon, many people gathered again at arena number three, anticipating an incredibly interesting fight. They shouted and gathered their thoughts before the fight. Wang Jin sat in the front row, but when he saw an unfamiliar guy, he was surprised and asked who was standing there. The guy stood on the edge of the viewing area and observed what was happening in the arena. Yuan Li entered the field and waved to the sky. At that moment, Lin Yuan approached him and said that even Wu Xiangu was here. It seems that this fight is very important for the hunters. Yuan Li shouted angrily that he just wants to see how he will be quickly destroyed. Lin Yuan looked curiously up and locked eyes with Wu Xiangu, who was watching what was happening. Suddenly Yuan Li started shouting, turning his back and putting his hands on his waist. Today, everyone gathered to watch the fights between him and Lin Yuan. They want to know who is stronger. Yuan Li pointed at himself and shouted with a sinister expression that he could say right now that he would be the winner. Then he pointed at Lin Yuan and shouted that he would be the last to dare to cross the hunter's path. Lin Yuan looked at his antics with a calm expression, said nothing. Wu Xiangu applauded afterward and shouted with a smile on his face that it wasn't bad. Zhao Ming got angry, clenched his fist and shouted, why the hell he thought he would defeat Lin Yuan? This is too much. Wang Jin grabbed him by the shoulder and asked him to calm down with a smile on his face. They sat back down and suddenly someone approached them and said that many hunters had come this time. So he decided to show his devotion to Wu Xiangu. The guys turned cautiously to look at him and found that Wang Lin had approached them, asking with a smile if they minded if he sat next to them. Wang Jin was astonished at the question and replied that, of course he could sit with them. He didn't think he would come here too. Wang Lin said that he had bet 10 million on Lin Yuan. Naturally, he came to watch this fight. Wang Jin was surprised and asked if it wasn't too much, if he wasn't afraid of losing. At that moment, Zhao Ming realized that the guy had a lot of money. Wang Lin asked if they organized bets. He had enough time to earn extra money, and then he would bet all the money on Lin Yuan. Wang Jin realized the guy was doing the right thing and took his share. Zhao Ming looked down and said, 
they should only see how confident he is. Wang Lian replied that Wo Xiangu also made a lot of noise, and at the same time, settled in front of the organization members. In the end, after Chu Tianyi expressed support for Lin Yuan, he became the most desired target. He hopes that this won't affect him too much. Wo Xiangu stands up and observes what was happening in the arena with a look and a smile on his face. Wang Lin thought that he really wanted to see how Wo Xiangu would react if Yuan Li lost. At that moment, a battle started between the rivals, and Yuan Li shouted with a threatening look, transformed into a huge monkey, and shouted that in this battle he would break Lin Yuan's bones one by one until he knelt in front of him and began begging for mercy. He began to roar loudly and thrash his arms and legs everywhere, making a lot of noise. Many sparks from the transformation flashed around him, and he shouted to show what he was capable of. Lin Yuan still didn't transform and stared intently at the huge monkey that appeared right in front of him. He continued to watch him threateningly, and suddenly his eyes widened. He cast a fusion spell and transformed into a huge monster and roared. He stood in front of the monkey for a moment, and suddenly, the monkey jumped quickly and began advancing toward him, opening its mouth. Lin Yuan quickly realized what was happening, but at that moment, Yuan Li touched his body, and a bright spark occurred between them. They collided with their powers, and suddenly, Yuan Li expressed fear on his face and realized it couldn't be. His punch was at the level of a two-star king. At that moment, there was a loud click between them, and blood spurted. Lin Yuan opened his mouth, from which Yuan Li saw a bright light beam beginning to be directed towards him, realizing that his conditions weren't good. He needed to change his position immediately. He moved away from Lin Yuan and managed to dodge the bright light beam Lin Yuan was about to destroy him with. Yuan Li paused, and dust clouds flew near his body due to a powerful blow from Lin Yuan. He was scared, and thought he was in a terrible situation, that everything was happening too fast. He opened his mouth in shock, and at the same moment, a light beam from Lin Yuan's mouth was heading towards him. He was scared, and wondered if this was happening again. After which he tried to quickly jump from his position, but a bright light beam illuminated the entire area and hit him directly although not directly as he managed to shield himself. No one would have thought, Yuan Li wondered with a terrified expression, he thinks he can deal with him just with this ability. How naive. He began advancing head on with Lin Yuan's attack and realized he had not a scratch. He was absorbing most of the energy, and if this continued it wouldn't last long. Lin Yuan continued to attack him with a bright light beam, but Yuan Li held up the blow and defended himself with his shield. Zhao Ming wondered surprised, Yuan Li endured Lin Yuan's attack, how did that happen? Lin Yuan continued to attack him with all his strength, but suddenly, the bright yellow light turned blue, and after a loud sound, Lin Yuan began emitting bluish magic. Everything lit up with bright light beams, and Yuan Li, with scared and horrified eyes, realized it was nuclear energy. But before he had time to conclude this thought, he was destroyed by an incredible surge of energy. The blow hit his chest precisely, and he roared loudly in pain before being thrown aside, a huge stream of blood pouring from his mouth. Lin Yuan stopped, continuing to observe what was happening, and at that moment, Yuan Li fell to the ground with a crash. Wang Jin, Zhao Ming, and Wang Lin, who were stunned by what was happening, and at the same time, very happy, and Wu Xiangu, in turn, became cautious and with a somber expression asked how this happened. Zhao Ming pointed his finger at Yuan Li and began shouting wow, and then asked, when did Lin Yuan become so strong? From incredible joy he hugged Wang Jin, who replied that he didn't know. He had always been like that. Zhao Ming continued to shout, Yuan Li is no match for him. It's a pity that someone's bet didn't work out. Wang Lin told them not to rejoice too early because he didn't think everything would be so easy. Yuan Li stood up, taking a heavy step, and admitted that Lin Yuan had exceeded all his expectations. He was surrounded by a huge column of dust. Afterward, he touched his wound on his face and said threateningly, It means I can place seriously with you. After these words, he ran towards Lin Yuan, who once again abruptly opened his mouth as a defense and began emitting magical light causing stone fragments to fly everywhere. Yuan Li jumped high and advanced towards him, 
shouting for him to die. He made many sudden movements that illuminated the entire area with a bright light. Lin Yuan touched his approaching hand and tried to stop his attack with his own strength. After that, Yuan Li retreated a bit but reminded him that he has hands. He raised his bloody hand and said that, the taste of blood is not bad at all, is it? After asking the question, he delivered a fierce blow to Lin Yuan's body, causing a lot of blood to be spilled, and Lin Yuan roared. Lin Yuan was defeated, and blood was pouring from his body. Yuan Li saw this and shouted with joy and pleasure, claiming that this was just the beginning. After these words, Yuan Li suddenly started running. Lin Yuan noticed this and became alert, after which Yuan Li delivered another fierce blow to him, and his blood was spilled again. Lin Yuan jumped in place, and Yuan Li observed his behavior from afar with a smile on his face. Suddenly, Lin Yuan's teeth became visible in his mouth. He laughed, and Yuan Li wondered with a somber expression if he still had the strength to laugh. Lin Yuan became furious, clasped his claws together, causing an intense glow. He told Yuan Li that he wasn't the only one who possessed artifacts. He raised his hands and the entire area trembled with magical waves. Yuan Li was in a state of complete astonishment and thought, horror. He deliberately allowed him to approach to lure him into a trap. A moment later, a bright light beam was directed at him, exploding near his body and hitting him. Lin Yuan directed two of his fists and placed them on his enemy's shoulders, bringing him closer to the ground. His body began to glow with a bright light. After this, he abruptly lifted his head, looking up, and opened his mouth again. He directed a bright light beam at Yuan Li, who in turn began to scream in fear, pleading for him not to do this. But Lin Yuan shouted back that he would be finished. A moment later, he attacked his opponent with incredible force and completely destroyed him. The entire area was filled with a bright blue color. Wang Jin, Wang Lin, and Zhao Ming opened their mouths in surprise, and at the same time they all saw Yuan Li defeated, lying motionless in a pool of blood. Lin Yuan stared at his body, and a lot of dust formed around the battle site. After this, Yuan Li said with a trembling voice that he hadn't lost yet, but he couldn't finish that sentence. Suddenly, Lin Yuan said with joy in his eyes that since he hadn't lost, then let him allow him to continue. Yuan Li tried to get up from the ground, but his entire body was shaking, and he was completely exhausted. He asked loudly, What does he want to achieve with this? Lin Yuan shouted back at him that he wants to do to him the same thing he did to Zhao Ming and Song Lan at that time. He opened his mouth again and continued his attack, making Yuan Li scream with the sudden continuation of the fight and his pain. Suddenly the entire area turned a bright red color. Yuan Li was completely defeated and fell to the ground again, experiencing incredible pain. The people around were surprised by this turn of events, and someone started shouting, Lin Yuan is really a cruel guy. This is how Yuan Li should be treated. Let him have what he deserves. A girl covered her mouth with pity and watched Yuan Li's suffering with a scared expression on her face. Another guy shouted, clenching his fist in anger. Honestly, it's about time he learned a lesson. The hunters are the weak point of the academy. Well done, Yuan Li. Lin Yuan stopped his attacks and asked his opponent, Is he giving up? This is the only way to stop his suffering. Otherwise, he might as well forget about the national competitions. Yuan Li remained silent for a while, then suddenly started shouting and asked, Lin Yuan, what does he think he's doing? Lin Yuan opened his mouth and shouted back, He's just behaving as he did at that moment. At that instant, screams and discussions were interrupted by Wu Xuan, who shouted, Lin Yuan, he shouldn't exaggerate what's happening. Wang Lin, who approached him from behind with Wang Jin and Zhao Ming, shouted at him with a question, Did he go too far? There's not much respect for them, the hunters, who hold places on the ranking list and do as they please. Wu Xuan turned to him with a smile, after which he mockingly cleaned his ears and shouted the question, Who gave the word to the loser? Wang Lin became irritated and shouted at him, but Wu Xuan paid no attention and shouted with a threatening look. When Lin Yuan, he should think carefully if he really needs enemies in the form of hunters. At that moment, a bright beam of light appeared behind him. He extended his arms and used his powers. Lin Yuan waved at him and asked if there was a misunderstanding between them. Wu Xuan looked at him surprised and asked if there was a misunderstanding. Lin Yuan confidently replied, Yes, declaring a long-standing war against their despicable organization. 
After these words, the people around opened their mouths in surprise, as no one expected to hear such humiliating words directed at the hunters. Wang Lin smiled, and Wang Jin and Zhao Ming supported their friend by shouting for him. Wu Xuan became angry and shouted a question. Do you understand what you're saying right now? The judge asked, What's that noise? He hasn't announced the end of the fight yet, so they shouldn't complain about being expelled from the venue. The fight continues. Lin Yuan turned around and realized that this is legal. The judge was a beast soul at the Lord level. Xuan Li stood up and asked him with a trembling voice and an ironic smile if he really wanted him to give up. He laughed and shouted, making a sudden hand movement. He must listen. There are no more limits. Let him come and kill him. He was so angry that he opened his mouth as wide as he could and finally shouted, Yuan Li is not afraid of death. After these words, a bright magical beam immediately flew in his direction, piercing him. Yuan Li fell to the ground with a roar. He turned back into a human. His whole body was covered in abrasions and blood. He looked at the sky, and at that moment, people began to shout, This simply cannot happen. Lin Yuan won. He really won. Lin Yuan looked at Yuan Li's prostrate body with a serious and thoughtful expression. The judge announced that the winner of today's duel is Lin Yuan. Wu Xuan became furious when he realized this and shouted at him to remember that the day will come to settle the scores. He licked his bloody finger and glared at him with fury. After some time, Long appeared and was very happy with his victory, saying, He defeated the king-level beast and received the golden chest. Lin Yuan saw it, and with a smile on his face said, How great, he has another golden chest at this moment. Zhao Ming and Wang Jin ran up to him shouting for joy. Zhao Ming had never thought he was so amazing. Wang Jin also smiled at him. Wang Lin also approached and told him he should be more careful because Wu Xuan won't just let this slide. He is the kind of person who won't stop until he achieves his goal. He asked who Lin Yuan thinks will be sent next. Wang Lin, with hands on his belt, replied that it will probably be Li Qingan. Lin Yuan asked why him, while Wu Xuan and Shen Kang hold higher positions compared to him. The current ranking table looks like this. Chu Tiani is in first place, Shen Kang is in second, Wu Xuan is in third, and Li Qingan is in fourth. Wang Lin, with a smirk, answered that Wu Xuan is at the top of the hunter's list, so he values himself like no one else. Challenging him to a duel is almost impossible. He definitely won't send Shen Kang unless it's absolutely necessary, so only Li Qingan is left. Lin Yuan looked into the distance and said, So be it. He looked at Wang Jin and asked if he has any information about him. Wang Jin replied that he will definitely find out if it's necessary and not just about him. Wang Lin said they could also not waste time and ask him directly. He used to fight with him. Zhao Ming asked who won last time. Wang Jin replied with a smile, speaking as if he hadn't seen the ranking table. Zhao Ming scratched his head and laughed, embarrassed. After that, Wang Lin spread his hands and said naturally he lost. As King In is not only incredibly strong, but his beast soul is also extremely eccentric. Lin Yuan asked what he meant by those words. He approached them and asked if they had heard about the plant soul in the observation room. One of the university staff was watching what was happening on the computer. Director Wang Ting entered and said, This is a truly spectacular duel. This man was a judge. He turned sharply and asked the surprised Dean how he ended up there. He replied that he was just watching the fight. Lin Yuan is not so bad. The judge agreed, saying he was quite experienced, ruthless, and decisive, which is lacking in most students. Wang Ting asked if his ability had reached the E rank. The judge scratched his head and exclaimed exactly, but he had a thought that the information was incorrect. The strength he showed is at least S or SS rank. Speaking of which, he should know a little about the hunters recently. They have become more aggressive, taken over the ranking table, and continue to press the rest of the disciples. There are complaints. Wang Ting replied that he understood everything, but Wu Xuan did not violate a single rule of the academy. His approach also corresponds to their motto. Students can feel the injustice. That's quite natural. The world is cruel in its essence. These kids still don't know the pressure people face every day, and the further they go, the more it will happen in their lives. Lin Yuan entered the cultivation room, and the system greeted him, 
calling him Freshman Lin Yuan, ranked number 18 on the list. Upon updating his qualifications, he now had a 50% discount for the high-level training room. The procedure would take no more than five minutes. He looked inside the room and said, Cool, now it's clear why everyone is striving so hard to reach the top of the ranking table. Long, who was beside him, told him to open the chest faster. He sat on the floor and opened it with a satisfied expression on his face, then showed it with joy. Wow, 50,000 evolution points and a king-level artifact. Lin Yuan noticed a shiny object above him and wondered what it was. Long replied that it's a crystal that accumulates energy, and when the owner's attack reaches maximum energy in the crystal, it becomes 50% more powerful. Additionally, the owner can pour their own energy into it. He can try it now, and he replied, Okay, then shouted the word fusion and transformed into a monster. This is a worthy place for cultivation, similar to a four-dimensional space. In his paw was the same luminous object that began making loud sounds and shone in blue. After a moment there was some kind of change in it, and Long spoke with joy as the object was full. Lin Yuan replied that it consumed almost half of all his energy and more than half an hour to fill such a small stone. It will be almost impossible to recharge it in battle. He brought this object to his chest and continued to ponder. Long replied, saying its use is well reflected in the preliminary preparation. If used in combination with nuclear breathing, it can cause devastating damage. Lin Yuan picked up the storage talisman and agreed, that's exactly it. Long continued to inform him repeatedly, successful absorption, obtained a thousand evolution points. Lin Yuan sat silently on the floor, in the lotus position, with bright, magical sparks around him. Suddenly, he heard some sound, and with Long, he was surprised. They looked to the side, and he pressed the button, making Wang Jin appear in front of him. Wang Jin looked around and said, Wow, he settled in well. They're using an advanced cultivation room, all with earned money. Now he's not in the mood for jokes, as expected. Li Qingan declared war on him, but he has a higher ranking so he needs to be challenged. What will he do? Lin Yuan replied, The fight cannot be refused after the victory over Yuan Lai. The rest of the hunters are watching him. By the way, he plans to continue making money with them. Wang Jin was very surprised by this and asked loudly if he wants to open bets again. Lin Yuan showed two fingers and said that this time he will bet 20 million on himself. Wang Jin was stunned by these numbers and asked incredulously if it was really 20 million. Then, he will bet 30 million. Lin Yuan looked at him with a smirk and asked if he's afraid of losing. Wang Jin clenched his fists and shouted that he has nothing to lose, believing he can win. He began to feel unwell and finally said, the duel is scheduled for tomorrow at 7 in the evening. Until he goes and announces the opening of the bets, they will meet before the fight. Long smiled and asked if it was just his imagination, or if he never sighed while speaking. Lin Yuan took a deep breath and said they would leave it to him. He didn't think there would be a commotion similar to the last time the next day. On the second evening, Wang Jin ran quickly through the university grounds. People he knows tell him they don't believe Lin Yuan will win this time either. Anyway, Li Qingan is ranked fourth on the list and also has an unusual plant soul, said another guy. Finally, there was someone who could defend the honor of the freshman. He began to cheer for Lin Yuan, and regardless of whether there was victory or defeat, he still bet a hundred on Lin Yuan. How dare he say such a thing? Wang Jin clenched his fists and thought the current odds are one and a half. This shows that most people continue to be against Lin Yuan and his winning friend, and now their condition depends only on him. At that moment, Lin Yuan came out to meet him on the street, waved his hand, and apologized for making him wait. Wang Jin approached, caught his breath a bit, and said, That's amazing. The duel starts at 7 and he trained until 6.30. Well, training never hurt anyone. Wang Jin turned sharply and said, He really has no equal in this. Go. They need to get to the arena a little earlier. Lin Yuan asked, To run and eat first since he hadn't had dinner yet. Wang Jin opened his mouth in shock and asked in fear what he said. Academy, third canteen, second building. They sat at a small table and ordered a lot of food. Lin Yuan asked why he suddenly decided to pay the bill. Did you take the wrong pills today? 
Wang Jin replied back, All this is nonsense. He bet all the money on him so he should eat quietly. The more he eats, the stronger he'll be in the duel. Lin Yuan continued to talk and chew at the same time. He is the Dean's son, but he pretends he has no money. Wang Jin retorted with a smile. That's not the point. Money from your dad and money you earned are two different things. He wants to show his dad that he's not a freeloader. Besides, he still doesn't know what kind of beast soul he has. Wang Jin looked away, embarrassed, and said hesitatingly, He shouldn't ask about that. He'll find out everything on his own later. At night, first the arena, there were many people gathered in the arena. Lin Yuan approached and wondered, Why are there so many people here? Wang Jin smiled and replied, Of course, this time he's against the fourth ranked on the list. Considering how exciting the fight against Yuan Lai was, it would be strange if fewer people came. They bumped fists, and Wang Jin told him to go in. And meanwhile, he would find Wang Lin and Zhao Ming. Lin Yuan agreed with him, but suddenly turned around when he realized something was wrong. It was Wu Xuan, who was in the same place as last time, watching him with a terrifying expression. Lin Yuan looked into his eyes with a slight smile on his face and thought he was going to destroy him. It's a pity he chose the wrong person for such a purpose. At that moment, Li Qingan came out to meet him in the arena, walked confidently in his direction and asked, are you the one who defeated Yuan Lai? Honestly, you don't fit the role of his opponent very well. He adjusted his glasses with an arrogant expression on his face. Because Li Qingan, he wants to give advice not to provoke unequal opponents in strength. Lin Yuan smiled and thanked him, but said that he didn't need advice at that moment. The judge said, Ladies and gentlemen, as everyone is gathered, he declares the duel open. Many people cheered in support of the guys, and at that moment, Lin Yuan used the unity spell, roaring loudly as he transformed into a beast. Li Qingan smiled, took off his glasses and also shouted, Unity, transforming into a monster with incredibly long shoots on his body. Lin Yuan extended his hands and lifted his gaze upward, after which he said, This is nothing. His palm had sharp claws that shone with intense light and began making loud sounds. Everything around lit up with a bright light, and only many sparks were visible everywhere, allowing Lin Yuan to easily cut several of his shoots with his claws. Zhao Ming shouted with joy, barely holding Lin Yuan, saying he should keep his attack that way. Wang Lin, with a serious expression, said it was too early to celebrate. He was just preparing and evaluating all options. Li Qingan's true strength lies in something completely different. At that moment, Li Qingan's eyes glowed intensely, and Lin Yuan asked him if that was all he could do. More shoots began falling to the ground as Li Qingan looked and said, it seems he understood everything. He stopped, stood on the ground and said, now it's time to finish him. The monsters stood facing each other, and at that moment, long roots began to appear on the shoots under Lin Yuan's feet. People looked surprised and opened their mouths in shock as it began to sprout again. Lin Yuan watched carefully and pondered, with Wang Lin saying that one of Li Qingan's abilities is regeneration. As long as he has enough energy, the root will sprout infinitely. The roots reappeared on his body, and he was completely renewed, with long roots beginning to intertwine over Lin Yuan's head. At that moment, Li Qingan wished he would die screaming his name. Lin Yuan looked at the growing roots and wondered how he could kill him. Then, he opened his mouth and shot a bright blue ball that turned into a beam and shot directly at Li Qingan. The crowd exclaimed, Incredible! So many roots, and all destroyed. What kind of plant soul is this? Li Qingan begins to get angry and thinks that Lin Yuan made a fool of him in front of the audience, so he shouts that he is completely irritated. The Black Lizard mockingly asks if he has something new to show. Then, the demonic plant begins to produce even more roots and weaves, a dome with them over the Black Lizard, which watches with tension and says the situation is not the most optimistic. Lin Yuan would probably be unable to defend against such an attack. Zhao Ming immediately questions if he will fail and lose Wang Lin, explaining that he doesn't know. He had warned earlier, Li Qingan had taken the advantage and it wouldn't be easy to recover. Men exclaimed in fear, whether to warn or not, but it's hard to avoid something like this. Wang Jin closes his eyes tightly, clasps his hands and thinks excitedly. 
At this moment, the audience carefully watches the battle and exclaims about the same technique when many shots are sent from all sides. At this exact moment in Lee Kingan's arena, a black lizard is surrounded. She tries to destroy everything with her nuclear breath. The audience observes this and notes that even Lin Yuan will have to try, as one nuclear breath is not enough. At this exact moment, several roots attack the black lizard from behind. It realizes this when suddenly the rest of the roots begin to penetrate its body. Wang Jin looks horrified. Why? Li Kingan asks. So, Lin Yuan is ready to beg for mercy. Lin Yuan does not respond, but he understands that the roots are sucking energy from his body. Here is Li Kingan's second ability, energy absorption. The demonic plant loudly asks how he is. Lin Yuan should beg for mercy if he wants to save at least a drop of energy. But the black lizard smiles and replies that he hasn't achieved anything to ask for such a thing. Then, he swings his claws and begins to cut all the roots. Li Kingan understands that neither long-range nor short-range attacks will help. Lin Yuan begins to roar loudly and then charges directly towards Li Kingan suddenly. He stops right in front of him, widely opens his mouth where there is a bright blue ball. The demonic plant sees this and thinks relieved that this is the nuclear breath with which the black lizard defeated Yuan Lai. But Li Kingan notes that it's a pity he already knows this technique. After this, Li Kingan continues to release new roots that wrap around the body and then form a shield. At this moment, Lin Yuan unleashes a beam of nuclear breath, but Li Kingan manages to launch this attack. The audience is surprised. What a deadly move with just his breath. Lin Yuan deserves the status of one of the talented freshmen. Can a root shield block this? After a few moments, the attack ends in smoke, and small flames emanate from Li Kingan's shield. He thinks he was lucky that an abundance of energy was put into this blow before it collided with the shield. However, he never expected the blow to still be powerful, but the victory is still his. Lin Yuan has no more ways to resist, but suddenly Lin Yuan smiles and says that Li Qinggan is really unlucky to hear this. The demonic plant removes the shield and asks indignantly what he said, that he needs to stop talking nonsense. The black lizard sees this and thinks that his strength is only enough for one blow, just like him. Then he turns to Li Qinggan and says that without the energy accumulating crystal, he might actually lose to him. What a pity something like that will never happen again. Immediately after these words, blue rays of light appear around the black lizard. Li Qinggan sees this and wonders what kind of crystal is happening. Lin Yuan shouts that Li Qinggan is an idiot. Li Qinggan can't understand if it's some kind of joke. He begins again to create a shield around himself, which this time is much more powerful than the previous one, but a powerful attack from the black lizard destroys the shield. Wang Lin, Zhao Ming, and Wang Jin watch in astonishment. At this moment, Lin Yuan uses a nuclear breath attack to throw Li Qinggan straight into the wall. He hits it and falls to the ground. The crowd freezes with interest. Lin Yuan won. He really defeated Li Qinggan. Then the announcer's voice is heard announcing that, based on the results of the duel, the victory goes to Lin Yuan, having defeated Li Qinggan. He rises from the 18th to the 4th place in the rankings. Wang Lian, who watches this, notes that he couldn't even think that this could happen. Then, the announcer announces that the fight is over. Zhao Ming and Wang Jin hug each other and exclaim joyfully. Hooray, Lin Yuan won 45 million. Wang Lin, who also looks at the arena with a smile. At this moment, Wu Xuan approaches Li Qinggan and starts getting angry while Li Qinggan is unconscious on the ground. Li Yuan is pleased to notice that this is his first gift to Wu Xuan. What will he say? At this moment, Wu Xuan exclaims with dissatisfaction that Lin Yuan will still think about the consequences. He's not afraid to regret. Li Yuan then turns and asks what they were thinking when they started their activities. Zhao Ming was injured by a gang member and simply didn't accept the established rules, so he decided to challenge. Song Lan decided to intercede for him and was also injured. It is still unknown when he will be released from the medical center. It doesn't seem to Wu Xuan that they should have thought about the consequences first but he responds with a smile that it was just a misunderstanding. Lin Yuan clarifies if there's a misunderstanding. Wu Xuan explains that, of course, he feels sorry for his roommates. Maybe if he had been a bit stricter with the members of his group, this wouldn't have happened. However, aggression on both sides is inevitable. 
If he wants, Wu Xuan can apologize to his friend on behalf of the whole organization. With these words, he extends his hand as a sign of courtesy. Moreover, with sincere intentions, he invites Lin Yuan and Song Lan to join him. In fact, he values them a lot. Maybe one day they can become friends. He doesn't have to do anything, just agree. They will receive a salary exactly equal to what Shen Kang receives. The audience exclaims perplexedly. Apparently, he wanted to attract Lin Yuan. It's called One More Friend, One Less Enemy. Wu Xuan also doesn't know how Lin Yuan will respond to his proposal, but Lin Yuan asks with a smile if he proposed similar conditions to Chu Tiani. Wu Xuan doesn't understand what he means. Lin Yuan explains that Wu Xuan charges money from ordinary freshmen to attract others to his side. That's the difference between him and Wu Xuan. Wu Xuan knows why Chu Tiani rejected him. Because tigers and jackals don't live together, especially ones so big. They are just a group of leeches parasitizing society. How dare they call themselves serious organizations. In fact, it's even more immature than playing with children's toys. Wang Jin and Zhao Ming exclaim in shock. This could lead to bad consequences. Now, Wang Lin adds with a smile that they thought he was crazy, but compared to Lin Yuan, he was nothing. The audience begins to shout that Lin Yuan is right. This gang only feeds on the students. They ask if they are worthy of holding high positions on the leaderboard. It's not for them to capture the top. Wu Xuan hears this, gets angry, and notes that he has never experienced such humiliation before. How dare this Lin Yuan say this? Lin Yuan leaves, waves his hand and says he's not very happy. It's okay. He can even send Shen Kang now or come himself. He doesn't care whom he fights. In the end, he will defeat everyone. Then, he turns briefly and says, the game has begun. Before making a choice, Wu Xuan should think carefully, but Wu Xuan doesn't respond, just grits his teeth and looks at Lin Yuan after some time. Wang Lin, Wang Jin, Zhao Ming, Lin Yuan, and Song Lan gather for dinner at a private restaurant in Bam. Song Lan says it's his first time at such an event, but Wang Lin reassures him, saying he doesn't need to worry, Boss Wang is paying. Zhao Ming reads the menu and exclaims, Dragon meat fried in soy sauce, black dragon steak, lunar panther legs, fiery lion leg. All the dishes are made with such expensive ingredients that he feels uncomfortable somehow. But Wang Jin, with a smile, is different. He can order whatever he wants. When will there be another opportunity to eat food of this level? Zhao Ming turns to him and says surprised. Wow, he's so generous today. Wang Jin smiles and explains that Lin Yuan should be thanked for this. They have 45 million, so this dinner is just a trifle for them. Then he turns to Lin Yuan, holding a glass of wine in his hand, and says with a smile that he should make a toast to him. But Lin Yuan refuses and says he can't drink tonight. He planned to go to the training hall. Zhao Ming asks in shock if it can't be that he's still prepared for training today. Wang Jin is dissatisfied, and adds that if he doesn't drink it means he doesn't respect them. So, Lin Yuan exclaims that it's okay, he will drink. With these words, he picks up the glass and drinks it immediately. Then, Zhao Ming hugs him by the shoulders and exclaims that it's another matter. At the same time, Wang Jin pours another glass of wine. Then, Wang Lin approaches him and congratulates him with a smile for his victory over Li Qinggan and for the fourth place in the ranking. Lin Yuan responds that it was all thanks to the information he gave him. Wang Lin insists that he shouldn't be so modest. Everyone already understands how strong he is. His friend Song Lan approaches him and also expresses gratitude. They haven't fully recovered, so he had to replace alcohol with tea. Lin Yuan replies that it's nothing. After all, they are neighbors. Besides, he won't stop there. Then Song Lan responds that he humiliated Wu Xuan in front of hundreds of students today, and he won't let him do that. Wu Xuan may attack sneakily, but Wang Jin says with a smile that it's impossible to attack a beast king of his level from behind. Moreover, the university would not forgive that. Lin Yuan turns to him and exclaims with a laugh that he can count on him. Then, they start ordering food and also need more glasses. At this moment, in Yuan Li's infirmary room, lying on Wu Xuan's hospital bed, he lost. How is this possible? What should he do now? Should he try to recruit Lin Yuan? Wu Xuan responds that he and Chu Tiani are equals, but Lin Yuan is even more annoying. Alright, he'll deal with it. Then, 
He gives Yuan Li a veal of green liquid and says it's a healing elixir that restores limbs. He should apply it to the wounds, and everything will be fine. But Yuan Li exclaims that he can't accept it, it's too expensive for him. So, Wu Suan asks with a smile what he will do when the national competition starts. He was going to fight alongside him. Then, he leaves and waves, saying he has to go, and Yuan Li should rest. He leaves the hospital room and thinks with irritation that the first, the second, they're all just idiots. Then, he goes to the vice chancellor's office and knocks on the door. The vice chancellor says he can come in. Wu Suan enters the room and says, Uncle, but the senior vice chancellor interrupts him, suddenly turns around and says he didn't think he had such a worthless nephew. Then he asks if Wu Xuan knows what his mistake is, an excess of arrogance. He thinks he is brave and adaptable to circumstances, but in reality, he is just a brainless fool. After all, the reason people dominate him is due to his own weakness. He gave him everything, meaning opportunities, but Wu Xuan never progressed beyond the third place, which is shameful. Why, the vice dean then looks out the window and wonders how a student of this academy has never left the top of the leaderboard. Because then Wu Xuan is useless, so he turns to Wu Xuan and asks what he needs. Frowning, he answers his uncle that it's all right. He will personally contact Lin Yuan and restore his reputation. But the vice dean responds that he shouldn't even try to challenge him if he's not sure of victory. In 10 days, the National Tournament for Freshmen will officially begin. Prestigious educational institutions from across the country attach considerable importance to this event. Yan Jing will gather all the talents. He understands what they are talking about. Only by performing well in the tournament can he truly demonstrate to everyone that he is worthy of leading people. Wu Xuan grits his teeth and tells his uncle that he understands. Then the vice dean sits at the table starts writing something and says, it's all right, he will take care of the rest. Wu Xuan needs to get back to training. Wu Xuan thanks him for his guidance. At this moment in the training room, Xu Qingqiu exclaims, sure enough, Lin Yuan defeated Li Qingan. Su Mu hears this and notes happily that after all, he never did anything he wasn't sure of. Xu Qingqiu then asks if she has reached a level sufficient to compete for a place on the leaderboard. What does she think? Sumu explains that the tournament will start soon, and there are only 12 vacant spots. She needs to be among the top 10 to have a chance to advance. Xu Qingqiu responds again that with her current skills, there shouldn't be a problem. With whom will she fight? Sumu answers that it's Wu Xuan, and of course, Xu Qingqiu clarifies that it's because he insulted Lin Yuan. Sumu exclaims with an angry face that she has no reason to let him go. Xu Qingqiu thinks discontentedly, wow, he really is going to intervene. After some time, Lin Yuan and Long Che arrive at the capital of the Beast of Soul Hall. Lin Yuan looks around and comments admirably that this place truly deserves to be called a hall, with this scale, this scope. Long adds that there is everything here, a practice area, a commercial area, a place for missions, entertainment, consultations, and talent identification. To buy something, they only need to go to the shopping area. When they enter the hall, a consultant greets them and asks about their interests. She looks at Lin Yuan and thinks disdainfully that he is so young, it seems like he's not capable of buying a lot. Lin Yuan then asks, if they sell storage artifacts here. The girl immediately exclaims with joy that, of course they can follow her. At that moment, she thinks the bill will be several million. Shortly after, they are on the twelfth floor, near the artifact counter. Lin Yuan says admirably that when he was promoted, the bronze storage artifact he wanted to have only had a volume of 10 cubic meters. Long also looks at the counter with fascination and responds that this is too little, they should buy more. Then, Lin Yuan goes back to the girl and asks if they have artifacts with a volume greater than 10 cubic meters. She responds immediately that, of course, if they allow, she can recommend some for them. So. She shows them one of the artifacts and says that this is a ring with a compartment. It has a reserve of 20 cubic meters. It is convenient to use and easy to carry. The ring is suitable for young people who are often away from home. At the same time, she thinks to herself that the price for this is 5 million, but Lin Yuan immediately responds that he'll take it. He then asks if they also have lower level beast soul crystals. The consultant girl asks, surprised how much he needs, 
noting that he is rich and has fantastic curiosity. Lin Yuan explains with a smile that he needs a hundred thousand. The girl apologizes, confused, and asks why he needs so much. Lin Yuan explains that he is from the Beast Academy and his mentor is conducting an experiment on how creatures change after prolonged use of lower-level beast soul crystals and he is helping with the purchases. At that moment, he decides not to lie and reveals that he is the mentor himself. The girl looks at him with admiration and responds that, of course, he just needs to wait a minute. They will prepare everything for him. She also adds that he still needs a hundred beast miracle pills. The girl looks at him with adoration and thinks that he is an excellent student and even with money he is very generous. This is wonderful. Long asks Lin Yuan surprised that this time everything costs 20 million. What else does he need? He sighs and replies that there isn't much left in the account. He needs to save some. But suddenly Lin Yuan notices something in front of him, and his eyes widen. Then, he looks closer and sees a Beast King level artifact. The Wind Spirit Talisman, Wind Attribute, worth 20 million. He immediately asks what that is. Long explains that it is a runic type artifact that doesn't take up a weapon or armor slot, but adds attributes. This kind of rune increases the agility attribute, Lin Yuan clarifies, just like Song Lan's buff. Long explains with pleasure that yes, he could say that. However, in a single battle, there won't be a Song Lan who can share that buff. Lin Yuan observes that it is excellent, but the explosive power he possesses reduces the value of his agility attribute. But somehow it is very expensive. He is short of 10 million. Long clarifies that this money can be borrowed. Lin Yuan responds immediately happily that this is also true, so he calls Wang Jin, who answers and asks what happened. Lin Yuan asks him if he could borrow 15 million for a month. Wang Jin asks, surprised what he had more than 20 million, where did that money go? Lin Yuan explains timidly that he spent it all on equipment. Wang Jin agrees and replies that he will transfer the money now. Lin Yuan sincerely thanks him. At that moment, the girl approaches him and, turning to Lin Yuan, hands him a package and says that his crystals and storage ring are packed. She also exclaims in her mind that he is the god of wealth, and she loves him. But Lin Yuan points to the wind spirit talisman and clarifies that he will take that too. The girl looks at him shocked and thinks with gratitude that the sales number has reached so quickly at the beginning of the month. Shortly after, Lin Yuan and Long leave the store, at which point the girl bows to the ground and exclaims that the Lord should come again. Lin Yuan hears that and thinks that he almost became a rich man and became a debtor in an instant. But who could maintain his place? In the afternoon, he enters the dormitory and asks the neighbors why everyone is gathered. Zhao Ming finds out that he arrived just in time to go to the lecture with them. Lin Yuan explains that he is very tired today. And besides, the training affects him much more. Song Lan agrees, but says that the lecture will be very useful for people at their level, so it's better to go. Lin Yuan asks about the subject of the lecture when leaving the room. Zhao Ming explains that they say there is a difference between the level of a beast lord and a king. Many people have settled at the beast king level. Wang Jin then adds excitedly that this time Professor Zhao Shan volunteered personally to give the lecture. He will teach Lin Yuan how to evolve to the Lord level. Lin Yuan hears this and is very surprised. After some time, the students gather in the auditorium of the Beast Academy. Lin Yuan enters and looks around, perplexed, asking if Professor Zhao Shan is really so popular. Zhao Ming responds immediately that yes, he achieved the Lord level at a young age, causing quite a stir in society. If they look ahead, all the front rows are already occupied. So. Wang Jin smiles and says they can count on him. They will definitely secure their seats at the front. He approaches the students loudly and apologizes for being a little late, offering 10,000 to anyone who vacates their seats. The students immediately start raising their hands and suggest they can vacate their seats. Shortly after, Zhao Ming sitting in the front row exclaims the power of money and all its glory. Wang Jin agrees, indeed. After this, Zhao Shan goes up to the stage and notices that Lin Yuan also came to listen. He stands near the microphone and announces that he is very pleased to greet everyone. He believes that everyone is there to learn how to evolve to the Lord level. As they know, many of those present have already reached the King level. 
but as they progress they probably find themselves stuck and unable to advance further. This issue is the most urgent. So, the B Soul Hall has conducted various studies and, in the end, arrived at the following conclusion. Many of them still do not understand their own path. Lin Yuan hears this and wonders. The students also start discussing what they don't understand about the subject. Zhao Shan explains that the so-called path is the ideal match of a person with their beast soul. That is, it is complete unity. Zhao Ming approaches Song Lan and asks if he understands something. Song Lan responds thoughtfully that he understands something but is not sure if it's correct. He continues to explain that the students don't need to worry. Not understanding a bit is normal. He should give a more specific example. Once, during cultivation, he spent six months walking in places with majestic landscapes. His sole animal is of the earth, an angry bear. So he considered it necessary to feel the power of the earth and also understand every movement of the wild beast. Until one day, he finally felt a change. The strength of the earth and the strength of the bear became his strength. At this moment, a large angry bear appears above Zhao Shan, roaring loudly. The students see this and exclaim admirably. Lin Yuan also looks surprised and thinks that every word spoken is admirable. Zhao Shan is praised. Naturally, each soul is unique and everyone has their own path. They need to figure out what works best for them. There's no need to hurry. The best emperor level mentor today is Zhang Yang. It also took him three years to find his path. Lin Yuan wonders about the three years. Wang Jin explains that yes, after finding his path, he elevated his S-rank soul level to SSS in one day, and the nine stars of the Beast King turned into six stars of the Lord. He explains that before evolving, Jiang Yang was a mediocre soul master, but perseverance and determination are precisely the qualities they lack. Therefore, the evolution process is not as complicated as it may seem at first glance, but at the same time, it's not entirely simple. Lin Yuan thinks about it. The path is indeed an abstract concept. It requires merging with the soul, in other words, finding an answer in one's own consciousness. After the end of the lecture, only Zhao Ming, Song Lan, Lin Yuan, and Wang Jin remained in the audience. After a brief silence, Zhao Ming asked with confusion which soul professor Zhao Shan was referring to. He didn't understand a word. Does he really need to catch some snakes to prevent intuition? But Wang Jin replied that he didn't understand anything either. At that moment, Song Lan, thinking about it, said that he had a kind of realization. Previously, he resisted his soul beasts, then tried to develop physical skills. But in the battle with Yuan Li, he realized that this wasn't the advantage after all. So perhaps he should embrace the characteristics of his beast. Lin Yuan hears this and is surprised. Song Lan thinks like a true genius. He oriented himself so quickly. Suddenly someone addresses him. Lin Yuan turns around and sees Zhao Shan. He asks how he enjoyed the lecture, whether it emphasized anything new. Lin Yuan responds that yes, but he still can't figure out which path to follow. Zhao Shan approaches him and reassures him. He doesn't need to worry. He recently evolved to the king level. What's unique is that it happened so quickly. And besides, he ranked fourth on the leaderboard. Lin Yuan stands in front of him and replies that he couldn't lose face in front of him. Besides, he also needs to return something to the professor. With these words, he hands the vault to Zhao Shan. He takes it and asks with a smile. Not bad, they must have earned a lot from bets. At that moment, Wang Jin approaches Lin Yuan and says that Zhao Shan can also join, but he shakes his head and replies that he will probably decline. Moreover, if they still want to challenge Wu Xuan, then they will have to wait a few weeks, as he was sent on some mission. Hearing this, Wang Jin turns to Lin Yuan and says that Wu Xuan is deliberately avoiding him. But Zhao Shan hears this and explains that there's no need to exaggerate. His uncle is the vice director he gave him a mission. Wang Jin responds understandingly. The vice director never got along with his father, so he does this. Zhao Shan approaches Lin Yuan, puts his hand on his shoulder and tells him not to worry. If something happens, he won't leave his students alone. The national tournament is approaching. They can prepare calmly while there's time. Lin Yuan thanks the professor for this, and the day begins to change into night. Lin Yuan is in the practice room, absorbing the nuclear energy from the lower grade crystals. Long exclaims that the effect of a hundred pills was powerful. 
It would only take five days to absorb 5,000 crystals. Now, he has successfully reached the fourth star of the Beast King. Lin Yuan closes his eyes and observes that it's a pity he has to spend five million evolution points on this. Perhaps Professor Zhao Shan was right, and it's all due to his lack of awareness of his path. Then Long asks if he can try the real combat training mode, because he remembers there was one in the training room. Lin Yuan listens attentively, and then presses a special key, saying he will check it now. The information window provides an article about the Swamp Lizard, good at fighting in a swamp environment, and has extreme vitality. Next is the terrifying Golden Wolf, an extremely bloody monster. After that, the information window offers the formidable Golden Monkey, an incredibly fierce and bloodthirsty monster. Finally, an armored monkey with a golden pupiled eye covered in steel armor, with very powerful defense, causes hallucinations when making direct eye contact with its golden pupil. Long explains that the real battle simulation function allows selecting the enemy according to its strength and simulating the battle process 100%. They won't need to worry about injuries. So Lin Yuan points his finger at the screen and says he chooses the five-star armored monkey. He looks carefully ahead and finds himself in the middle of a large field. The information window notifies that the armored monkey battle simulation was successful and he can start the battle. The black lizard looks around and wonders suddenly when a large monkey appears in front of him, roaring loudly and beating its chest with its fists. The monkey hits the black lizard on the leg and he notices the strength. Then, the monkey attacks the lizard again, surprising him for being a five-star enemy. The monkey then strikes, but Lin Yuan also prepares in the base, then grabs the monkey's throat and is surprised to find that the neck is not the weak point since the monkey is covered with armored fur. The black lizard realizes that its claws are stuck, and at that moment, the monkey injures the lizard in the chest. She wonders how this is possible. In the Beast Academy's training room, Lin Yuan is in the simulation, and the monkey throws him to the ground with a blow. Lin Yuan falls and ends up on the floor of the practice room. The information window announces that the battle simulation is over, and the participant died. The test failed. Lin Yuan sits on the ground and realizes that the sensations of pain are very realistic. If they had fought for real, he definitely wouldn't have survived. He underestimated the enemy. He should pay more attention to its strength and speed. Moreover, his intuition failed, and he couldn't accurately determine the monkey's weakness. Long asks in surprise if Lin Yuan is going to try again or change the opponent. Lin Yuan resolutely responds that he wants to try again because the difference in strength is not that great. A few moments later, he finds himself back in the simulation and an armored monkey appears in front of him. Lin Yuan immediately realizes that he needs to take the initiative. He then opens his mouth widely and releases a nuclear breath at the monkey. But the nuclear breath passes through the monkey without harming it at all. Lin Yuan closes his mouth and notices that the old techniques no longer work on it. Suddenly, the monkey jumps and begins to fall directly onto the black lizard. But at that moment, the monkey sees the black lizard opening its mouth, and a jet of nuclear breath bursts from the earth. The monkey is thrown high into the air and dies. Lin Yuan bids farewell to it with a smile. Then, the monkey falls, and the black lizard jumps on it, continuing to strike. Suddenly he turns back into a human, is surprised, and hears the announcement that the simulation will be concluded. The golden pupiled monkey is dead, and the task was successfully completed. If there is information, regardless of the opponent's level, he can still win. At that moment, a meeting was taking place at the Beast Academy. Wang Ting announces that it's time to begin. At that exact moment, the Vice Director enters the room and apologizes for being late. He explains that he was feeling unwell. Then, he sits at the table and asks Director Wang Ting to continue, telling him not to pay attention to him. Wang Ting agrees and says that it seems there shouldn't be anyone else. He will continue. This time, they should determine the final list of participants. He wants to recommend Song Lan, believing that this man needs no introduction. Suddenly, the Vice Director's phone rings and he explains that he forgot to mute it then laughs and adds that it was his fault. There is silence in the room. The vice director looks at Wang Ting and thinks that this old man appeared very suddenly. 
Zhao Shan looks at him and wonders if he's provoking openly or secretly. Then, Zhao Shan, Sumu's mentor, a lord at the level, agrees with the director's proposal. For his part, she points out Sumu, an S-level snow fox in the ranking. Moreover, her bloodline has grown to SSS level. Zhao Shan listens with interest and notes that he didn't expect Ling Shuangyue, the person holding the position of vice director, to suddenly propose a candidate, especially Sumu, a student who reached SSS level in a short time. Wang Ting asks if there is an objection to her candidacy. Suddenly, a man raises his hand and announces that he is nominating Chu Tiani. Zhao Shan turns in his direction and thinks how cunning he is to nominate the first on the list. After that, director Wang Ting says with a smile that three positions have been determined. But suddenly, the vice director announces that he is nominating Wu Xuan, who is now in third place on the list, also SSS level. He believes that Wu Xuan is sufficiently prepared to participate in the competition. The people sitting at the table begin to discuss that this student is not bad at all. He has not only strength but also organizational skills, making him a leader among the freshmen. That's true. Director Wang Ting recalls the same leader from the hunter list a few days ago. He came to watch the match and saw him. He thinks that Wu Xuan reminds him of themselves when they were young, so it's no surprise that they agreed. In response to this, the vice director smiles and says, There is no need. He also believes that something or someone who seems harmless but is dangerous or deceptive, nothing will work out for him sooner or later. Everything will belong to him. Suddenly, Zhao Shan announces that he is also nominating Lin Yuan. He recently defeated Li Qinggan and ranked fourth on the leaderboard. His strength is obvious to everyone. He should become a member. But suddenly, someone interrupts him and asks if Lin Yuan seems to be his fellow countryman and disciple, and, most importantly, he is rank E. Is it appropriate to promote his people like this? Yes, the whole city will laugh at them if they allow him into the ring. At that moment, Zhao Shan pounds the table with his palm and stands up threateningly, asking the man what he means. If he is strong, why can't he recommend him? In response to this, the vice director taps his finger on the table and asks Professor Zhao Shan to calm down. He then says that Lin Yuan is indeed developing very rapidly, but Zhao Shan can assure that he is stronger than others. The reputation of the city and the academy is at stake. All right, they will let Ranky present himself, but if he loses, Zhao Shan will bear the consequences. Zhao Shan stands up and directs the question to Xiangyi about determining a person's upper limit solely based on their talent. Zhao Shan adds that Lin Yuan's fourth position in the ranking demonstrates his ability to surpass this mentioned limit. The other teachers at the meeting table begin discussing among themselves, agreeing with Zhao Shan's arguments. However, Xiang Gui expresses no doubt about Lin Yuan's ability. His concern lies in the fact that Lin Yuan's beast soul's talent is only classified as level E. This observation leads Zhao Shan to speculate that Xiang Gui is acting maliciously specifically targeting Lin Yuan. Wang Ting interrupts the discussion between the two, stating that Xiang Gui's line of reasoning is highly relevant. This moment even causes confusion in Xiang Gui, as they rarely agree on any point. Wang Ting continues arguing that the school should indeed consider all risks during this inaugural National Novus competition. He emphasizes that, Regardless of the educational institution in question, this is an extremely significant opportunity that should not be wasted. Mang Chang'an and Zhao Shan are surprised by this perspective, both directing their gazes at director Wang Ting. Meanwhile, Wang Ting, with a smile, expresses that, even though the school should be a priority, it would be a selfish and extremely cruel act to completely eliminate a student's opportunities under such circumstances. Therefore, Wang Ting proposes to include Lin Yuan as one of the substitutes and consults Zhao Shan about this possibility. The latter, Pleased with the proposal, thanks Wang Ting for the opportunity given to Lin Yuan. On the other hand, Zhang Gui expresses discontent with Wang Ting's attitude and continues to stare at him. Outside the building, we see Lin Yuan leaning against the bars, commenting that it has been a long time since he looked at the world outside the training room. While Lin Yuan relaxes, someone approaches shouting his name. It's Wang Jin, who runs towards Lin Yuan. 
As soon as Lin Yuan sees him, he asks the reason for the commotion. Wang Jin informs him that Sumu challenged Shen Shang in Arena 1, and if they hurry, they can still make it in time. Lin Yuan shows confusion, as Sumu's ranking should not allow such an act. Wang Jin presumes that Lin Yuan is probably not aware of one of the rules. Wang Jin explains that, to promote competition, the top 10 in the ranking must accept three challenges unconditionally every month. Lin Yuan feels deeply frustrated realizing that his intensive 12-day battle with numerous opponents was in vain. However, upon facing reality, he quickly acted, urging Wang Jin to hurry so they could make it in time for the fight. Wang Jin then began to ponder that Lin Yuan had claimed his relationship with Sumu was limited to friendship. However, it was now evident that there was a strong bond between them. Wang Jin feared the possible consequences for whoever was responsible if something happened to Sumu. Upon reaching the arena, they found it completely crowded, with many people commenting on the match, especially praising Sumu's apparent strength. Lin Yuan spotted Shen Kang's beast, and then Sumu's nine-tailed snow fox. Sumu began the confrontation by launching his attack directly at Shen Kang. However, the latter stated that the ice blade attack would not be enough to defeat him. Shen Kang then launched an attack, leaping towards Sumu. He glimpsed an opportunity and seemed to bid farewell to Sumu. However, Sumu evaded the strike, leaving Shen Chang perplexed by the dodging ability. Sumu then appeared above Shen Chang and unleashed an intense explosion on his body. After the dust settled, Shen Kang was seen lying on the ground while Sumu, with her paw on his head, confronted Shen Kang, indicating that if he didn't wish to perish, he should remain motionless. In response, Shen Chang surrendered. The scene left Lin Yuan completely astonished, questioning when Sumu had acquired such strength. Even Sumu's last attack alone proved superior to five stars of the Beast King. The entire audience began applauding and celebrating, praising Sumu's incredible strength. Some attendees commented that Chu Tiani might be even more powerful than Sumu, considering him a genius. This observation made Lin Yuan start reflecting on the type of ability Chu Tiani possessed. While Lin Yuan pondered this, Sumu waved to him, calling him over. Sumu then approached Lin Yuan, explaining that initially, she wanted to challenge Wu Xuangu, but he had hidden, leading her to challenge Shen Kang. With a radiant smile and great enthusiasm, Sumu claimed that all of this happened because of Lin Yuan's interference. Sumu asked Lin Yuan what he thought of her performance. In response, Lin Yuan stood up, touched Sumu's head and praised her current strength. Sumu was immensely happy with these words. While the two conversed, everyone in the audience was surprised to find out that Sumu knew Lin Yuan. One of the attendees commented that both attended the same school and had a very close relationship. While Sumu and Lin Yuan exchanged smiles, Wang Jin was among them, pondering that while running, the two seemed to have a special connection. Sumu noticed that Wang Jin was watching them and joked that he was jealous. Wang Jin, upon hearing this, was surprised. Lin Yuan mentioned that it was a coincidence because he planned to challenge Shen Zhang. Sumu, feeling a bit disappointed, expressed that her good intentions led to a negative result. However, Lin Yuan reassured Sumu, indicating that it was not a problem. Since Shen Kang was defeated by Sumu, he would challenge someone else. Sumu then smiled. Wang Jin asked if it could be Chu Tiani. Lin Yuan looked at Wang Jin and confirmed that it was. Wang Jin questioned if Lin Yuan was absolutely sure, since Shen Chang did not compare to Chu Tiani. Wu Xuangu and Chu Tiani had almost the same strength. Sumu fixed her gaze on Lin Yuan and asked if he was certain that he intended to challenge Chu Tiani. Sumu recounted that, on a certain day she approached her teacher stating that she would challenge the top ten in the ranking. The teacher responded that she could face any of them on equal terms except for one person. The top of the list, Chu Tiani. Sumu offered to help Lin Yuan by acquiring anything he might need since she believed in his strength. However, Sumu emphasized that Chu Tiani's strength was extraordinary. In response, Lin Yuan expressed uncertainty but conveyed a definite desire to try. Even if he were to lose, he could clearly discern the gap between his ability and that of a truly strong person. Lin Yuan continued with his reflection, asking, If we don't have the courage to face strong opponents, how can we ourselves become strong? The surprise in Sumu's expression was evident as she fixed her gaze on Lin Yuan. At this opportune moment, 
Zhao Shan arrived and praised Lin Yuan's words, expressing pride in his student's performance. Mang Chang'an, who was close to Zhao Shan, highlighted that he had an excellent apprentice. Lin Yuan, Su Mu, and Wang Jin nodded in greeting to Zhao Shan and Mang Chang'an. However, Zhao Shan pointed out that everyone present was friends, eliminating the need for such formality. Then, Zhao Shan approached Lin Yuan and clarified that even though he wished to challenge Chu Tianyi, he would not have that opportunity. This left Lin Yuan astonished, prompting him to question the reason for this restriction. Zhao Shan then began his explanation, mentioning that the participant list had already been released during the preparation period. The school seeks to prevent Lin Yuan from getting involved in unnecessary conflicts to prevent potential injuries. Zhao Shan hands Lin Yuan a paper containing the list of those selected to represent the school in the National Rookie Tournament. The participants listed are Chu Tiani, Shen Kang, Su Mu, Song Lan, Qing Nan, Yuan Li, and finally, Lin Yuan, designated as a substitute. Upon reading this information, Lin Yuan displayed a notably surprised expression. In response, Zhao Shan lowered his head and proceeded to explain that he recommended Lin Yuan, but Vice Director Xiangyi expressed an intention to reject him due to the modest ranking of his beast soul. Ultimately, Director Wang Ting agreed to include Lin Yuan as a substitute. Faced with this revelation, Lin Yuan opted for silence, directing his gaze at Zhao Shan. In this context, Mang Chang'an expressed to Lin Yuan that even though his designation was only as a substitute, Zhao Shan had exerted all efforts to reach this decision. He urged Lin Yuan not to blame Zhao Shan. Sumu intervened in the dialogue with great indignation, declaring that this situation constituted an injustice. She questioned why Qing Nan and Yuan Li, both defeated by Lin Yuan, could be selected on the official participant list while Lin Yuan was designated only as a substitute. Sumu began to move quickly and stated that she would give up her spot to allow Lin Yuan to participate since he deserved such an opportunity. However, as Sumu hurried along, someone held her arm. Surprised, she turned and saw Lin Yuan stopping her. With a nod, Lin Yuan indicated that he did not want this gesture. Mang Chang'an explained that the list had been unanimously approved by the school officials. Even if Sumu gave up her spot, it would not be given to Lin Yuan. In the midst of this situation, Lin Yuan turned to Mang Chang'an and Zhao Shan, asking if Xiangyi was related to Wu Xuangu. In response, Zhao Shan confirmed this relationship, pointing to it as one of the reasons for his focus on Lin Yuan. He explained that Xiang Gui's main ambition was to confront director Wang Ting and take his place. Faced with these facts, Lin Yuan lowered his head and expressed that he might be considered a victim of this conflict, but understood the situation. He looked at Zhao Shan and expressed gratitude for all the efforts and support he had received, asking him not to blame himself for the situation. However, he emphasized that as long as he could participate, even as a substitute, there was still a chance to be explored. Thus, he smiled and confidently stated that everything that belonged to him was destined to be conquered by his own hands. Hearing these words, Zhao Shan was perplexed, considering that even in the face of such news, Lin Yuan showed serene and unwavering acceptance. Later, Wang Jin expressed to Lin Yuan that he would attempt to persuade his father to include him in the main list. He mentioned it was regrettable to have talent like Lin Yuan listed as a substitute. However, Lin Yuan replied that it was not necessary. If director Wang Ting included him in the substitute list, he must have his reasons. At least it suggests that he has not yet planned to sever ties with Xiang Gui. Furthermore, Lin Yuan mentioned that Wang Jin might be interested in the list and promptly offered it to him. Wang Jin, an intelligence professional, expressed that he could guess all the names on the list even without looking at it. Then, Wang Jin held the list and began reading the names present. Wang Jin's expression soon turned to surprise. Faced with this, Sumu asked what had happened and noticed that Wang Jin's name was also on the list. In discomfort, Wang Jin began to cry and questioned who would be eliminated if his father granted him this opportunity. Sumu, addressing Zhao Shan, asked if it was him who recommended Wang Jin. Zhao Shan responded that the situation was not as unfavorable as it seemed, adding that Xiang Gi himself had recommended Wang Jin and mentioned that Wang Jin possessed great potential. 
Immediately after, Lin Yuan speculated that Xiang Yi had recommended Wang Jin with a specific intention, to embarrass director Wang Ting. If the director disagreed, it would imply admitting his son's lack of aptitude, and if he agreed, well, the comedic unfolding of this situation would be somewhat predictable. Lin Yuan, with a smiling face, approached Wang Jin and advised him not to be saddened, stating that if his father agreed to it, he believed Wang Jin would have a chance. However, with a downcast look, Wang Jin admitted that his beast soul was not skilled in combat. Lin Yuan asked Wang Jin about the nature of his beast soul, but he refused to reveal it, keeping it a secret. Su Mu scolded Wang Jin for keeping secrets at such a crucial moment. In a conciliatory tone, Zhao Shan instructed Wang Jin not to be upset, pointing out several advantages. Zhao Shan then detailed these benefits. Resource subsidies for game participants, quotas for substitutes and regular members, all of a consistent nature. Finally, he highlighted a total of 50 million resources. Faced with this, Lin Yuan felt quite satisfied and thought he wouldn't have any issues regarding resources, although he still expressed gratitude to Wang Jin. Continuing his explanations, Zhao Shan detailed the 50 million resources provided by the demonic city's beast, emphasizing the inclusion of crystallized elixirs and secret beast weapons. He stressed the uniqueness of these weapons, many of which are not available in the market, highlighting a unique opportunity. Thus, he suggested that everyone seriously consider this information and, when the appropriate time comes, make a careful choice. Lin Yuan, Wang Jin, and Su Mu expressed gratitude to Zhao Shan for the valuable information. Meanwhile, in the director's office, Wang Ting observed through the window and noticed something. He addressed Mr. Shadow, advising him to knock on the door next time before entering. The mysterious man apologized, mentioning that he was already accustomed to it. Wang Ting inquired Ying about the young one's reactions. Ying began by describing Wang Jin's response. As anticipated, Wang Jin appeared nervous, disbelieving, and uncomfortable. The possibility of his participation in the tournament might be influenced by Xiang Gui's maneuvering. Wang Ting turned to Ying, stating that he was aware that Wang Jin's strength had reached the level of four stars of the Beast King. Wang Ting saw no obstacles to his participation. Moreover, he added that he never took Xiang Yi seriously. After absorbing this information, Ying was surprised to discover that Wang Jin's strength equaled that of Shen Chang. However, he wondered why Wang Jin harbored so much insecurity within himself. Wang Ting sighed and began to explain that naturally, Wang Jin's brother possessed extraordinary abilities. This naturally generated insecurities in Wang Jin, besides the fact that Wang Jin's beast soul is peculiar and inconvenient to display. However, fortunately, Wang Jin's diligence did not hinder his progress. Wang Ting considers this competition as the last opportunity he can offer to his son, Wang Jin. Wang Ting asked Ying about Lin Yuan's reaction to the list. Ying reported that he displayed complete serenity, resembling an adult. However, looking at Lin Yuan, Ying noticed a resemblance between them. This fact surprised Wang Ting. The director noted the uniqueness of Ying's words about someone and asked if Ying would accept Lin Yuan as his student after the competition. However, Ying declined, stating that he currently did not wish to take on a student. Wang Ting regretted this decision and turned his attention to the window, contemplating Lin Yuan. A few days passed, and we find ourselves in front of the treasure residence in the demonic city where a venerable gatekeeper awaits. He inquired if the three young individuals in question were registered on the list, indicating Lin Yuan, Song Lan, and Wang Jin. Zhao Shan approached the elderly man, presenting a document duly signed by director Wang Ting. The elder examined the document carefully, and after thorough analysis, consented to allow them entry, emphasizing that when the time came, they should leave immediately. Holding a bottle, Zhao Shan assured he understood all the established rules and committed to supervising the boys. Later, he addressed the elder, calling him by the name Chen, and offered him a bottle of exquisite wine brought specifically for him, asking him to enjoy it. After savoring the wine, Chen expressed gratitude to Zhao Shan, praising it as the best choice. Zhao Shan then informed that he would enter and asked Chen to savor the drink at ease. Once inside, Song Lan inquired about Chen's origin. 
Zhao Shan quickly turned to Song Lan and began telling the story of a master of beast souls who, 20 years ago alone, managed to defeat a tide of beasts, hunted a king-level beast, and saved an entire city. After Zhao Shan's narrative, the three were astonished, questioning if the man from the story was the elder standing outside. Zhao Shan confirmed, stating that indeed, the old man's name was Chen Tunri. Additionally, he revealed that Chen had once been the strongest beast king in China. Zhao Shan continued explaining that, unfortunately, after defeating the tide of beasts alone, Chen suffered severe injuries from which he never fully recovered. Furthermore, his beast soul was damaged. Zhao Shan added that if he could recover a little more, he would probably live another 30 or 50 years, dedicating all that time to guarding the treasure house. Wang Jin mentioned hearing that Chen had a peculiar temperament and was not easily approached. However, lately, he seemed to enjoy Zhao Shan's company. In response, Zhao Shan smiled and adopted a posture, stating that Mr. Chen undoubtedly recognized Zhao Shan's rare talent. Wang Jin sarcastically scoffed and commented that he believed it, adding that such recognition had nothing to do with the excellent wines Zhao Shan habitually brought for Chen. Zhao Shan scolded Wang Jin, giving him a light pat on the head, and urged everyone to hurry since they only had half an hour. He instructed them to start the item selection immediately. Lin Yuan and Song Lan began evaluating the available products, while Wang Jin suggested searching on the second floor and above, arguing that the first floor usually contains only common items. Song Lan and Lin Yuan expressed gratitude for the information. As Lin Yuan headed to the second floor, he took out his list and began examining the necessary products, including beast spirit pills, secret techniques, divine beast weapons, and special materials. He pondered the available diversity, regretting the limit imposed on his choices. Lin Yuan recalled Professor Zhao Shan's guidance on achieving enlightenment, recognizing the need to acquire special treasures to strengthen the power of his beast soul. While walking and reflecting on this, Lin Yuan came across something that caught his attention, a shiny cube. Upon approaching, he realized it was a micronuclear reactor. The system opened an explanatory window, identifying the treasure as a nuclear energy reactor, priced at 30 million. It warned about the extremely large and dangerous nature of this device, advising caution. Lin Yuan picked up the object, pondered for a few seconds, smiled, and concluded that it was tailor-made for him. The purchasing time ran out, and Zhao Shan, who was leaning against the wall, questioned where they had spent their allotted quota. Song Lan reported spending 45 million on a beast weapon, some beast spirit pills, and advanced beast soul crystals. Wang Jin informed he had acquired a 50 million weapon, planning to sell it to make a profit between 20 and 30 million. Song Lan asked why Wang Jin didn't choose something that matched his beast soul. But Wang Jin explained that finding a perfectly aligned weapon was harder than touching the sky, justifying his choice as an efficient resource reuse. Zhao Shan questions Lin Yuan if he also chose a beast weapon, and Lin Yuan smiles, revealing that no, but he acquired something extraordinary and rare in the world. Wang Jin inquires about what it is, and Lin Yuan displays the nuclear reactor, leaving Wang Jin completely stunned, thinking it was a bomb. Lin Yuan asks if Wang Jin has any objections to nuclear explosions. Lin Yuan clarifies that there is a significant distinction between nuclear reactors and nuclear bombs. While a nuclear bomb is comparable to gunpowder and explodes as soon as it is triggered, which is indeed extremely dangerous, a nuclear reactor is more like coal. Once lit, it will burn slowly, maintaining heat. Wang Jin sighs in relief, putting his hand over his chest, and mentions that the artifact acquired by Lin Yuan scared him considerably. Wang Jin inquires again about the real danger of the object. Song Lan observes that if it were as dangerous as Wang Jin supposes, the institution probably wouldn't have included it in the treasure room. However, Song Lan doesn't understand how such an artifact could benefit Lin Yuan, and consequently, he asks about Lin Yuan's intentions. Lin Yuan simply responds that the object meets his needs. Zhao Shan interrupts the conversation and asks Lin Yuan about the amount of his quota he used. Lin Yuan replies that it wasn't much, spending only 30 million. Zhao Shan agrees that it's not an exorbitant amount, 
and emphasizes his belief that no one but Lin Yuan would be able to use such an artifact. Wang Jin comments that Lin Yuan is becoming more and more extraordinary, and asks how many surprises he still holds. Lin Yuan smiles and questions if Wang Jin is trying to get more information about him. Wang Jin responds affirmatively, stating that he is very self-aware, and never makes an effort to make things difficult for others. However, he points out that the information about Lin Yuan is by far the most complex to obtain. Wang Jin adds that they are still roommates. Zhao Shan asks about the plans of the three now. Lin Yuan and Song Lan promptly respond that they will return to training, while Wang Jin remains silent between the two. Zhao Shan, realizing that Wang Jin did not respond, directly questions what he plans to do. Wang Jin opens a smile and responds that he will also dedicate time to training, although internally he feels some regret for this decision. Zhao Shan then informs them that in three days, they should meet at the university gate exactly at nine in the morning. He explains that they will use a special bus bound for Yanjing University to prepare for the tournament, requesting that no one be late. The three enthusiastically agree to this. In the training room, we see Lin Yuan sitting, talking to Long. Lin Yuan presents the reactor to Long, who is impressed by it. Lin Yuan mentions that he is not sure how to use it and asks if Long has any tips for him. Long replies that the reactor is similar to crystals, it is also a unique consumable. However, its absorption method is different. Lin Yuan asks what the method is and how he can do it. Long explains that if Lin Yuan wants to absorb the energy from the reactor, he should swallow it while the beast soul is fused, because Lin Yuan's stomach is equivalent to a huge atomic reactor. Even though a large amount of nuclear energy is released, it can be completely absorbed by the atomic reactor. Lin Yuan asks Long if he should swallow the reactor now, but Long replies that no, as the reactor would give him an enormous amount of power immediately. However, this effect would be temporary, and the remaining reactor energy would convert into evolution points. Lin Yuan says he now understands. The reactor would serve as an instant buff, and as a bonus, he would gain evolution points. So, Lin Yuan thinks it should be prudent when using it. Long smiles and says, that's the so-called secret. Three days pass. As soon as Lin Yuan arrives in front of the school gates, some people, including the ranking hunters, stare at him, and he stares back at them. Vice President Xianggui is also present, and goes directly to talk to his nephew Wu Xuan. Wu Xuan points his finger, showing his uncle Xianggui who Lin Yuan was. While the two converse, Lin Yuan stares at them, and begins to think that this Xianggui fellow was the one who prevented him from entering the main list. He promises that this debt will be repaid twice in the future. Xiangui looks at Lin Yuan and realizes that he has the gaze of an assassin. Xiangui goes back to talking with his nephew Wu Xuan and says that this Lin Yuan he provoked seems to be dangerous. Wu Xuan tells Xiangui not to worry, as he will handle everything personally. In the midst of all this, someone shouts Lin Yuan's name. It was Sumu, who was running toward him. As they meet, Sumu is accompanied by her teacher, Ling Shuang Yue. Lin Yuan immediately greets them. He directs his gaze at Professor Ling Shuang Yue, considering that she appears to be quite young. Wang Jin comes walking, half sleepy, and asks why they were there so early, as they had agreed to meet at nine o'clock. As soon as his father notices Wang Jin's presence, he becomes extremely furious because it's a crucial matter, and Wang Jin is casually dressed, wearing flip-flops and flowery clothes, as if on vacation. Wang Jin responds that it's troublesome to carry many bags, so it would be more practical to arrive at Yanjing University to buy new clothes. He smiles and states that he is not late, asking if there is anyone who hasn't arrived yet. His father Wang Ting is furious, but as they were talking, someone arrived and apologized for being late. This was the number one on the list, Chu Tiani. Lin Yuan spots Chu Tiani and is shocked. Meanwhile, Wang Jin continues to smile and mock the fact that someone arrived late, but not him. His father, Wang Ting, smacks him on the head and warns him, mentioning that if someone is first on the list, it's because they dedicate all their time to cultivation. As Chu Tiani arrives, President Wang Ting instructs everyone to prepare, as they were about to depart. After everyone enters and settles, President Wang Ting goes to the front and announces that he would like to say something. 
Wang Ting begins by saying that he understands everyone's desire to achieve excellent results in the tournament and emphasizes that strength itself is the most crucial aspect. However, following the saying, know yourself and your enemy, fight a hundred battles, and avoid dangers, Wang Ting concludes his speech. After that, he asks his son Wang Jin to share all the information he had collected, leaving Wang Jin completely shocked. Wang Ting states that he is already aware of everything, as Wang Jin dedicated considerable time collecting information about students from other universities. Wang Jin winks at his father and mentions that he intends to sell this information, but due to their relationship, Wang Jin offers a 20% discount, surprising everyone. Lin Yuan and Sumu start laughing at the situation. Wang Ting adopts a friendly expression and asks Wang Jin to repeat what he just said. Realizing that his father was about to get upset, Wang Jin quickly stands up, stating that, for the honor of the university, he would willingly share all the knowledge. Wang Ting expresses his gratitude for this. Song Lan, sitting next to Chu Tiani, decides to ask him if he doesn't mind the information about the other competitors. Chu Tiani looks at him and replies that he doesn't mind. Song Lan, after witnessing this attitude, pondered about the possible arrogance of Chu Tiani. Lin Yuan, who was positioned behind Sumu, reflects on the observation that indeed, Chu Tiani's strength does not match his intelligence. Lin Yuan becomes even more intrigued, seeking to uncover the true extent of Chu Tiani's ability. Wang Jin requests everyone's attention as he prepares to share the information he has gathered about the other competitors. He begins by addressing the participating universities, including their institution and Yanjing, all considered high standard. Wang Jin emphasizes that all of them are robust adversaries in this competition. One student near Wang Jin questions whether they should genuinely be concerned about other universities. Wang Jin starts explaining that this year is known as the Year of Geniuses, with all institutions recruiting exceptional talents. When mentioning Xuchuan University and pointing to the student who asked the question, Wang Jin comments that, with his current strength, he would hardly rank among the top five. The same student reports having ranked fourth in his university, arguing that it would be practically impossible for Xuchuan University to be so superior. Wang Jin reveals that the captain of Xuchuan University is Chen Zhushan, known to many as Kung Fu Panda. The student laughs, finding the nickname funny and even adorable. Wang Jin interrupts, requesting not to laugh too much, as Chen Zhushan earned this nickname due to his continuous practice of martial arts since childhood, proficient in Tai Chi and Wing Chun, in addition to integrated Kung Fu with his SSS level beast soul, Earth Panda. Wang Jin continues, stating that Chen Zhushan's strength has reached at least the level of a six-star beast king. Since entering school, his motto has been that the weak can defeat the strong. The most impressive record was the frontal defeat of a senior seven-star beast king. However, their team is considered the weakest among all, possessing a four-star beast king at its peak. After exposing this information, Wang Jin turns to the other student and asks if he still dares to claim victory. The shocked student, trying to respond, begins to stutter. Wang Ting interrupts both and starts explaining that Wang Jin is correct, as the discrepancy between their school and other high-level institutions is not as wide as many are presuming. As these events unfold, Lin Yuan contemplates silently, not imagining that Xu Chuan's comprehensive strength would be so significant. Lin Yuan concludes that, with his current strength, it is more prudent not to express opinions, focusing on working more intensely. Wang Jin resumes the explanation about universities, this time addressing Yanjing University. The vice captain of the university, Chen Longxiang, emerges as the main concern for everyone. He comes from a lineage of beast souls, with the beast soul being an SSS level ancestral creature. His strength reaches the level of an eight star beast king, leaving the students shocked by this extraordinary power. Again, the student next to Wang Jin asks if Chen Longxiang is still a new student, but Wang Jin responds with a smile, asking them not to be overly surprised, as Sen Longxiang is not yet the strongest in the Yanjing team. Chu Tiani, upon hearing this, turns to Wang Jin and asks who the strongest in the Yanjing team is. Wang Jin reveals that the most powerful man in the Yanjing team is Xu Xiao. His strength and the nature of his beast soul were unknown. However, when facing Chen Longxiang, 
The disparity between them was so evident that Sen Long Xiang was convinced of his defeat. Wang Jin narrates these events with a fearful expression, generating a general silence after the revelation of Xu Xiao's extraordinary strength. Then, Wang Jin smiles and asks everyone not to be overly discouraged, arguing that losing to Yanjing University is not a disgrace, as they are already among the second best in the world and should be accustomed to it. Upon hearing this, his father, Wang Ting, scolds him, calling him a bastard and slapping him in the face. Wang Jin, confused, questions the reason for the punishment. Wang Ting responds that he instructed Wang Jin to share information, not to shake everyone's confidence, emphasizing that if they are participating in the competition, it is with the goal of securing first place. Emotionally shaken, Wang Jin stands up and declares that everyone desires to be the first. However, their overall strength is superior, and that won't be altered by eloquent words. Chu Tiani is enthusiastic about this, claiming that he will defeat everyone, whether against Xu Xiao or Chen Longxiang, and requests the opportunity to face them. Wu Xuan begins to express that rushing before necessary is not their style, considering that the competition has not started yet, and, as geniuses, they can overcome any obstacle. Faced with the identified gap between them and others, Wu Xuan argues that they should do everything possible to catch up. Wang Lin agrees with this proposition and declares that he will strive with all his strength to overturn the empire. Wang Ting, witnessing this resolution, shows great contentment, stating that they are now truly honoring the university. However, he reassures everyone that once they arrive, they will receive special training lasting for three days. Xiang Gui, positioned in front, takes the opportunity to suggest to Wang Ting the possibility of using this period to select the team captain. Wang Ting agrees and establishes that they should follow the rules of the beast Soul Master, emphasizing that strength must be respected and the strongest should lead. Thus, Wang Ting chooses Chu Tiani as the captain. Xiang Gui disagrees with this choice, arguing that while Chu Tiani is strong, he is not an effective leader. In contrast, Xiang Gui suggests Wu Xuan and Song Lan as vice captains to assist Chu Tiani. Xiang Gui justifies this recommendation, highlighting Wu Xuan's experience in leadership and problem solving as well as Song Lan's meticulous attention to detail, stating that both complement each other. Wang Ting then announces to everyone that this decision was pondered by Xiang Gui and will be temporarily adopted as follows. Chu Tiani as captain, followed by Song Lan and Wu Xuan. With the arrival of the bus, they proceed with the journey more swiftly using a train. Lin Yuan chooses to sit alone and contemplates the list realizing that everyone there possesses a five-star Beast King strength or higher. With his current five-star Beast King strength, he acknowledges that he is not fully qualified. At this moment, someone sits next to him and touches his forehead with a finger, drawing his attention. It was Sumu, displaying her characteristic smile. Sumu comments that Lin Yuan has been staring at the paper for almost half an hour, his brows almost meeting Dewey to intense a focus. Looking at Sumu's smiling face, Lin Yuan calms down and returns the smile. After this exchange, Sumu points out that they still have three days of training, and considering Lin Yuan's talent, she firmly believes in his rapid progress. Lin Yuan notices Sumu's enthusiasm and asks if she truly has so much confidence in him. Sumu, with a half smile, affirms yes, trusting Lin Yuan completely, because he is Lin Yuan. They gaze at each other again when suddenly Wang Jin arrives surprising them and dispelling the mood. Wang Jin apologizes but announces that he has something of extreme importance to share with them. Sumu and Lin Yuan turn to Wang Jin with concern, inquiring about the crucial nature of this information. Wang Jin reveals that his father, Wang Ting, would take them to the city center to relax. Lin Yuan expresses surprise at the revelation and questions Wang Jin's certainty. Similarly, Sumu shows shock at the information and asks if Wang Jin is joking. Wang Jin responds that his father, Wang Ting, finally understood the situation, acknowledged everyone's efforts in the past few days, and deemed it appropriate to relax before the championship. Lin Yuan ponders this decision, considering it peculiar, and suggests that director Wang Ting surely has other objectives with this. Sumu agrees with Lin Yuan, mentioning that Wang Ting mentioned special training, and the director does not usually act superficially. 
She advises Wang Jin not to get too optimistic too soon. Wang Jin then smiles and casually comments, stating that there are various activities that can be done at a bath training center, using the expression the husband sings and the wife follows. After uttering these words, Sumu and Lin Yuan are surprised. Sumu stands up, expressing irritation, mentioning that one day she will put an end to Wang Jin. Lin Yuan observes Sumu and comments that she has become considerably stronger, going from level S to level SSS. Sumu is somewhat embarrassed by the compliment. Then, Sumu turns her gaze to Lin Yuan with a happy expression, suggesting that she is working hard in training not to fall behind Lin Yuan, but to be by his side. Sumu fixes her gaze on Lin Yuan in such a way that makes him embarrassed, leading him to ask if there is something wrong with his face. Surprised, Sumu denies it and quickly changes the subject, mentioning that they will arrive in Yanjing soon. Lin Yuan then looks out the window, remaining silent and pondering the challenges he will face in the city. Upon arrival, Zhao Shan notes that everyone is present and asks Wang Ting if he is ready to check in at the hotel. However, Wang Ting declines and informs them that they will first go to the Tianqi Bath Center, surprising Zhao Shan. Wang Jin smiles, looking at Sumu and Lin Yuan, commenting that he had warned about this possibility. Thirty minutes later, they arrive at the Tianqi Bath Center. Song Lan observes in disbelief, while Wang Lin asks about the director's intention with this choice. Wang Jin clarifies that the purpose is undoubtedly to provide relaxation and joy. He adds, suggesting that for those who doubt, they should observe the young women ahead, indicating the presence of many women. One of them greets everyone warmly. Song Lan, shocked, questions the seriousness of the situation, while Su Mu quickly runs to cover Lin Yuan's eyes, instructing him not to look. Lin Yuan assures her that he didn't see anything. A man arrives, announcing that they have finally arrived. Wang Ting greets him, calling him Huang Pang, expressing that it has been a long time since their last meeting, and inquires about Huang Pang's well-being. The students are surprised, and Lin Yuan asks if they really know each other. Huang Pang claims it is an honor to welcome them, and highlights that director Wang Ting came personally, bringing his students for Huang Pang to meet the geniuses of the Demon City. Wang Ting asks Huang Pang to stop flattering everyone and questions if he has prepared what was requested. Huang Pang confirms that everything is ready and instructs them to follow him. He then calls the elevator, mentioning that the second underground floor houses a secret bath not open to the public. Huang Pang explains that before the tournament, Wang Ting contacted him and informed him that he had collected materials. In response, Huang Pang offered the space so that the students could enjoy a medicinal bath, maximizing their potentials. Sumu jokingly calls Wang Jin fat, and he responds casually, stating that, in any case, it's a bath, and it's fine. As they reach the second floor, the elevator doors open, revealing a hot spring. People are preparing it for them. Lin Yuan observes all this, thinking that they are adding giant ivory powder of blood barbarian phantom flower, a material costing 50 million per bucket. The way they are using it, the cost could exceed hundreds of millions. Lin Yuan expresses gratitude to director Wang Ting for providing these resources to help improve their strength. Once everything is ready, Wang Ting instructs everyone to hurry. He emphasizes that baths in this water are valued at over 2 billion, and this comes out of his own pocket. He warns that if anyone wastes this effort, they will face consequences. The students are impressed with director Wang Ting's wealth, while Wang Jin feels embarrassed by the revelation. Lin Yuan, focused on the bath, realizes that his body is recovering from the fatigue of the journey, reflecting on how wealthy families grow rapidly thanks to precious medicinal baths that significantly improve absorption efficiency. Suddenly, director Wang Ting enters and relaxes in the water. Wang Lin, beside him, asks why he is there too, and Wang Ting responds casually, suggesting that he can also enjoy the medicinal bath he paid for. Wang Lin awkwardly agrees, Wang Ting invites other teachers to join, but Zhao Shan thanks and declines. Ling Shuang Yue also refuses, mentioning that she is not accustomed to bathing in hot springs with others. Wang Ting insists, explaining that the material he put in the water is enough for 30 people. He emphasizes that he may need their help later. Lin Yuan hearing this, suspects that director Wang Ting is planning something more. 
As Lin Yuan observes, Director Wang Ting holds in his hands a crystal derived from a Beast King level, mentioning the impressive energy contained in it, which can explode and cause death if absorbed recklessly. Lin Yuan is impressed to see the crystal personally. Wang Ting reveals that the medicinal bath was prepared to allow the students to absorb the energy from the Beast King's crystal. After saying this, he makes the crystal explode in the water. Immediately, Long appears near Lin Yuan, mentioning that the energy field there is very comfortable. Yellow glows begin to envelop Lin Yuan, surprising him. Long congratulates Lin Yuan several times for absorbing 10,000 evolution points from the Beast King's crystal. Lin Yuan realizes that if he absorbs all of this for three days, he will have millions of evolution points. Everyone enjoys the aquatic environment when Wang Ting starts to observe Ling Shuangyu closely, who notices the attention and returns the gaze. Later she gives a smile and displays the crystal core of the dark ice ghost face Bear King. Ling Shuangyu reveals that this crystal, upon reflection, is on the level of a Beast King. After her considerations, Ling Shuangyue gently places the crystal in the water, which regains its blue color, now enriched with yellow hues, indicating the spread of the crystal's energy in the water. Wang Ting directs his gaze to Vice Director Xiangui and suggests that he follows the same procedure, considering the meritorious performance of the students. Xiangui, upon hearing this, wonders if Wang Ting had previously arranged with Ling Shuangyue for him to retrieve a Beast King level crystal. After reflection, Shangi agrees and presents the Dark Crocodile Crystal as a gift to everyone present expressing his wish for them to achieve excellent results. He then places the crystal in the water. Surprise takes hold of the students as, within a few minutes, three Beast King level crystals rest in the water. Wang Ting, aware of the magnitude of the energy involved, suggests again that the teachers closely monitor the process, preparing to enter the water. Meanwhile, Wu Xuan mentions that the Hinaden gifted by his uncle Xiangui is capable of rapidly absorbing energy in a short period, making it ideal for the occasion. He anticipates that this will create a significant gap between him and the other students, focusing intensely. Observing Wu Xuan's concentration, Xiangui, despite the cost of a Beast King crystal core, sees it as an investment in Wu Xuan's development. Zhao Shan noticed such a scenario and, as he approached to inform the director, was interrupted by Wang Ting, who stated already being aware of the situation. Wang Ting adds, highlighting that he understands Xiangui's considerations, emphasizing, however, that the effectiveness of the process depends intrinsically on individual talent. The higher the talent, the more efficient the absorption will be, as illustrated by the example of Chu Tiani, who surpasses his peers even without the aid of pills. Wang Ting exposes the existence of distinct approaches, mentioning figures like Sumu, whose focus on a single form of energy results in remarkably consistent attributes, naturally doubling efficiency. Wang Ting also noted that Ling Shuangyue chose not to enter the water for a specific reason. The crystal she released was intended for Sumu. When questioned by Zhao Shan about not intervening regarding Wu Xuan and his use of the Hinadan, Wang Ting responds with a smile indicating that there are no regulatory restrictions on the use of Hinadon. He clarifies that his goal is for everyone to absorb the maximum amount of energy possible. However, he warns about the risks associated with excessive tablet absorption, highlighting that the transformation into one's own abilities is subject to luck. Wang Ting points out Xiangui's self-confident perception, emphasizing that he did not consider the possibility that Wang Ting had already anticipated. According to Wang Ting, Xiangui blindly trusted Wu Xuan. Addressing Zhao Shan, Wang Ting highlights that his focus should be more on the student Lin Yuan. Although Zhao Shan observed that energy seems to fluctuate around Lin Yuan, suggesting limited talent for the level re king beast energy absorption, Wang Ting urges Zhao Shan to examine more closely. The observer is surprised to see that the energy is being absorbed rapidly, creating a vacuum around Lin Yuan. When Zhao Shan questions Wang Ting about Lin Yuan's method, Wang Ting replies that if Lin Yuan's own tutor does not have this knowledge, he, Wang Ting wouldn't either. Wang Ting emphasizes the presence of numerous secrets in Lin Yuan, concluding with a reflection on true strength and its relationship with secrets. Zhao Shan expresses satisfaction, stating that the most crucial thing is Lin Yuan's smooth development. Almost asleep, Zhang Yi notices an increase in energy speed. 
Looking to the side, he sees that Lin Yuan is exceptionally absorbing energy. However, Xiang Yi, incredulous, questions Lin Yuan's method. Meanwhile, Wu Xuan begins to notice something different, catching Xiang Yi's attention, who, before reacting, hears Wu Xuan's cry. At that moment, everyone directed their attention to Wu Xuan. He was notably changed, with his eyes gleaming and his body enveloped in a blue hue. Composed, Wu Xuan proclaims to have ascended from the level of a five-star beast king to the level of a six-star beast king at once. Glancing at Chu Tiani, he reflects that if even Chu Tiani fell short of him in energy absorption, then Wu Xuan was the chosen one. As he casts a mocking look at Lin Yuan, Wu Xuan's first impression is that the latter is absorbing energy slowly. However, upon looking again, he realizes he was mistaken. In fact, Lin Yuan was absorbing so rapidly that it resembled the speed of light. Impressed, Wu Xuan considers that Lin Yuan might have used the Hinadon. But after pondering a bit, he realizes that not even the Hinadon is capable of reaching such speed. Wu Xuan is unwilling to accept losing to a level re beast soul again. So, he focuses to the maximum to try to surpass Lin Yuan, initiating the absorption of an immense amount of energy. His body is close to the limit. In this process, Wu Xuan begins to bleed from the mouth, shocking Wang Lin and Song Lan. Witnessing the scene, Zhao Shan turns to director Wang Ting and expresses concern that Wu Xuan may face problems if he continues this way. However, Wang Ting assures Zhao Shan not to worry about Wu Xuan, as his uncle Xiang Gui would not allow him to have complications there. Suddenly, Xiang Gui interrupts Wu Xuan and asks if he is going crazy, questioning who instructed him to absorb energy in this way. Wu Xuan complains, claiming not to be convinced, and asks how Lin Yuan can absorb energy at such an extraordinary speed. His uncle Zhang Gui reprimands Wu Xuan, explaining that he gave him the Hinadon to enhance his energy absorption, and not to blindly compete with others. Zhang Gui points out that Wu Xuan did not realize that, although Lin Yuan absorbed a huge amount of energy, his strength had not changed. Observing Lin Yuan, Zhang Gui notes that the energy around him is bright and without waves. Wu Xuan, discontented, questions how a level E beast soul can absorb energy from a level Re king beast crystal core and ponders about its impact on Lin Yuan's strengthening. Xiang Yi then tries to calm Wu Xuan, advising him not to waste energy on senseless questions and emphasizing that his biggest enemy is himself. Later, everyone started evolving one after another. Wang Ting expressed satisfaction with what he witnessed, while Zhao Shan remained focused on observing Lin Yuan, who has been motionless since the beginning of energy absorption. Two days later, everyone was out of the water, engaged in lively conversations and smiles. Wang Jin expressed his gratitude to his father for the medicinal bath and shared a discovery. However, Wang Ting's reaction was furious as he considered Wang Jin's progress insufficient, emphasizing that he shouldn't settle for just that. While conversations flowed, Lin Yuan remained silent and unmoving. Zhao Shan approached Lin Yuan and called him. Lin Yuan quickly turned, inquiring if something had happened. Zhao Shan explained that he was just curious about why Lin Yuan was the only one who had not evolved his strength yet. Surprised, Lin Yuan admitted to forgetting. This irritated Zhao Shan, who questioned how Lin Yuan could forget something so important. Lin Yuan then summoned Long and requested that he spend his evolution points to advance a level. Long agreed, and began fulfilling Lin Yuan's request. A red aura with sparks began emanating from Lin Yuan, impressing Zhao Shan. Observing the scene, Zhao Shan wondered what was happening and questioned how Lin Yuan could control his evolution in this way. Lin Yuan interrupted the evolution process, and Zhao Shan asked if Lin Yuan had six-star beast king status all along. Lin Yuan confirmed that, in fact, he had only used a part of the collected energy. Lin Yuan still had 20 million evolution points stored, capable of elevating him to the level of an 8-star Beast King. Witnessing this, Wu Xuan smiled. Lin Yuan looked at Wu Xuan and pondered that the faster one rises, the more unstable the Beast Soul becomes. At the moment, Wu Xuan had reached the 7th star of the Beast King, but it was still difficult to predict how he would handle this evolution. Director Wang Ting, who was observing Lin Yuan from afar, praised his incredible ability highlighting that Lin Yuan alone was able to absorb a third of the present energy. Wang Ting addressed everyone, announcing that it was time to go to the hotel. Upon arrival, 
Wang Jin informed them that Yan Jing had rented the entire hotel, and all guests were students and professors from other universities. Wang Jin speculated about how many people were still ahead of them to check into the hotel, expressing his hunger. Su Mu offered to take them to eat after checking in, mentioning the variety of delicious foods in Yan Jing. Wang Jin, curious, asked how she knew about it, and Su Mu, a bit annoyed, replied that she had read the guide. While they were talking, a group of people arrived, capturing the attention of the three. Lin Yuan asked Wang Jin who these people were, and he replied that they were Yan Jing students, the first two being Chen Longxiang and Xu Xiao. Song Lan, who was next to Chu Tiani, stated that Chen Longxiang and Xu Xiao didn't elicit any reaction from Chu Tiani. In contrast, Wu Xuan, upon seeing Chen Longxiang and Xu Xiao, manifested noticeable discomfort, gritting his teeth. Familiar with them from frequent encounters and past competitions, Wu Xuan offered to greet them. He then approached Chen Longxiang, introducing himself as Wu Xuan, the representative of Mordoman and vice captain. Chen Longxiang returned the greeting, identifying himself as Chen Longxiang, the representative of Yan Jing and the vice captain of the team. However, while shaking hands with Chen Longxiang, Wu Xuan immediately sensed his exceptional strength. Uncomfortable. Wu Xuan released Chen Longxiang's hand and turned his gaze to the person behind him. Wu Xuan then mentions that he should be the team captain, greeting Xu Xiao. But Xu Xiao simply turns his back, completely ignoring him, leaving Wu Xuan in an awkward situation. Subsequently, a silence hangs over the surroundings as everyone watches the situation unfold. Wu Xuan, starting to feel slighted by Xu Xiao and his team, is surprised when Chen Longxiang apologizes, attributing his captain's behavior to his introverted nature. Chen Longxiang once again extends his hand to Wu Xuan, asking for patience. Trying to disguise his discomfort, Wu Xuan assures that everything is okay, though in reality, he yearns to leave the scene. At this moment Song Lan arrives and asks where Chen Longxiang was heading. He responds that they are on their way to the best Soul Hall arena, mentioning the intense competition among students that takes place there. Upon hearing the conversation, Zhao Shan suggests that they also head to the arena. He instructs the three to check into the hotel first and then go to the arena. He warns them not to cause trouble during their stay outside. The three agree and state that everything will go as planned. As everyone arrives, a fight is already underway. Chen Longxiang comments that they arrived at the opportune moment. Lin Yuan, upon seeing the panda in the arena, recalls that Wang Jin had mentioned it before. The individual in question is Chen Jishan, the captain of the Xuchuan team. Lin Yuan struggles to identify the other participant and turns to Wang Jin for clarification on his identity. Wang Jin informs him that the other participant is Wan Qi, the vice captain of the Jinghong Beast Troop. Wang Lin observes that the fight between the captains promises to be interesting this time, an observation Wang Jin agrees with. The contest begins with Wan Qi initiating attacks using flames in his hands. Chen Zhushan, in turn, prepares adequately, and when Wan Qi's strike is about to hit him, Chen Zhushan skillfully leaps, avoiding it with ease. Facing this, Lin Yuan realizes that Chen Zhushan takes central control of the situation without unnecessary movements. Chen Zhushan focuses and prepares to counterattack, delivering a blow towards Wan Qi, who seemingly tries to dodge. However, Chen Zhushan persists in the attack, causing discomfort to Wan Qi, who expresses his pain. Then Chen Zhushan executes a series of rapid strikes before Wan Qi can react, leaving him with few defensive options. Witnessing this, Wang Lin expresses amazement, wondering about the nature of these moves. Lin Yuan informs that it is Wing Chun, emphasizing that Chen Zhushan has seamlessly integrated martial arts into the essence of battle. He highlights that Wing Chun is both offensive and defensive, robust and smooth, enabling Chen Zhushan to face multiple opponents effortlessly. Lin Yuan points out that the gloves on Chen Zhushan's hands are divine beast weapons, called Aoki's gloves, a top-tier king beast weapon. He mentions that Chen Zhushan can use part of the opponent's energy and blood to nourish himself. Lin Yuan suggests to Wang Jin to be cautious when facing Chen Zhushan. As the fight progresses, Wan Qi continues to defend against Chen Zhushan's attacks. Wan Qi, realizing the difficulty, decides to use his secret ability, enveloping his body in flames to ward off Chen Zhushan. 
However, Chen Zhushan is undeterred and prepares again for the confrontation. At this moment, Wan Qi appears considerably more powerful than before, surprising even Wang Lin, who did not anticipate that Wan Qi possessed such a technique. In response, Wang Jin warns that it is not prudent to reveal secret weapons before the actual competition. He explains that so-called secret abilities are special skills, mastered by beast soul masters, beyond innate characteristics. Wang Jin goes on to explain that such abilities, also called priceless treasures, can be learned by others. Lin Yuan observes that Wan Qi is the vice-captain of the Fang Qi team and emphasizes the importance of his victory to maintain the morale of the other members. Faced with this scenario, Wan Qi has no choice but to employ his secret ability. He launches an attack against Chen Zushan, attempting various strikes but fails in all of them. Wan Qi questions how Chen Zushan's reaction can be so quick. While Wan Qi ponders, Chen Zushan lands a precise punch to his jaw, followed by a blow to the abdomen, leaving Wan Qi disoriented. He falls to the ground abruptly. Chen Zhushan focuses again. Wang Lin urges Wan Qi to use all his abilities, claiming that this way, he can face Chen Zhushan on equal terms. However, the fight comes to an end. Wang Jin laments, pointing out that none of Chen Zhushan's secret skills were revealed. He emphasizes that Chen Zhushan is indeed a prodigy, whose thinking transcends the common capabilities of people. Chen Zhushan reverts to human form and looks around, asking if anyone is willing to step into the arena and face him. The referee announces that the match has come to its conclusion, declaring Chen Zhushan as the victor. Wang Jin considers that Chen Zhushan is being somewhat reckless by challenging everyone in this way. If he persists in this behavior, his trump card is likely to be revealed soon. Lin Yuan observes that the trump card is not Chen Zhushan's focus. After all, he is a beast soul master and a warrior. He adds that a warrior must constantly improve through battles. Wang Jin questions Lin Yuan if this indicates that Chen Zhushan is using these competitions to transcend his limits before the main competition. Sumu interrupts the two, asking if Lin Yuan would like to face Chen Zhushan. However, Lin Yuan states that his cultivation level differs from Chen Zhushan's. Therefore, engaging in combat would be a mere waste of time. Upon hearing this, Wu Xuan sarcastically questions if Lin Yuan is worthy of such an act. Wu Xuan points out that even Wan Qi, a seven-star king beast, couldn't face Chen Zhushan. Presumably, Lin Yuan wouldn't last even a minute in such a confrontation. Sumu quickly turns to Wu Xuan, asking if someone talked to him. Wu Xuan asserts that everything he said was the pure truth, and Lin Yuan should acknowledge it. Wu Xuan mentions that Lin Yuan was making excuses, claiming it would only be a waste of time but the truth would manifest when the real competition approached. Sumu, enraged, stands up wanting to confront Wu Xuan. However, Lin Yuan restrains her. Sumu stares at Lin Yuan who remains silent. He just shakes his head and watches Wu Xuan without uttering a single word. Wu Xuan begins to ponder and question what this meant. Knowing Lin Yuan's mindset, he would explicitly state if he were not a match for Chen Zhushan. Wu Xuan considers the possibility that Lin Yuan really can compete on equal terms with Chen Zhushan. Chu Tiani stands up, expressing his intention to fight. Song Lan warns Chu Tiani, pointing out that he is the captain and representative of their team. It would be commendable to see him triumph. However, in case of defeat, it would be detrimental to the other members. While Song Lan was speaking, Wu Xuan steps forward and states that if the captain can't fight, he will take over. After all, Chu Tiani doesn't need to act. Wu Xuan looks at everyone and smiles, declaring that his presence alone is enough to defeat Chen Zhushan. Song Lan, dissatisfied with the situation, puts his hand on his face, as he just persuaded Chu Tiani not to fight, and Wu Xuan acts to the contrary. On the other hand, Lin Yuan is entirely satisfied with the situation, as he was eager to witness this fight. Lin Yuan reflects on Wu Xuan's recent rise to the seven-star level, and considers the instability of Wu Xuan's soul beast, driven by the Hainan Dan. Lin Yuan realizes that this may not be advantageous against Chen Zhushan. Fixing his gaze on Wu Xuan, who displays confidence, Lin Yuan contemplates the possibility that Wu Xuan has a hidden trump card. Wu Xuan approaches Chen Zhushan and formally introduces himself as Wu Xuan from the Demon City, also the vice-captain of his team. 
Chen Zhushan inquires about the size of the demon city, considering it might be a coincidence as one of his objectives in this journey is to test the geniuses from that city. Chen Zhushan performs his fusion during the introduction, and Wu Xuan follows suit immediately. The audience, witnessing Wu Xuan's transformation, is surprised as Wu Xuan's soul beast is truly rare. A spectator ponders the uncertainty of the winner, while a woman notes that one is the captain of Xuchuanmen University, and the other is the vice captain of Mortemon University, suggesting both have a chance of winning. The battle commences with Wu Xuan, unleashing a cloud of poison throughout the arena. Upon realizing this, Chen Zhushan deploys a shield. Wang Jin, observing the shield, comments that it is a king-level beast weapon known as Green Bamboo Armor. Besides mitigating potential damage, it can purify impurities. In other words, Wu Xuan's poison cloud has no effect on Chen Zhushan. The intensity of the battle grows. Wu Xuan's attack is completely defended by Chen Zhushan, who prepares to counterattack. However, Wu Xuan dodges the blow, praising the strength of Chen Zhushan's weapon but emphasizing that it won't be easy. Wu Xuan highlights the improvement in his flight control since reaching the seven-star level as a king beast. However, Chen Zhushan begins to contemplate and realizes that Wu Xuan's flying ability seems quite limited. Doubts arise in Chen Zhushan about Wu Xuan's true strength. Flying, Wu Xuan releases another poisonous cloud that envelops Chen Zhushan entirely. Wu Xuan informs that he is also equipped with a king-level beast weapon. Witnessing this scene, Wang Jin explains that this weapon is the poison needle, known for corroding bones the most outstanding weapon of the king-level beast god. Wang Jin inquires about the origin of this weapon, intrigued by Wu Xuan's background. Lin Yuan argues that this weapon was clearly gifted to Wu Xuan by his uncle Xiangui. Chen Zhushan takes the attack and remains motionless. As the dust settles, it becomes evident that several needles are scattered around the area. Observing Chen Zhushan's stillness, Wu Xuan presumes the needles had an effect and it is the opportune moment to attack and reap the fruits of victory. Chen Zhushan reactivates his shield. However, Wu Xuan argues that this attack is not easily eliminated from the body. Seizing the situation, Wu Xuan grabs Chen Zhushan. Song Lan, witnessing this development, expresses admiration, considering that Wu Xuan truly possesses remarkable skills and may emerge victorious. However, Lin Yuan intervenes, pointing out that Although Wu Xuan seems to be in the lead, his opponent is Chen Zhushan. It is premature to conclude that Wu Xuan can triumph so easily. One of the students, in a mocking manner, comments on the irony of a student who didn't even have the courage to fight, making such observations. Lin Yuan turns to him and proposes a bet, challenging the student's certainty. Asked about the terms, Lin Yuan bets that a king-level beast weapon will be granted to Chen Zhushan. The other student carefully considers Lin Yuan's proposition and analyses that Chen Zhushan was poisoned by Wu Xuan. Subsequently, he decides to take the bet and communicates his consent to Lin Yuan. Sumu passively observes, while Lin Yuan smiles. The other student believes the bet is already won and considers which weapon to choose. Meanwhile, the fight between Wu Xuan and Chen Zhushan continues. Wu Xuan advises Chen Zhushan to give up as the poison will soon affect his nerves. However, upon hearing this, Chen Zhushan simply opens his arms, releasing his true strength, leading Wu Xuan to wonder if he was really poisoned, since he shouldn't have all this power still. After Chen Zhushan breaks free, he starts a sequence of strikes on Wu Xuan, leaving the other students stunned and in disbelief at what is happening. The audience, upon witnessing this, begins to question Wu Xuan's ability, stating that his skills are doubtful and that he does not deserve to be appointed as the vice captain of his team. Wu Xuan continues to receive several blows and thinks he cannot lose, trying to counterattack again. However, Chen Zhushan offers no openings, persisting in the attacks and leaving Wu Xuan fallen on the ground. Chen Zhushan prepares for his final attack, but Wu Xuan gives up before being struck. While prostrate on the ground, Wu Xuan ponders whether Chen Zhushan really is a seven-star beast king, as he felt substantially inferior to him. Wang Jin, impressed with this outcome, asks how Lin Yuan knew that Wu Xuan could not beat Chen Zhushan. Lin Yuan explains that while great strength can resist against ten societies in the face of absolute power, any strategy is futile. 
He emphasizes that Wu Xuan has just achieved the seventh star of the Beast King level and does not have a solid foundation. Wu Xuan has never faced such hard challenges, while Chen Zhushan is the total opposite of Wu Xuan. Wang Jin, upon hearing this, turns his gaze to Qingnan and comments that people should preserve discretion. Pride holds people back, while humility propels them forward. He asks Qingnan if this makes sense. Qingnan simply places his hand over his face, expressing complete shame with this. Meanwhile, in the arena, Chen Zhushan returns to his human form and mentions that Wu Xuan's poison was indeed potent and almost defeated him. Wu Xuan, with a quite injured face, cleans himself up a bit and comments that if Chen Zhushan were not so talented, he would certainly be at a disadvantage. As the two talk, someone interrupts them, asking if Chen Zhushan would still be able to fight in his current state. It was Chen Longxiang who presented himself as the vice captain of the Yanjing team. Chen Longxiang expresses his willingness to face Chen Zhushan. The audience, for their part, does not realize that Chen Longxiang had disappeared from among them. Wu Xuan, noticing the absence of Chen Longxiang, questions whether he will really participate in the confrontation. Lin Yuan looks forward to witnessing the strength of Chen Longxiang. Xu Xiao approaches Chen Longxiang and invites him for a talk. Chen Longxiang inquires about the situation, and Xu Xiao informs that the director requested that they avoid causing trouble, emphasizing that he received specific instructions to watch over Chen Longxiang. Chen Longxiang responds with a smile, ensuring that everything is fine, and if the director wishes to assign responsibilities to someone, it should be him, highlighting that Xu Xiao has no involvement in this. Xu Xiao agrees, and suggests that Chen Longxiang choose what he prefers to do. Lin Yuan passively observes this scene, noticing the introverted nature of Xu Xiao. Subsequently, Chen Longxiang approaches Chen Zhushan and hands him a small gift box. Chen Zhushan receives it in his hands and asks about the contents. Chen Longxiang explains that it is a Qingbi Dan, something that will assist Chen Zhushan in his physical recovery and relieve his pains. He adds that if he were to defeat Chen Zhushan in his current conditions and happen to win, it would be a meaningless victory. With that, Chen Longxiang asks Chen Zhushan to accept the gift as a gesture of unity between them. Chen Longxiang gives a thumbs up and assures Chen Zhushan that once he is fully recovered and the poison has left his body, they will have a serious match. Observing this interaction, Wang Jin is impressed by Chen Longxiang's generous gesture, considering the high cost of the pill. However, Wang Jin had anticipated such behavior from Chen Longxiang given his family's history of beast souls, which clearly evidences his generosity. Lin Yuan looks at Wang Jin and comments that Wang Jin speaks as if he himself is not from a noble family. Wang Jin replies that his situation is different. While others spent their family's money, he started almost from scratch and never used his resources indiscriminately. Sumu looks at Wang Jin and agrees with him, adding the question about who invited everyone to dinner spending hundreds of thousands on a single occasion. Wang Jin remembers and feels embarrassed as the group laughs at him. Back in the arena, Chen Zhushan expresses gratitude to Chen Longxiang and gladly accepts the gift. He commits to facing Chen Longxiang with full vigor once he is fully recovered. Chen Longxiang smiles and agrees to this promise. 30 minutes later, Chen Zhushan has fully recovered and expresses his gratitude again to Chen Longxiang. Thanks to the gift from Chen Longxiang, Chen Zhushan was able to recover quickly and without major setbacks. Then, both meet in the center of the arena, greeting each other respectfully before beginning the battle. Chen Longxiang merges into an imposing elephant known as the Ancient Barbarian Elephant. The strength displayed by Chen Longxiang astonishes the audience, leading them to question whether he is truly a beast king-level fighter. Wang Jin points out that the beast soul level in Chen Longzhang is eight stars. Lin Yuan agrees, adding, however, that Chen Longzhang may have improved his skills during this period. Song Lan observes that they all have made considerable progress in a short period, making it almost impossible for anyone to remain at the same level as before. Su Mu emphasizes that Professor Zhao Shan once stated that whoever fully understood their Teo would be able to significantly evolve in strength. 
Even a beast king would be capable of defeating a beast soul master at the lord level. Lin Yuan reflects on how enlightenment is more important than he initially considered. Returning to the arena, Chen Zhushan prepares his shield again and asks Chen Longxiang to use all his resources in the fight against him. Chen Longxiang prepares to attack and states that facing Chen Zhushan with all his strength is exactly what he wishes. Chen Zhushan positions his shield, while Chen Longxiang's attack collides harshly with the shield, leaving everyone impressed. The impact perpetrated by Chen Longxiang was so intense that it broke through Chen Zhushan's defense, delivering a vigorous blow capable of injuring him and projecting him far away in the arena, culminating in his defeat with just one strike. The audience exalts, proclaiming that Chen Longxiang possesses supernatural strength to the point of subduing Chen Zhushan with extreme efficiency. Among the spectators, Wu Xuan hides, crouching and trembling, reflecting on his own inability to confront Chen Zhushan, having been defeated by Chen Longxiang in mere seconds and with a single blow. This outcome leads Wu Xuan to ponder the notorious discrepancy between them. He wonders if this is the true magnitude of Chen Longxiang's strength. While experiencing a shiver of fear, Chu Tiani stands up and requests a challenge against Chen Longxiang. Chen Longxiang turns to Chu Tiani, inquiring about his identity. Chu Tiani responds that he is the greatest beast soul, Chu Tiani. Wang Lin warns, Chu Tiani not to act rashly. Chen Longxiang replies that the greatest beast soul of Demon City is what he has been waiting for. Xu Xiao positions himself beside Chen Longxiang, mentioning a pre-existing agreement that Chen Longxiang would have only one victory. Xu Xiao's presence by his side surprises Chen Longxiang. The audience's attention shifts to Xu Xiao, who becomes the subject of commentary regarding the captain from Yanjing. Feeling uncomfortable with this attention, Xu Xiao steps closer to Chen Longxiang, warning him about the potential reprimand from the director if he persists. Chen Longxiang requests from Xu Xiao one more chance to fight, to which Xu Xiao, fixing his gaze on Chen Longxiang, states that if Chen wishes to confront someone, Xu Xiao will be his opponent. Chen Longxiang immediately declines the offer, recalling the defeat he suffered the last time he faced Xu Xiao. Turning to Chu Tiani, Chen Longxiang offers his apologies, revealing that Captain Xu Xiao has forbidden him from proceeding with the fight. He then suggests to Chu Tiani to wait for the official start of the competition for their confrontation to take place. Chu Tiani watches in silence. Wang Jin, noting this dynamic, speculates about Xu Xiao's extraordinary strength, given that Chen Longxiang always complies with his orders without question. Lin Yuan agrees with Wang Jin, adding that he did not anticipate such strength from Yanjing University, posing a significant challenge for them. Wang Jin suggests that, in terms of skill, Shen Kang should surpass Wu Xuan, and the position of deputy captain should be transferred to Shen Kang. However, Wang Jin notes that Shen Kang was defeated by Sumu. Hearing Sumu's name, Lin Yuan encourages her to actively participate and get involved in the competition. Sumu fixes her gaze on Lin Yuan and expresses that if he does not wish to fight, there would be no fun in her going alone. She admits that defeating some of them would be interesting, but then reflects and mentions that the only person among the others capable of beating her would be Chen Longxiang. Lin Yuan, hearing such a statement, shows surprise and asks Sumu if she is sure she can handle Chen Zhushan. Sumu responds that she is almost certain she would win. Lin Yuan is taken aback by such confidence. Wang Jin questions Sumu about her certainty, to which she responds seriously, asking Lin Yuan if he underestimates her. Lin Yuan replies affirming that Sumu is stronger than he imagined and considers that she clearly has some hidden tricks. Sumu directs her gaze at Lin Yuan and assures him that he does not need to worry about her presence. If Lin Yuan faces an insurmountable opponent, Sumu commits to protecting him. Hearing such assurance, Lin Yuan smiles and agrees, expressing that the situation could not be more favorable. Lin Yuan reflects on the matter and considers that, with his current strength, he really is not a match for Chen Jushin. However, he evaluates that, if he uses all the evolution points he has saved up, Chen Jushan would not be an insurmountable challenge for Lin Yuan. Song Lan interrupts the conversation to inform that director Wang Ting was present. Everyone stands up to greet him, along with another figure accompanying him. Xu Xiao and Chen Longxiang greet this person, referring to him as director. Lin Yuan is surprised by this revelation. 
Wang Jin introduces the man as director Su Dian, highlighting his notoriety in Tibet. Sumu, feeling uncomfortable, seeks refuge behind Lin Yuan, hugging him. Concerned, Lin Yuan asks Sumu about the reason for her discomfort. However, Sumu just lowers her head and remains silent. Lin Yuan recalls that Sumu had mentioned she did not want to join Yanjing University to avoid meeting a specific person. Faced with director Su Dian, Lin Yuan internally questions if this man could be the person Sumu was referring to. Wang Ting praises Chen Longjiang's remarkable performance in the last fight, to which Su Dian expresses gratitude, attributing the success to a favorable situation. Lin Yuan, fixing his gaze on Su Dian, wonders about the possible familial relation between Su Dian and Sumu. Considering the observation made by Professor Zhao Shan that Sumu's family was not simple, Lin Yuan turns to Sumu and asks if Su Dian is, in any way, related to her. Sumu confirms, informing that Su Dian is her biological father. With this revelation, Sumu lowers her head with a melancholic expression and declares that there is no relation between them. She emphasizes that this condition was true in the past, is true in the present, and will remain so in the future. Wang Ting addresses director Su Dian and requests that they leave, to avoid putting pressure on the students and compromising their performances. Su Dian agrees with the suggestion, but before doing so, he turns his gaze to Su Mu, pondering that she still hasn't been able to forgive him. He notices that someone is staring at him, and this displeases him. Lin Yuan observes Su Dian with a furious look, maintaining direct eye contact. The two exchange glances. Lin Yuan emits an intense aura, and Su Dian responds in kind. Su Dian turns around and summons Wang Ting to leave. Wang Ting asks if there will be no more piercing looks. Su Dian states that there is no longer a need. However, he questions who is the young man standing next to Sumu. Wang Ting informs him that it is Lin Yuan, an apprentice of Zhao Shan and the designated substitute for the team. Su Dian quickly turns around and asks if Lin Yuan is really a substitute, as the aura he emits is similar to that of a teacher. After this episode, Su Dian and Wang Ting departed. Lin Yuan, who was protecting Sumu, asked her to return to the hotel, which Sumu promptly complied with. As they left, they spotted someone watching them. Upon inquiring Sumu, Lin Yuan asked if it was Wu Muxuan, a confirmation provided by Sumu. She informed that Wu Muxuan had joined Jubei University, even though it is the last ranked among the elite universities. However, she highlighted that Wu Muxuan's strength was considered one of the greatest within the institution. Recalling the previous victory over Wu Muxuan, Lin Yuan imagined that he still hadn't learned his lesson. He instructed Sumu to ignore him and move forward. As night fell, Lin Yuan was in the hotel, taking a bath. At that moment, Long appeared and questioned if Lin Yuan still wished to train that night. Lin Yuan expressed the need to practice more, motivated by the display of strength seen in Yanjing. Additionally, he revealed that Wang Jin would soon return, intending to use the remaining 20 million points to reach the eight-star level of the Beast King. Two days passed. In the hotel lobby at eight in the morning, everyone was properly uniformed and with their groups formed. Wang Jin observed another team's uniform, commenting on its green color, expressing gratitude for not wearing hats. Lin Yuan, not understanding, asked Wang Jin about the meaning of his words. At that moment, Sumu arrived apologizing for her lateness. Although everyone was enchanted by Sumu's beauty, she ignored them, heading straight to Lin Yuan. She asked him about his activities in the last two days, expressing a desire to take him to explore Yan Jing. However, Wang Jin had informed that Lin Yuan was busy and should not be disturbed. Lin Yuan reported that he was practicing and had made significant progress in the last few days. Sumu was extremely pleased with the news, and inquired about the advancement achieved by Lin Yuan. Wu Xuan's class overheard the conversation and questioned how far Lin Yuan could have gone, speculating whether he had reached the seven-star level of the Beast King. In response to Sumu, Lin Yuan explained that, with much effort, he had reached the mid-level of six stars of the Beast King. The mocking reaction from Wu Xuan and his friends did not shake Lin Yuan, who apparently had attended the event just to tell jokes. While Wu Xuan was enjoying himself with his friends, Sumu watched them and reflected on their naivety. 
Lin Yuan was undoubtedly joking when he claimed to have reached the mid-level of six stars. It's virtually impossible for him to have achieved such a stage. Suddenly, director Wang Ting arrives and asks if everyone is ready. Wang Ting advises everyone to enjoy this moment, as it may be the most significant of their lives. He wishes everyone good luck and counts on everyone's cooperation to honor the university's name. The students express their joy, agreeing with Wang Ting's words. In the Yanjing Beast Arena, Su Dian calls upon all freshmen from the top colleges to participate. Next, the first team is called, and the Yanjing team enters the arena. The second team is summoned to enter, and the Mordormon team presents itself. The third team is invited to enter, and the Sichuan team makes their entrance. The fourth team is invited, and the Beijing Gangzhou team strides into the arena. Lin Yuan observes that in the Beijing Gangzhou team, the captain appears to be a high school student. Wang Jin clarifies that this young man is named Han Yantong. He is only 14 years old and is considered a prodigy. Lin Yuan is intrigued since beast souls are supposed to awaken only at the age of 18. Wang Jin explains again that normally it does occur at 18, but there are rare cases called natural animal souls. Lin Yuan questions if this means Han Yantong was born with a beast soul. Wang Jin confirms that indeed, as soon as they are born, these individuals awaken their beast souls. Their talents are exceptionally high and the fact that they possess beast souls from birth provides an 18-year training advantage over others. Due to this circumstance, these individuals usually excel ahead of 90% of the world's population. Coupled with a privileged growth environment, they end up becoming prominent leaders in the world of beast soul masters. Wang Jin adds that Han Yantong is an example of this at 14, possessing a beast soul already at the eight-star level of the beast king. It is worth noting that his beast soul is considered extremely special, being dubbed the word beast. With his abilities, it can be said to be an almost impeccable beast soul, combining attacks, defense, and assistance in a cohesive manner. Lin Yuan ponders over the almost miraculous abilities of this beast soul. Unexpectedly, Wang Jin reveals that the director of Beijing Gangzhou University sent him and appointed him as captain. Wang Jin believes it is almost inevitable to prevent them from winning. Lin Yuan questions how Han Yantong was not accepted by Yanjing and Demoniac Universities. Wang Jin explains that this is due to the proximity of Beijing Gangzhou College to his residence. Lin Yuan, not understanding, asks about the triviality of this reason. Wang Jin reveals that Han Yantong's parents are also beast soul masters, and he has been intensely trained all his life. As a result, Han Yantong's ability to take care of himself is quite limited, requiring the presence of his parents to accompany him. Due to the high compatibility with his beast soul, Han Yantong avoids speaking much, fearing to cause any disaster. Wang Jin also informs that Han Yantong's parents wanted him to attend a renowned university. However, Han Yantong rejected all offers, thus allowing Beijing Gangzhou to benefit from this decision. Lin Yuan considers Han Yantong to be the kind of spoiled young man who cannot sustain himself without his parents' presence. However, he is respected for his strength. As long as Han Yantong maintains his strength, the rest of his personal problems are considered insignificant. Once everyone gathers in the arena, Su Dian begins her speech, emphasizing that everyone's origin doesn't matter. Su Dian welcomes everyone and invites them to participate in this first national tournament. As future leaders of a generation, they will be ushering in a new era at that moment. Su Dian continues to mention that they are already aging and rusty, and the burden of the future will rest on each of their shoulders. They have become the future leaders, carrying the flame of hope for humanity. Su Dian emphasizes that everyone there is strong and urges them to create a promising future as they have the necessary confidence. The students express enthusiasm in their cheers. Su Dian thanks everyone and informs that she will explain the competition rules. Once Su Dian concludes the explanations, the tournament is officially started. Lin Yuan smiles with enthusiasm. Su Dian begins explaining the rules, stating that the competition will unfold in three distinct phases. The first will consist of the survival battle, followed by the second, known as the arena battle, and concluding with the third stage, identified as the team battle. In detail, Su Dian clarifies the regulations associated with each modality, starting with the arena battle. 
In the elimination contest, where 10 participants face another 10, the winner has the privilege of remaining in the arena until no ally remains by their side. The team battle, in turn, is configured as a close-quarters, multi-sectoral confrontation based on the precepts of the school, with the purpose of evaluating the capacity for collaboration and synergy. Regarding the survival battle, Su Dian informs that, after consultations with teachers and directors, the chosen location was the Dragonbone Ridge, situated on the outskirts of Yanjing. Given this, Lin Yuan asks Wang Jin about the exact location of this place. Wang Jin reports that when the base city of Yanjing was erected, ten beast-level monsters allied to eradicate the city at once, with the final Black Dragon King being the most formidable among them. Wang Jin describes that just a breath from the dragon was capable of decimating a small city, leaving Lin Yuan deeply impressed with the dragon's destructive power, which reveals itself to be intimidating. He reveals that this dragon was named Nidhogg, being maliciously extradited from the Western world through despicable devices. Faced with Lin Yuan's question about the meaning of this, Wang Jin explains that these dragons could not be annihilated, and upon witnessing the strengthening of the country, they conceived a nefarious plan. The intention was to use the dragon's power to weaken the nation as a whole. However, in the end, the dragons were neutralized by dozens of nuclear bombs. Subsequently, the body of Nidhogg gave rise to a peculiar mountain rank named Dragonbone Ridge. The nuclear bombardment also resulted in the creation of various mountain and powerful beasts in the area of the Dragonbone Mountains. Wang Jin assures having heard reports about the presence of lord-level creatures in the region. Given this explanation, Lin Yuan fully understands the situation and concludes that the choice of this location is indeed not surprising. Seizing the opportunity, Lin Yuan inquires Wang Jin about the presence of radiation in the area. Wang Jin responds that hundreds of years have passed and the vast majority of the radiation has dissipated. There still exists a minimal amount, however, it is located in the depths of the mountains, unable to affect them. Lin Yuan shows great enthusiasm upon noting that the radiation generated by the bombs has been around for thousands, or even hundreds of thousands of years. Consequently, he concludes that the place is perfect for his cultivation activities. Sudian resumes the presentation, outlining the rules for the imminent survival battle. The parameters stipulate that the students must survive for a period of 10 days in the ridge, also taking into account the substitute students. In case of success, each student will be awarded 10 points, totaling 120 points for the team. Each defeat of a king-level monster will render an additional point, adding up to 10 points. However, by defeating a lord-level monster, two points will be awarded. Such points are unlimited. After these guidelines from Sudian, some students showed restlessness, considering the situation excessively dangerous, especially in light of the impossibility of defeating a lord-level monster. In contrast, other students proposed the formation of teams to achieve such a feat. Observing this, Sudian considers that everyone has some experience which will undoubtedly make the battle intriguing. She emphasizes that, once the survival battle is initiated, the students will be distributed randomly. The choice between facing monsters or seeking team partners will be up to the individual. Sudian emphasizes that simply hiding will not be advantageous, as team clashes are allowed, and the winning team will gain a significant advantage. Again, some students express concern about which approach to adopt. Meanwhile, Wu Moxuan contemplates that Lin Yuan should be careful not to cross his path, as he intends to defeat Lin Yuan with his own skills. Following the briefing, Su Dian officially starts the tournament and kicks off the survival battle. The students are instructed to use trucks to reach their destinations. Gradually, the students begin to board their respective vehicles. Su Mu approaches Lin Yuan assuring him that no matter where he is assigned, she will reach him as quickly as possible. She promises to protect Lin Yuan, firmly believing that together they will be able to overcome the challenge. Sumu reflects that the time has finally come for her to take on the responsibility of protecting Lin Yuan. After hearing such words, Lin Yuan smiles and agrees with Sumu. A man enters the truck and mentions that it is the first time they are meeting, hence asking everyone to introduce themselves. Starting the introductions, the man reveals his name as Chen Shuewu. 
He is a Lord-level soul beast, affiliated with the Chinese military headquarters, and is responsible for the team's safety. Chen Shewu clarifies that if any of them encounter a danger they cannot resolve, they can call him through the provided watch. He will promptly move according to the received coordinates. However, asking for help will automatically disqualify the person from the survival battle. Lin Yuan takes the watch and examines it, noting that the first function counts the defeated monsters, and the second is for calling rescue. He also considers that each vehicle clearly has a similar officer, aimed at ensuring the student's safety. This implies that the military headquarters has deployed 12 Lord-level Beast Soul Masters, showing the high standard of this national competition. Chen Shuiwu distributes blindfolds to the students and asks them to put them on before reaching the mountains. Wang Jin inquires about the need to cover their eyes. Chen Shuiwu explains that this is one of the rules. Wang Jin must be blindfolded so as not to know where the other students were dropped off. As the trucks depart, Chen Shuiwu instructs that if anyone has any questions, they should ask them now before arriving at the mountains. Lin Yuan raises his hand and voices his question. Chen Shuiwu encourages him to proceed. Lin Yuan asks if the crystal cores he obtains by defeating monsters must be handed over to the school, or if he can keep them. The question surprises those around him. Chen Shuiwu clarifies that all gains from the hunts belong to those who obtain them. However, he wonders why Lin Yuan is concerned about this. Lin Yuan celebrates excitedly, while Sumu simply laughs. Everyone has their eyes properly covered. As the trucks proceed on the path, Lin Yuan begins tapping his knee with his finger. Chen Shuiwu notices this and thinks that Lin Yuan is truly distinct from the other students. In the middle of the mountain, we see Lin Yuan's truck moving forward. Lin Yuan, blindfolded, senses that the vehicle has stopped. While tapping his leg with his finger, he meticulously counts each second that passes, totaling 25,761 seconds. This would amount to more than seven hours of travel to that point. Chen Suiwu grabs Wang Lin's arm and projects him out of the truck. Lin Yuan notices this and, through the sound and movement, realizes that it is neither Sumu nor Wang Jin. The truck resumes its movement, making some turns that culminate in Wang Jin's fall, who expresses that all this is madness. Lin Yuan does not divert his focus, considering the turns are intentional to disorient the students. However, Lin Yuan was a formidable assassin in his previous life, making this task not difficult. The truck stops again, and this time, Wang Jin is designated to stay. After his departure, the vehicle starts moving again. After a while, the truck stops once more, and this time, Sumu is chosen. Lin Yuan realizes that Sumu and Wang Jin have already left, likely meaning it's now his turn. The truck stops for the last time, and Chen Shuiwu touches Lin Yuan's shoulders, throwing him out of the truck. Lin Yuan quickly gets up, removes the blindfold from his eyes, and questions why Chen Shuiwu was so rough in throwing him out. As he stands, Lin Yuan watches the truck drive away and estimates that, according to the vehicle's speed, he is 15 kilometers away from Sumu. Without wasting time, Lin Yuan transforms and immediately Long congratulates him for successfully absorbing nuclear radiation and acquiring a hundred evolution points. Lin Yuan notices this and quickly realizes the persistence of radiation in the area. He starts to calculate that, even if it's in a small amount, he still gets 100 points every 10 seconds, totaling 600 points per hour and an accumulated 864,000 points per day. If Lin Yuan stayed for the 10 days of the competition, he would reach a total of 8,640,000 evolution points, thus enabling his beast soul to ascend to the next level, reaching the ninth star of the Beast King. Lin Yuan considers that he is still at the entrance of the forest and thinks that by going deeper, he might encounter a more significant concentration of radiation, further enhancing his evolution points. Long urges him to move forward, however. Lin Yuan states they cannot proceed yet, as he wants to find Sumu. He argues that Songlan and Wang Jin have probably already met, and having more individuals implies greater collective strength. Long asks about Lin Yuan's plan to locate them, to which he responds that he precisely remembers the place where each was thrown. He asserts that he will head towards Sumu first, hoping that she hasn't moved too far away. Ten minutes later, 
Lin Yuan reaches the vicinity of the location where Sumu was supposed to be. However, he doesn't find her. He perseveres in observing the surroundings and finally identifies footprints on the ground, approaching for a closer analysis. He confirms that, unequivocally, they are Sumu's footprints. With the confirmation of the direction taken by Sumu, Lin Yuan swiftly follows the footprints left by her. After a few minutes on this trail, Lin Yuan hears the sounds of Sumu's beast souls ahead. Sumu is surrounded by three monsters, a venomous ink demon mollusk, a ghost civet, and a three-headed dog. Sumu assesses the situation and states she knows the three-headed dog monster. Even being a level 7 beast queen, she recognizes the difficulty of defeating this monster. While Sumu is surrounded by the three monsters, another opposing team, composed of three individuals, watches secretly. Qian Chuan expresses luck in finding a three-headed monster so early. Lieutenant Xiao Han remains silent for a moment. Fang Liang, another member of the group, mentions recognizing the snow fox, identifying her as the new student from the demonic university. He questions whether they should assist her. Qian Chuan responds by stating she is an enemy. Lieutenant Xiao Han agrees, supporting Qian Chuan's stance and emphasizing the need to do everything to win the competition. He adds that even without the monsters, they should not allow her to escape. However, Lin Yuan remains behind, listening to all these considerations. After absorbing the situation, Lin Yuan contemplates that there's no objection to aiming for the competition's fruits, but if something happens to Sumu, he will not hesitate to act. Sumu confronts the three monsters simultaneously and recognizes the imperative of not remaining passive, waiting for death. Determined to gain an advantage, Sumu opts to initiate the attack. The three-headed dog realizes that Sumu is preparing to attack and anticipates its own attack against her. Both attacks collide in the air, resulting in mutual cancellation. The mollusk, in turn, prepares and launches an attack, releasing venom from its mouth. Sumu performs an agile leap, swiftly dodging the mollusk's attack, which upon touching the ground creates a hole. Witnessing such an event, Sumu understands that the mollusk's attack consists of highly corrosive venomous ink. She contemplates that it will be practically impossible to defeat the three monsters at once. Sumu considers the possibility of requesting assistance from Chen Shuiwu, but remembers that, by doing so, she would be immediately eliminated. Additionally, she emphasizes the urgent need to find Lin Yuan. Lin Yuan believes that Sumu hasn't given up yet and decides to wait and observe more closely to assess Sumu's performance. The ghost civet advances towards Sumu and strikes directly, resulting in injuries. Sumu, staring intensely at the ghost civet, goes on the counterattack. The ghost civet attempts to defend against Sumu's imminent attack, but she manages to freeze its paws and deliver a powerful blow. Lin Yuan, who was just observing, notices that Sumu, even under pressure, shows true strength by inflicting severe damage to a monster of this caliber. After Sumu's attack, the mollusk tries to hit her again with its poison cloud. Sumu, anticipating the attack, erects an ice wall for protection. As soon as the barrier is formed, Sumu executes a strike that shatters it, leaving the enemy team stunned and perplexed at the same time. Sumu observes through the ice shards on the ground and realizes that the demonic mollusk is completely immobile and frozen, indicating the success of her plan. Sumu assesses the current situation and considers that the three-headed dog indeed represents her next challenge, as both the demonic mollusk and the ghost zivit are prostrate and unconscious on the battlefield. The three-headed dog lets out a piercing roar, exhaling flames around it. Sumu directs her ice attack towards the three-headed dog, launching several sharp pieces at it. However, the monster moves agilely, easily dodging all attacks. The dog uses its three heads to charge at Sumu, who promptly responds by launching her ice attack simultaneously. The attacks collide again in the air, and Sumu feels an impact on her back but remains firm with little difficulty. This surprises Qian Chuan, who shouts to his leader that Sumu is more powerful than they had anticipated. Sumu, still standing and slightly injured, manages to defeat all three monsters at once. Of the three faced, two succumb to their injuries and die, while the third remains unconscious. Lieutenant Xiao Han dismisses everything as foolishness, insisting that they should merge their beast souls immediately and attack her. 
Fang Liang is surprised by Xiao Han's decision, questioning whether they should act immediately. Xiao Han stares at Fang Liang, stating that if they do not act now, Sumu could claim the three-headed monster's reward exclusively for herself. Following these words, Xiao Han merges and transforms into a silver moon venomous scorpion. Chen Chuan metamorphoses into an armored beast, and Fang Liang integrates into a thunder jellyfish. Sumu notices the presence of other people and realizes that encountering someone at this moment will not be favorable. The three members of the blue team emerge before Sumu. Xiao Han instructs Fang Liang to advance and immobilize Sumu so Xiao Han can attack her. Fang Liang moves towards Sumu, capturing her with his electrified tentacles. Sumu lets out a scream as she is electrocuted. Xiao Han praises Fang Liang for the performance and moves to attack Sumu. Sumu labels the three as despicable, fearing this might be her end. However, before Xiao Han's attack can reach Sumu, a voice states that taking advantage of someone's peril does not align with the conduct of a knight. Lin Yuan steps in front of Sumu, blocking Xiao Han's attack with his hand. Sumu tries to warn Lin Yuan about the poison in the attack, but before she can finish, Lin Yuan has already absorbed the impact with his own body to protect Sumu. Xiao Han considers that, regardless of their opponent's identity, the application of his poison will result in complete combat incapacity, leaving the person paralyzed. Although he tries to hit Lin Yuan again with his attack, he cannot penetrate Lin Yuan's defense. Sumu, anxious about Lin Yuan's situation, exclaims his name while Xiao Han stands confused, questioning how this could be happening. His scorpion tail fails to breach Lin Yuan's impregnable defense, leading Xiao Han to speculate whether Lin Yuan shares the same defensive ability as Qian Chuan, whose beast soul focuses on defense. As Xiao Han ponders this, Lin Yuan steps forward and positions himself in front of him. Lin Yuan, with an intimidating expression, comments that he is not surprised to see the blue team resorting to sneaky attacks, attributing this to their weakness. Lin Yuan firmly warns that when carrying out stealth attacks, one must be prepared for the consequences if the plan fails. Xiao Han shows surprise and remains silent. Lin Yuan strikes him, sending him flying and defeating him with a single blow. The three-headed dog awakens, and Lin Yuan quickly notices, declaring his intent to eliminate it. Lin Yuan runs towards the monster, which retaliates with a fire attack. Lin Yuan casually blocks the attack with his arm and advances without hesitation. As he approaches the monster, Lin Yuan jumps ready to deliver a fatal blow, annihilating the three-headed monster. Long appears to congratulate Lin Yuan on his successful defeat of the monster and informs him about the reward received. Lin Yuan thanks Long, expressing satisfaction at receiving two chests. Lin Yuan turns to Fang Liang and Qian Chuan, asking whether they would leave on their own or prefer to be removed by force. Fearing the latter, Fang Liang and Qian Chuan revert to human form, take their leader Xiao Han, and hastily retreat. Lin Yuan turns to Sumu, expressing concern for Wang Jin, considering him more vulnerable than Song Lan. Lin Yuan fears for the possible elimination of Wang Jin, and, in response, Sumu asks if Lin Yuan knows where to find Wang Jin. Lin Yuan confirms and explains that during the ride in the truck, he was able to observe everyone's exit, allowing him to reach the location. Sumu just looks at Lin Yuan and admires his ability. As they run to find Wang Jin, Sumu questions Lin Yuan's current strength. Lin Yuan reveals that he has reached eight stars at the Beast King level, impressing Sumu with his extraordinary strength. Suddenly Lin Yuan stops their advance and declares that Wang Jin got off here, although he does not seem to be present at the moment. Sumu notes that a considerable amount of time has passed since Wang Jin left the vehicle, suggesting he probably isn't in the area anymore. Lin Yuan notices something on a nearby tree and decides to move closer for a detailed inspection. Upon observing the mark on the tree, Sumu quickly deduces that Wang Jin likely left that mark. Lin Yuan comments that Wang Jin is insightful and possibly left the marks on purpose, indicating they could follow them to find him. Sumu expresses concern about Wang Jin's risky action, considering other students could hunt him if they saw the marks. Lin Yuan agrees with Sumu and emphasizes the need to find Wang Jin quickly. Sumu identifies some monster footprints on the ground. Upon examining them, Lin Yuan concludes they are from more than one monster but, fortunately, are small in size, 
Suddenly, Lin Yuan hears a sound and wonders about its origin. Sumu is unsure of the cause, but believes the sound comes from the direction of the footprints. Lin Yuan and Sumu realize the sound may be related to Wang Jin and run to investigate. As they approach, they see a giant egg being attacked by some smaller monsters. Sumu inquires about the nature of the giant egg. Lin Yuan confesses his lack of knowledge on the matter. Unexpectedly, the egg begins to communicate with Sumu and Lin Yuan, revealing itself to be the voice of Wang Jin. Sumu questions if this is Wang Jin's beast soul. Lin Yuan and Sumu stand still, surprised by the revelation. Wang Jin asks for help to get rid of the small monsters attacking him. Lin Yuan, in response, just opens his mouth and accumulates energy in it, causing the small monsters to flee in terror. Thanking Lin Yuan for his intervention, Wang Jin compares the monsters to hyenas, stating that once noticed, they do not leave a person alone. Sumu approaches Wang Jin, concerned about his condition and possible injuries. Wang Jin assures that the small monsters are not capable of harming him. Lin Yuan approaches Wang Jin, crosses his arms, and questions how he had the courage to be chased by early-stage king-level monsters. Wang Jin asks if Lin Yuan did not realize that his beast soul is an egg, questioning what kind of combat abilities Lin Yuan expected from him. He also mocks the idea of Lin Yuan believing that an egg could roll over and crush monsters. Lin Yuan, imagining such a scene, concludes that it's hard to blame Wang Jin. Lin Yuan considers the uniqueness of Wang Jin's beast soul, initially classified as odd, as something peculiar, without imagining that a beast soul in the form of an egg could exist. Lin Yuan starts to look at Wang Jin, thinking about the possible uses of his beast soul. Lin Yuan wonders if he could fry and eat it when hungry, but acknowledges that, being a beast soul, it must have some special utility. Wang Jin notices Lin Yuan's gaze and asks why he is being looked at in that way. He suggests that Lin Yuan not focus on his weak attack capability, but rather on his absolute defense, challenging Lin Yuan to test it himself. Lin Yuan declares his refusal to make any attempt and asks Wang Jin to abandon the idea. Lin Yuan expresses his fear of using his paw, fearing that he might break the egg and spill the yolk. Sumu, with a humorous expression, imagines the scene and praises Lin Yuan's sense of humor. Wang Jin, annoyed, questions why Sumu is laughing and states that if someone managed to break his shell, the person would have his last name. Lin Yuan, ready to take up the challenge, questions Wang Jin's confidence. Wang Jin encourages Lin Yuan to use all his strength and courage. Preparing for the attack, Lin Yuan concentrates to reduce his force by 50%, believing Wang Jin would be able to withstand such an impact. When Lin Yuan applies the strike, he realizes that the attack had no effect on Wang Jin, who mocks the weakness of the blow and questions if Lin Yuan had not eaten yet. Wang Jin challenges Lin Yuan to try harder. Lin Yuan, in response, accumulates a yellow energy for a more powerful attack. Wang Jin, surprised, inquires if Lin Yuan really intends to use all that force. Lin Yuan's strike hits Wang Jin, sending him flying away, causing the egg to roll and damage some trees. Sumu rushes to Wang Jin, concerned about his condition. She concludes that Lin Yuan does not joke around when he is serious in a fight. Wang Jin comments that the attack was so-so, but considers that Lin Yuan, despite considering him a brother, seemed to want to kill him at that moment. Wang Jin gets up and assures that his eggshell remains intact, indicating that Lin Yuan's attack was not that strong. Lin Yuan mentions that, in that case, he would not hesitate to use his claws. Wang Jin changes the subject, suggesting that they should first look for Song Lan. He proposes that the team be composed of Lin Yuan as the main attacker, Wang Jin in defense, Sumu as the organizer and team maintainer, and Song Lan assisting Sumu in that task. Lin Yuan praises Wang Jin's proposal but points out that, as they ran through the forest, he lost Song Lan's location. Sumu asks about the next step. Lin Yuan suggests they continue advancing through the mountain until they reach the depths of the dragon bone. Wang Jin asks if Lin Yuan is interested in hunting lord-level monsters and questions, if just the three of them would be capable of such an endeavor. Lin Yuan responds that most of the students are probably on the outer part of the forest looking for Beast King level monsters, which means that, as they go deeper, it is likely they will encounter few people in the area. 
This implies that they can focus more on hunting monsters without worrying about surprise attacks from other students. Such surprise attacks clearly would bring negative impacts to them, beyond the score. While a Beast King level monster represents at most one point, potentially up to a maximum of 10 points, Lord level monsters are worth two points, with no limits. Sumu agrees with Lin Yuan, acknowledging that surprise attacks would indeed be troublesome, a lesson she learned the hard way some time ago. Lin Yuan highlights that indeed, there are Lord level monsters deeper in the mountain, but as long as the group avoids them, all will be well. Lin Yuan believes this is the best option available, as staying there would result in attacks from both sides. Wang Jin agrees with Sumu and Lin Yuan. Lin Yuan considers that as long as he can enter the mountain, he will become stronger just by breathing. Six hours later, Lin Yuan is still traversing the woods. Wang Jin asks if they are getting closer. Lin Yuan responds that probably not, as he has not yet spotted any Lord Level monsters nearby. He points out that they are on the right path, feeling closer than before. Lin Yuan reflects that he now receives 200 evolution points every 10 seconds. Suddenly, they hear a noise and notice the presence of a drone flying close to them. Lin Yuan recalls that the competition is being broadcast live to everyone. He stops marching to assess the situation, aware of the need to be cautious, as exposing his secrets could lead to trouble. At this moment, directors Wang Ting and Su Dian are watching Lin Yuan on the computer screen. Su Dian expresses concern about Su Mu's participation in the exam, stating it's hard for him to accept. Wang Ting assures Su Dian that his son Wang Jin is also present and moreover, they are with Lin Yuan, so nothing bad will happen. Su Dian questions Lin Yuan's reliability, to which Wang Ting responds that Lin Yuan is a student of Zhao Shan, highly recommended by him. He asks Su Dian to have an unbiased view and give his opinion. Su Dian admits that Zhao Shan is trustworthy and suggests that Lin Yuan could become one of the strongest. However, he emphasizes his suspicion that Lin Yuan seems to always hide many secrets. Back in the competition, night has fallen, and Su Mu, Wang Jin, and Lin Yuan find themselves in a cave deep in the mountain. Lin Yuan comments that the meat seems very good. As Wang Jin seasons the meat, he says this is part of his cooking skills. Su Mu expresses her gratitude and mentions how lucky Wang Jin is to carry spices with him. Suddenly, Wang Jin smiles and waves at the camera, asking how the audience is doing. He encourages viewers to subscribe to the channel and leave a like, expressing his affection for them. Sumu quickly turns to identify the source of the sound. Lin Yuan also turns, and when they all look towards the entrance of the cave, they see a drone again. Wang Ting, the person behind the situation, instructs to focus on Lin Yuan, as the director is curious to learn more about him. Lin Yuan turns back to them and mentions that with the nightfall, the temperature will drop quickly, highlighting the need to prepare more firewood. Wang Jin, absorbed in the excitement caused by the delicious aroma of the meat, wasn't paying much attention. Suddenly Wang Jin notices a change in Lin Yuan and questions the reason for this sudden advancement. Su Mu agrees with Wang Jin, noting that Lin Yuan is surpassing the eight stars of the Beast King level, approaching the final stage. Lin Yuan laughs, trying to disguise the situation, stating that he doesn't fully understand what's happening, as he was just sitting there and mysteriously getting stronger. Wang Jin, moved, falls to his knees, grabs Lin Yuan's leg and begs to be taught by him, also asking Lin Yuan to be his mentor. Lin Yuan tries to push Wang Jin away, explaining that it's not a matter of not wanting to teach, but rather that he doesn't have the capability to do so. Even so, Wang Jin accepts the situation and decides to go gather firewood. Su Mu stands up and approaches Lin Yuan, who asks her to accompany Wang Jin to avoid dangers, while Lin Yuan takes care of the meat. After Su Mu and Wang Jin leave, Lin Yuan summons Long and asks to open the two chests he had previously won. Long opens the first chest and congratulates Lin Yuan for obtaining 50,000 evolution points and a divine beast level weapon called Soul Destroying Claw. He explains that this weapon can inflict damage not only on the enemy's physical body, but also on their soul, causing harm to both the opponent's body and soul. In the second chest, Long congratulates Lin Yuan for another 50,000 evolution points and a Beast King level secret skill called Nine Transformations of the Beast God Tiger Transformation, 
this being the first volume. Lin Yuan, without hesitation, begins the process of absorbing the knowledge of the skill, with lights enveloping his body during meditation. Some fighting stances begin to form in his mind, and after a few minutes, Lin Yuan celebrates a complete understanding of the skill. Long is extremely pleased and encourages Lin Yuan to test his new power at the back of the cave. Lin Yuan heads to the back of the cave and merges again with the beast soul, feeling safe there as there are no drones to watch him. Long explains that transforming into a tiger for a short period can significantly increase his explosive power, making him like a furious tiger. Lin Yuan undergoes the transformation, displaying some red marks on his body, and performs moves to test the skill. After delivering some strikes to the cave's rocks, Long mentions that, with Lin Yuan's current strength, he could maintain the transformation for about half an hour. Long points out that, compared to the barbarian elephant secret skill, Lin Yuan's skill is somewhat inferior. Long clarifies that this was only the first volume of the tiger transformation, and as Lin Yuan acquired the other parts, his strength would gradually increase. Lin Yuan examines his transformation carefully and expresses eagerness for the next steps in evolution. A few days pass, and Lin Yuan's group remains in the cave. Wang Jin wonders if they are really in a lord-level monster territory since it's been several days without sighting a single monster of that level. He observes that the audience might have gotten bored not seeing them in action, as the drones haven't appeared for some time. Lin Yuan questions if this isn't something positive, as they are out of danger. While Wang Jin agrees, he sighs, commenting that it's less exciting. Suddenly Wang Jin feels a chill, and Lin Yuan asks him why. Wang Jin responds that he doesn't know. Sumu, frightened, points behind and asks Wang Jin to look in that direction. Wang Jin, trembling, turns to see what Sumu is indicating and is faced with a gigantic monster staring directly at him. Wang Jin gets scared and transforms into his beast soul, the egg. The monster looks directly at him and delivers a swipe, throwing Wang Jin who collides against the cave wall, resulting in a small crack in his shell. Sumu is worried about Wang Jin, while Lin Yuan stares at the monster. It starts moving towards Sumu and Lin Yuan, leading both to immediately transform. Sumu creates an ice wall in an attempt to contain the monster, and Lin Yuan takes the opportunity to attack, causing pain to the monster, which then buries itself in the ground. Lin Wen warns that it's an earth dragon and tells everyone to be alert to the ground. Suddenly, an explosion erupts from the ground, launching rocks towards Sumu and Lin Wen. Sumu creates another ice wall to protect them, but the rocks manage to break through, leaving Sumu momentarily stunned. However, Wang Jin quickly rolls in front of Sumu, absorbing all the damage from the rocks. Wang Jin complains that the attacks hurt him a bit. Lin Yuan declares that they need to force the dragon out of the underground. Otherwise, they will be completely vulnerable and unable to attack it. Noticing that he can't even feel the dragon's aura, Lin Yuan speculates that this is because the monster is lord level. Lin Yuan starts running and announces they're going to escape. Wang Jin and Sumu are confused about Lin Yuan's actions, but he states there's no time to explain, just asking them to follow him. Wang Jin comments that the monster is very fast, questioning the effectiveness of fleeing. Lin Yuan turns around and emphasizes that no one said they were going to flee. The monster approaches, and Lin Yuan gets ready opening his mouth and gathering energy. He fires a powerful blast of energy, forcing the monster to emerge from the ground in agony. Once the monster is fully exposed, Lin Yuan instructs Sumu to freeze it quickly. Sumu understands and uses her powers to immobilize the monster, which becomes completely frozen. Lin Yuan runs toward the monster, leaps, and prepares another attack. He lands a powerful blow, causing the monster's mouth to bleed. Holding the monster's severely injured head, Lin Yuan emphasizes that no matter how strong the external defense is, the internal organs are still vulnerable. He opens the monster's mouth, declaring that this is the law of the strongest. Lin Yuan gathers energy in his mouth again and shoots it inside the monster, causing an internal explosion that shatters it from the inside out. Long appears to congratulate Lin Yuan for defeating a lord-level monster, announcing that he has won a platinum chest. Wang Jin and Sumu are surprised to learn that Lin Yuan has the strength to face a lord-level monster alone. After the victory, Lin Yuan is surprised to find that each head of the monster provided a crystal core. He comments that they are worth 20 million, 
and laughs. Wang Jin complains about Lin Yuan's exceptional strength and jokes that he disguises himself as a pig to eat with the tiger. Wang Jin expresses dissatisfaction, considering the situation unfair. Su Mu praises Lin Yuan's consistent strength and highlights that he never hid anything from Wang Jin. However, Wang Jin sighs and agrees with Su Mu, admitting that his hubby is truly the strongest. Su Mu starts chasing Wang Jin, calling him a damn fatty, and questioning if he isn't afraid of dying. Wang Jin runs ahead, stating he doesn't want to die, but live to eat more kebabs. Lin Yuan watches the whole scene while laughing at the situation. Suddenly, Wang Jin stops running when he realizes someone has stolen his skewers. Lin Yuan examines the footprints and concludes they are from monsters. Wang Jin, furious, states that if he catches the thief, he will teach them a lesson. Lin Yuan suggests they follow the footprints, which lead them to a bush near a tree. As they approach, Lin Yuan discovers a little monster finishing eating the meat. The three are intrigued by the identity of the little monster. Suddenly, the little monster fills its cheeks and launches a fireball towards the group. Lin Yuan warns to be careful, pushing Su Mu and Wang Jin aside while dodging the shot, which effortlessly creates a hole in the tree. Lin Yuan looks at the hole and is surprised by the small monster's power. Su Mu screams in desperation for Lin Yuan to be careful. Lin Yuan reaches out towards the little monster, which approaches and sniffs Lin Yuan's hand. Sumu, concerned, watches the interaction between Lin Yuan and the little monster. Lin Yuan touches and caresses the little monster, surprising Sumu. She asks what's happening and how the little monster knows Lin Yuan. The little monster turns to Sumu and Wang Jin with a serious expression, as if wanting to protect Lin Yuan. Sumu comments that the little monster really likes Lin Yuan, while he asks the little monster not to be so rude with his friends. Then, Lin Yuan calls Long and asks if the little monster is some kind of relative of his. Long responds that he has no relation to the little monster and suggests that it was attracted by the radiation present in Lin Yuan's body. Lin Yuan ponders whether the little monster was formed by nuclear radiation and is powerful despite its size. He wonders if the little monster could become dangerous as it grows. Wang Jin interrupts Lin Yuan's thoughts and asks what they should do with the little monster, questioning if Lin Yuan would like to keep it. Lin Yuan asks if a beast soul master would be able to raise a little monster in this way. However, he is not concerned with the answer and expresses his desire to keep the little monster, highlighting their closeness and immense power. Lin Yuan considers it advantageous if the little monster could become a useful ally for them. He wonders if, in the future, it would be useful for humans to create monsters, stating that he would take care of it. It has been seven days since they've been in the mountains, with everyone staying in the cave, including the little monster who happily watches the barbecue being prepared. Sumu praises Wang Jin, mentioning that over the days he has become an excellent grill master, possibly surpassing many renowned chefs. Wang Jin considers it somewhat old-fashioned to be called chef by Sumu. Lin Yuan suggests that it's an easier way to make a living, and points out that there are only three days left until the end of the survival test, wondering if they should hunt some monsters for extra points. Suddenly, a drone reappears, watching them. Lin Yuan feels somewhat uncomfortable with the situation. Sitting next to the little monster, Sumu asks Lin Yuan if it would be okay if the drone filmed the little monster. He replies that he can't hide it, as he intends to adopt the little monster, and it's better that the director and teachers are aware of it from now on. Wang Jin wonders about his father, Wang Ting, and others' reaction upon seeing the little monster. In the university's conference room, everyone watches the scene and is surprised by what they see. The director of Peking University, Jiang Tianqi, questions Wang Ting about why his students are with a monster. Su Dian immediately requests the broadcast be stopped. Wang Ting explains that apparently, the little monster is just a cub close to humans, and he will personally try to persuade Lin Yuan to return it to its proper place. Su Dian points out that the color of the little monster has changed slightly, but it is very similar to Nidhug. Everyone is shocked by the comparison. Wang Ting asks if Su Dian is sure about this, and Su Dian mentions the dragon Nidhug's rebellion that nearly destroyed Yanjing hundreds of years ago. He claims that although he didn't witness the event, as a director, he read a lot about it. 
and the descriptions in the records match exactly with the little monster, except for the color. Zhang Tianqi asks if the dragon wasn't dead hundreds of years ago, and if this meant it had come back to life. He states that they've killed it once, and that if necessary, he's willing to lead against the dragon again. The director of Hiyu University mentions that if Nitug was indeed revived, it wouldn't be a big issue but suggests resolving the situation as soon as possible since the Dragonbone Mountain Range is very close to Yanjing City, and the impact of this is hard to predict. Wang Ting asks Sudian if this was also his thought. Sudian sighs and clarifies that everyone misunderstood him. At no point did he state that Nidhug returned to life, but the crystal core of it, which was never found, seems to have surfaced. This surprises Wang Ting. He asks what Sudian means by crystal core, and if the little monster could be a result of this core. Sudian suggests it's just a guess, but fortunately the baby dragon is young, and is almost impossible to pose any threat to them. He states that the trial can still continue, but for now, it's crucial to keep this a secret, focusing on the live broadcast. Zhang Tianqi mentions that this could be a future disaster and needs to be resolved as quickly as possible. Su Dian informs that Zhao Yun has already reported to the military headquarters to deal with all hidden dangers in the range. Meanwhile, deep in the mountains, Inside a cave filled with scattered bones lies a crystal core on the ground. A monster feeds nearby but senses something, drops its prey and heads towards the crystal core. When the monster finds it, something happens, making it extremely nervous. It shows anger, opens its mouth and something comes out of it, traveling through the forest and reaching other monsters nearby. Wang Jin wakes up frightened, still dark around him. He thinks he might be dreaming, but Lin Yuan is also awake and notes that dawn has broken, though there's a thick black fog around. Sumu comments that the fog doesn't seem natural. Wang Jin speculates it could be a skill of a lord-level monster, given the fog's extent. Lin Yuan realizes his watch is useless, concluding that the fog interferes with the magnetic field, leaving them stranded without communication. Sumu is concerned about the situation, considering the difficulty of communicating with the teachers, as this would also affect the drones. The little monster approaches Lin Yuan, and he calms it down, assuring that the fog will soon pass and there's no danger. Lin Yuan instructs the little monster to behave and stay there while he investigates the area. In another cave deep in the mountains, the rest of Lin Yuan's team is gathered around a bonfire. Ching Nan wonders what's happening, and if anyone has managed to contact the school. Song Lan checks the watches and confirms the lack of contact. Ching Nun considers the possibility of staying there to die but reflects on the school's reaction when they realize the lack of contact. Wang Lin points out that something strange has been happening since the beginning of the fog, with more frequent encounters with lord-level monsters. Song Lan expresses concern for Chu Tiani and Lin Yuan, as neither of them has been found. Wu Xuan states that Chu Tiani is strong, but doesn't understand why Wang Lin is worried about Lin Yuan, calling him a loser. Wu Xuan suggests that Lin Yuan might have been eliminated a long time ago, and even if he hasn't, he probably wouldn't have the audacity to explore deep into the mountains. Song Lan scolds Wu Xuan, asking why he insists on belittling others, considering they are classmates and team members. Wu Xuan asks if someone so weak is qualified to be his teammate. Wang Lin, hearing this, stands up and declares that he is also a loser so he is not worthy of staying on the same team as Wu Xuan. He tells Wu Xuan that he will leave him alone. Song Lan, standing up, states that they have different plans. Ching Nan questions Wang Lin's sanity in wanting to leave the team at this moment, not understanding how dangerous the fog might be. Yuan Li asks for calm and suggests that Wang Lin and Song Lan reconsider, highlighting that Wu Xuan's presence doesn't require the two to leave the team. Wu Xuan states that he didn't say anything wrong, just pointing out that the E-Rank Beast Soul Masters were selected through the back door. He emphasizes that he will not be intimidated by anyone, and suggests that if Wang Lin and Song Lan want to leave, they can do so. Ching Nan looks displeased at Wu Xuan, thinking that the encounters with Lord-level monsters are all due to Song Lan's amplification effect. If Song Lan leaves, the fights will be completely different. Ching Nan concludes that it's over and asks what they can do now. Wu Xuan inquires about the meaning of this and questions if they think they can't live without the two. 
Qingnan mentions that without Songlan, it would be very dangerous to face Lord-level monsters again. Wu Xuan considers it a complete waste, as he can't find anyone to replace. Yuan Li and Qing Nan sigh at Wu Xuan's response. Meanwhile, everything unfolds inside the cave. Wang Lin and Song Lan are already outside. Wang Lin asks why Song Lan accompanied him. Song Lan responds that he is a friend of Lin Yuan and wouldn't accept what Wu Xuan was saying. Wang Lin scratches his head and questions if Lin Yuan could have been really eliminated. Song Lan assures that Lin Yuan is fine, as he is very strong. He emphasizes that he believes Su Mu and Wang Jin are with Lin Yuan. Wang Lin agrees with Song Lan, stating that he is correct. In the university conference room, a soldier approaches the directors informing that the investigation result of the fog is ready. The man explains to Su Dian that the fog can interfere with the magnetic field, affecting the operation of any electronic equipment. He adds that they detected a large number of monsters moving in the fog, including several Lord-level monsters with unknown destinations. Logically, there shouldn't be so many Lord-level monsters in a single arena. The military speculates that these monsters may have received instructions from a higher-level monster. In other words, there is suspicion that there might be a Beast King-level monster deep in the mountains. Wang Ting asks if the soldier is suggesting that the fog was caused by a Beast King-level monster. The soldier confirms, but due to the complexity of the situation, it's impossible to determine precisely. However, the range of the Black Fog is limited to the depths of the Dragonbone Mountains. The soldier adds that security officers have entered the Black Fog to search for students, assuring the directors that they need not worry. The military hopes the school will send two Beast King-level experts as representatives to the mountains to investigate. If they encounter a Beast King-level monster, they must be prepared to kill it immediately. Su Dian and Wang Ting stand up, stating that they themselves will go to the mountains. Zhang Tianqi expresses that he sees no need for both directors to go, noting that it's understandable for Wang Ting to go since his son Wang Jin is there. However, Zhang Tianqi questions the necessity for Su Dian to go. Wang Ting replies that his daughter Sumu is also inside. Su Dian, with a determined look, promises that he will not allow anything to threaten his daughter's life. Meanwhile, in the depths of the mountains, Lin Yuan had already defeated the third monster. As Lin Yuan wondered if it was another Lord-level monster, the little monster was frolicking around. Wang Jin, watching the little monster play, thinks it's quite carefree. Sumu, laughing behind, mocks Wang Jin, saying that the little monster played a better role than Wang Jin during the fight. As soon as the monster Lin Yuan defeated turned into a crystal core, the little monster stared at the crystal core, fascinated by its glow. Suddenly, the little monster tries to eat the crystal, and Lin Yuan is completely scared by this, thinking that the crystal core of a lord-level monster is worth tens of millions. Lin Yuan takes the crystal from the little monster and tells him that from now on, he cannot go around eating just anything. Suddenly, Lin Yuan and Wang Jin sense something and think it might be another wave of monsters coming. Wang Jin is worried, as they have already spent a lot of energy in the previous fights. Lin Yuan, with a serious look, calls Long and asks him to use all his evolution points. Long appears smiling and says he will do it immediately. Lin Yuan merges with his beast, and now his attributes are Mid 9 star beast king level, height of 45 meters, weight of 23,700 kilograms, bite attack and claw attack, white and warm light ability level, A, atomic breath level, S, Weapon of the Beast God Blue Thunderclaws Level, General of Beasts, Black Scale Armor, Level Beast Commander, Energy Storage Crystal Level Beast King, Wind Spirit, Rune Level Beast King, Remaining Evolution Point Zero. Wang Jin looks at Lin Yuan, now in beast form, and asks why it seems Lin Yuan got stronger again. Lin Yuan just smiles, suddenly a shadow passes close to Sumu, who screams for Lin Yuan to be careful. As soon as Lin Yuan looks at the monster that just arrived, he smiles and says he knew it was just by the sound. The first beast that appeared was Wang Lin. Su Mu and Wang Jin are surprised, and soon after Wang Lin, Song Lan appears merged with his beast as well. Wang Jin is extremely happy with all this, but Wang Lin says it's not time to talk, as they were being followed by a lord-level monster. Suddenly, the monster appears flying near them and attacks them with its wind power, creating a tornado that hits the three. 
But Lin Yuan charges against the monster, and with just one strike, destroys one of its heads. Making the monster scream in pain, Wang Lin seeing this thinks that in a few days, Lin Yuan became extremely stronger than before. This is why Song Lan believes so much in Lin Yuan. As soon as Wang Lin sees the little monster running towards the monster that Lin Yuan hit and knocked down, he wonders who this little guy is. The little monster approaches the fallen lord level monster and looks directly into the monster's eyes which looks back. Then, the little monster launches a gigantic and monstrous fire attack, pulverizing the fallen monster. As soon as the little monster finishes destroying the monster, it runs back to Lin Yuan, who looks at the little monster proudly. Lin Yuan puts his hand near the little monster and asks for it to return the little monster. A bit scared, the little monster spits out a crystal core that was in its mouth. Lin Yuan pets the little monster and says it's a good boy and is learning. Lin Yuan thinks he cannot spoil the little monster too much, as it could be too dangerous. Lin Yuan needs to train it to always obey his commands. After the little monster does exactly what Lin Yuan asked, Lin Yuan throws some food to the little monster, which eats happily. Wang Lin seeing this, is amazed, asking if this young dragon was raised by Lin Yuan. Wang Jin explains that Lin Yuan actually adopted the little monster because, as shown a little while ago, its destructive power is terrifying. Sumu interrupts the conversation and asks Wang Lin how they managed to get there with just the two of them. Wang Lin responds that it's a bit complicated to explain right now. Then, the five head back to the cave and sit down in front of the bonfire. After Wang Lin explains what happened, Wang Jin becomes a bit nervous because only Wu Xuan dared to look down on Lin Yuan, even knowing he couldn't touch Lin Yuan in a real fight. Sumu asks Song Lan about the situation from where he came. Song Lan says that there are monsters everywhere. The monster outbreak is getting bigger and bigger. Lin Yuan notices something and says, here we go again. Seconds later, the ground beneath them begins to crack, and a monster emerges from beneath their feet. Wang Jin immediately merges with his great beast soul, the Super Egg. Wang Lin, while smiling, says that Wang Jin's beast soul is very special. Wang Jin turns around angrily and says that Wang Lin was smiling, but it was Wang Jin who saved his life. Suddenly, monsters start appearing from all directions, leaving the five cornered in the center of the cave. Then, all of them merge with their beast souls one after the other, and a fierce battle begins, the five against a tide of monsters. Everyone begins to fight and use the full extent of their powers to try to contain the situation. Some monsters try to take Lin Yuan by surprise from behind, but Lin Yuan, irritated by all this, raises his hand, saying that's enough. Lin Yuan goes on a rampage in front of him. As Lin Yuan kills the monsters, he starts to feel very good about all this, saying it feels like he's tearing apart pieces of meat and blood, which is very exciting. Lin Yuan was crushing everything and everyone in his path without the slightest mercy. Sumu, looking at Lin Yuan, begins to admire him, thinking that with every passing second, Lin Yuan gets stronger and stronger. A larger and stronger monster with two heads runs towards Lin Yuan to catch him off guard. But Lin Yuan quickly turns around and, with his nuclear attack, completely destroys the monster, leaving nothing behind. As Lin Yuan was unleashing his power, he thought that he should just kill everything and everyone until the last monster of this forest. The monster hit by his power agonizes as it burns in the radiation. Lin Yuan thinks that at this moment, his pleasure is at its peak, his eyes burning with excitement. And finally, Lin Yuan remembers that he was an assassin and felt pleasure in it, thinking that this is what he needs, simply to kill. Smoke covers the body of Lin Yuan's beast, and on the ground, various burned and destroyed bodies. The remaining monsters that were still alive hear a powerful sound. Even Lin Yuan is startled by the sound and wonders what it could be. The remaining monsters start to run desperately, leaving Lin Yuan not understanding the reason or what made all the monsters run away from there. Sumu looks up at the sky and notices something different. Sumu asks why there are two suns in the middle of the black fog. Everyone looks up to see what Sumu is talking about. As soon as Lin Yuan looks up, he realizes that they are not two suns, but the eyes of a monster. Wang Lin is scared by this, and asks, what kind of monster could be so big? Suddenly, a gigantic dragon appears before them. Wang Lin tells Lin Yuan that they need to run away from there as fast as possible. But Lin Yuan says that this monster is a beast king level, 
and it's not possible for them to just run away. Song Lan says that the dragon is looking directly at Lin Yuan. Lin Yuan replies that it's for a simple reason and shows the little monster. Lin Yuan emphasizes that no matter what happens or who they are fighting against, the only thing they must do at the moment is to fight against the odds. The monster begins to suck the fog into itself more and more. Wang Lin is scared that all the fog that was in the forest was being sucked in by the monster. As soon as the monster finishes sucking the fog, it charges towards everyone there. Lin Yuan steps forward, gathers his nuclear energy, and launches a powerful nuclear energy blast against the mist thrown by the monster. Lin Yuan thinks that this is the atomic breath that mobilizes all the energy from the stored energy crystal, capable of instantly killing a lord-level monster. Then, Lin Yuan thinks this might hold off the monster for a short period. The two powers collide in the air, and Lin Yuan realizes he won't be able to withstand this power. So, he stops his atomic breath. At the moment, everyone is defenseless as the attack from the great monster is coming towards them. The little monster, seeing this, fills with courage to protect Lin Yuan and prepares to attack, releasing a gigantic fireball. Sumu, seeing this, immediately prepares to help the little monster protect everyone. Lin Yuan takes advantage and comes back with his nuclear energy attack, combining the three attacks at the same time. The three attacks collide with the great attack from the Beast King and cause an explosion in the air. Lin Yuan begins to get excited again seeing this. The area where they were fighting is completely destroyed by the intense fight. The Beast King opens its mouth to try to swallow the little monster. But the little monster quickly dodges the Beast King's bite and takes the opportunity to attack again with its fireball, hitting the Beast King's head directly, making the Beast King bleed and scream in pain. The Beast King uses its tongues to try to catch the little monster. Lin Yuan, seeing this, tells Wang Lin that he and the others should leave. Wang Lin asks Lin Yuan if he intends to face the Beast King alone. Meanwhile, the Beast King manages to catch the little monster, who looks scared at Lin Yuan. Lin Yuan, seeing this, begins to clench his fists, saying he can't let it go because he promised to protect the little monster from everything and everyone. And seeing this, the little monster won't be able to escape on its own. Lin Yuan's eyes were burning with flames as he said this. His killer instincts were bubbling inside him. Sumu looks at Lin Yuan and says that, regardless of the decision Lin Yuan makes, she will support him. Wang Lin says that because of Lin Yuan, everyone there has become stronger and friends. Song Lan says that this is the first time he will have the chance to fight against a beast king, and that means his life won't be in vain. Wang Jin says his father is the director of Mortemun University so Wang Jin cannot disgrace him. Even if they die there, his father will avenge them. Lin Yuan, seeing this, gets excited, and without wasting time, takes the lead and launches another attack against the monster, thus starting the battle of their lives. Song Lan stays close to Lin Yuan to support him and increase his attack power. Lin Yuan's attack cuts off the monster's tongues that were holding the little monster. Wang Lin leaps furiously, attacking the monster and making the Beast King bleed again. The Beast King manages to hit everyone at the same time, but Lin Yuan, seeing his friends and those he loves being threatened, grabs his nuclear generator in his hand and thinks that for a long time in his life, he was very weak, and because of that, everything he loved was taken from him. Lin Yuan thinks that he trained desperately for the day to come when he could protect those he loves, and no one would take anything from him anymore, no matter if this monster is a human or a god. Lin Yuan swallows the nuclear generator and begins to glow intensely, leaving everyone completely astonished by the immense strength shown by Lin Yuan as Lin Yuan was getting bigger. His coloration began to turn red. Lin Yuan rises incredibly strong. Lin Yuan looks into the eyes of the Beast King and says, Today I myself will show what a true god is like. One of us will not leave this. Lin Yuan was completely red and red energy was emanating from his body as if it were blood. He begins to accumulate energy in his mouth, shocking his companions with the monstrous strength Lin Yuan was displaying at that moment. It was something they had never seen before. Lin Yuan had accumulated so much energy that his power shone like the sun, so bright. This was Lin Yuan's final trump card. Then he launches himself towards the monster in front of him. The monster seeing this widens its eye as it was a frightening amount of energy coming its way. 
Lin Yuan manages to hit right in the monster's chest, with no chance of defense. As soon as the attack ends, the monster's chest had a hole and was raw, with smoke still coming from the spot hit by Lin Yuan. The monster rises again and roars very loudly, while the hole in its chest pulsated. Wang Lin tells Song Lan that it is impossible for them to do anything in a fight at this level, where Lin Yuan is now. Song Lan asks Wang Lin to retreat first and not interfere in the fight. Song Lan says that perhaps he can help Lin Yuan with his support power. Song Lan begins to concentrate and use his powers to assist Lin Yuan. As soon as Song Lan accumulates enough energy, he sends this helping energy to Lin Yuan, who, once received, feels a bit better, and thanks Song Lan for the help. The monster wastes no time and launches its attack again towards Song Lan, as it noticed Song Lan was assisting Lin Yuan. But before the attack could hit Song Lan, with a very quick movement, Lin Yuan steps in front of the attack and takes it as if it were nothing. After receiving the attack, Lin Yuan, standing still, looks seriously at the monster and says that if it touches a finger on one of his partners, there will be nothing left of its body to tell the story. Song Lan, seeing this, wonders what Lin Yuan's strength level is at this moment. Could it be a nine-star lord level, or even a beast king? Lin Yuan goes straight for the monster, in a brawl, and lands a hit that leaves the monster somewhat dazed. Lin Yuan takes advantage and turns the monster over and holds it by the head with one hand while the other hand, flaming, comes down to hit it. But the monster recovers and bites one of Lin Yuan's arms, but Lin Yuan doesn't lose his cool and starts to gather energy again in his mouth. The monster, seeing this again, gets scared because it remembered the last time this happened. It almost ended up dead. The monster quickly releases Lin Yuan's arm and jumps back, starting to gather its dark energy in its mouth. Both Lin Yuan and the monster fire their powers together, which collide in the air and start a contest to see which power is stronger. A very bright light begins in the center of the powers, causing Sumu to cover her face, as the brightness was extremely strong. As soon as Sumu looks again, she sees the monster screaming in pain, wrapped in a strong red energy, and Lin Yuan standing, looking at all of this. Sumu seeing this, begins to wonder if Lin Yuan had really won this fight. But suddenly, Sumu's eyes widen, shocked by what she was seeing in front of her. The monster, which was previously screaming in pain from the burns made by Lin Yuan's attack, had gone silent. Lin Yuan, seeing this, doesn't quite understand and starts to realize that the monster was beginning to heal from all the injuries caused in the previous fight. Lin Yuan thinks he can't wait any longer and let the monster recover 100%. Then, the core in his chest begins to glow intensely, and Lin Yuan releases another attack against the monster, causing a huge explosion, covering the entire area with a strong smoke. Song Lan shouts Lin Yuan's name, as he couldn't see where Lin Yuan was. As soon as Song Lan finds Lin Yuan, he rushes to him and says that this monster was not yet at the Beast King level, and apparently, it's absorbing the radiation here and has started to evolve into the Beast King level now. Song Lan emphasizes that they should take advantage of this time and flee from there as quickly as possible. Lin Yuan is surprised by this news and thinks that if the power the monster showed was just the peak of a nine-star lord, then once it ascended to the Beast King level, it would be very complicated for everyone there. Then, everyone starts to move away from the place, but as they were running, Lin Yuan hears a noise and turns around to see that the cocoon that was holding the monster had started to crack. Lin Yuan doesn't understand how this transformation happened so quickly. The entire cocoon starts to crack, and a strong glow begins to come out from inside. Lin Yuan decides to fight again, saying it's too late. However, this time, Lin Yuan warns everyone to be as careful as possible, as the fight now is at a completely different level from anything they could imagine. While Lin Yuan was speaking, the monster finally comes out of the cocoon and jumps out quickly. Its claws are larger, the monster now has wings, its scales shining. But amidst all this, Lin Yuan feels that the monster's aura is still not stable. Lin Yuan guesses this is due to the rushed evolution, and apparently its injuries from the past fight also haven't fully healed. As soon as Lin Yuan looks up and sees the monster, he thinks that even with all this, it's still a beast king. So its strength cannot be underestimated in any way. The monster starts to gather its dark energy again in its mouth and fires several balls of this energy towards them. Lin Yuan uses his body as a shield and protects everyone there. But this causes Lin Yuan a lot of pain and makes him spit blood. 
Lin Yuan stops and thinks that indeed the strength level of a beast king is not something to joke about. Song Lan runs up to Lin Yuan, but Lin Yuan says it's okay because he wouldn't let anyone there die like that. But suddenly, on Lin Yuan's shoulder, a thing appears. It's the little monster, furious with everything that has been happening. The monster stops and looks at the little monster. Lin Yuan also looks at it and thinks that even if Lin Yuan had raised it all this time, it wasn't in vain. So, the little monster should flee and survive, not die there with him. Lin Yuan says he would use all the rest of his power to use his red lotus pulse again, even if it doesn't kill the monster, but it would give them time to get out of there. Sumu starts to cry and screams for Lin Yuan not to do it. Wang Lin tries to stop Lin Yuan, while Lin Yuan accumulates his energy in his mouth, began to think that he became friends with them and remembered each one and thought he was happy at that moment. Lin Yuan closes his eyes and says goodbye to everyone there, but out of nowhere, he hears a voice coming from the middle of the dense smoke saying how this monster can be at the Beast King level if it's so weak. Lin Yuan notices this and stops his attack. Everyone there is surprised because they had arrived. Director Wang Ting and Director Su Dian. Wang Jin seeing this is very happy because his father was there. Sumu seeing her father there is surprised because she didn't expect him to come himself. Lin Yuan smiles because the director was there. Then, he returns to his normal form and says to the little monster that they managed to save everyone, but after that, he faints to the ground. The little monster stays by his side with an angry face. The monster, seeing the directors in the air, quickly focuses its gaze on them. Sumu takes advantage of the monster being focused on the directors and comes running calling for Lin Yuan, who is lying on the ground unresponsive. The little monster by his side was sad because Lin Yuan wasn't moving. Wang Jin screams happily upon seeing his father and says that he is there. But Wang Ting, with a somewhat serious expression, says that his son was not able to deal with a little crocodile, much less with his son. Wang Ting. And so, he cannot afford to humiliate him. Wang Jin is shocked to learn that this monster was a baby crocodile. But actually, Wang Ting is impressed with the level this has reached. Wang Ting turns to Su Dian and asks if he wants to defeat the monster or if he should do it himself. Su Dian says that he will do it himself. Su Dian looks at the monster and asks how it dared to put his daughter. Sumu, in danger. For that, it must suffer. Su Dian begins to merge with his beast soul, causing a very bright glow, scaring everyone there even the monster is startled by such strength. Finally, the fusion ends, and Sudian transforms into a red dragon. The monster begins to tremble with fear, feeling Sudian's aura. Yet, the monster does not back down and starts to gather its energy again in its mouth, and fires towards Sudian. But he just looks at it all and thinks he's just going to burn it. The monster's attack was getting closer, but suddenly an explosion occurs, and everyone is blinded by the brightness. Sudian says now it's his turn to play. The monster turns and starts to run away in fear. Su Dian, seeing this, laughs and asks the monster if it really thinks it can run away from there. Then a barrier encloses the monster, leaving it trapped without being able to move. Su Dian prepares his attack, gathering a huge amount of energy. The trapped monster, seeing this, becomes completely desperate. Su Dian unleashes his attack, destroying everything there, defeating the monster with just one blow. Su Dian stands in the air with energy and lightning around his body. Sumu is extremely surprised to see this and thinks that the demonic dragon crocodile of Beast King level was, in fact, so vulnerable. Su Dian, still in dragon form, says this is a red dragon emperor, Su Di. Wang Jin smiles and says that Su Dian is so strong that he could easily be his father. Wang Ting just closes his eyes and says he felt wronged by Wang Jin. This leaves Wang Jin embarrassed and asks when his father had come down there. Wang Ting replies that as soon as he heard him recognize someone else's father. Sumu looks sad, helping Lin Yuan, who was still very tired. Wang Ting nudges Su Dian and says, This is a great opportunity for him to say something, but Su Dian just looks at Sumu and says, The important thing is that she is okay. Wang Ting says, They should thank Lin Yuan, as he was the real hero there, practically standing up to the battle alone. Lin Yuan is slowly recovering. 
The two directors look at this and say that Lin Yuan is really an extraordinary student. He managed to fight on equal terms with a Beast King level monster with an E-rank Beast Soul. Wang Ting agrees and says that clearly Lin Yuan's future will be something no one can imagine as he is extraordinarily talented. But for now, they should just take care of him until he wakes up. A helicopter arrives at the location and two agents descend, thanking Wang Ting and Su Dian for their work. They were saying they would take the students back. At that moment, Su Dian says they would stay there a bit longer to check if there was anything unusual. Inside the helicopter, everyone was there and one of the soldiers was helping Lin Yuan. But suddenly, Wang Lin and Wang Jin get startled by something, and out of nowhere, the little monster jumps into Lin Yuan's lap and lies on his belly. The soldier prepares to attack the little monster, but Wang Jin shouts at the moment, asking the soldier not to do anything, as this little monster was raised by Lin Yuan and poses no risk to them. Director Wang Ting arrives just in time, saying that the little monster is raised by his student Lin Yuan. Wang Jin is surprised to know that his father knew about the little monster. Wang Ting gets annoyed, saying he knew everything, including seeing that Wang Jin spent all the time just eating barbecue, instead of doing something. Wang Ting asks them if they knew about the origin of the little monster. Wang Ting emphasizes that this little monster, notably, was transformed from the crystal core of the Black Dragon Emperor. He is just a baby for now, but he can definitely become the famous Black Dragon Emperor, Nidhogg. Wang Jin, looking at the little monster sleeping with Lin Yuan, asks if he could really be the feared Nidhogg. Wang Ting replies yes. Wang Jin asks what should be done if the little monster really was the reincarnation of Nidhogg. Wang Ting says he can't say anything about it because the decision will only be made after the meeting they will have with all the members together. Song Lan turns to director Wang Ting and says that Wu Xuan, Qingnan, and Yuan Li were still in the forest, separated from them. Wang Ting says he has already sent soldiers to rescue them now that the fog was dispersing and the monster tide was going away, so they would be safe. Su Dian says this fog incident should be kept secret. The soldier present says he understands and will do everything to keep it that way. Meanwhile, in the Dragonbone range, Wu Xuan's entire team was running from just one lord-level monster. Wu Xuan asks why Qingnan doesn't use her roots to trap the monster. Qingnan replies that it's a lord-level monster, it's immune to poison. How can I trap it? If you hadn't forced Songlan and the others to move away? Wu Xuan gets angry and asks if Qingnan was blaming him for that. Qingnan says that, with all the facts he just mentioned, how could he stop this monster alone? Qingnan asks Wu Xuan if he even considered his life or death. Wu Xuan says he is the captain there, so everything he says is what has to be done. Qingnan replies saying that, in fact, their captain is Chu Tiani, and if he were there, they wouldn't have to be running away like this, with their tails between their legs. Yuan Li says that now that they have faced a really strong enemy, they still don't want to listen to these orders. Wu Xuan looks back and asks if he wanted to fight him. The spider attacks with its venom and ends up hitting Qing Nun, who falls to the ground. Wu Xuan smiles at this and says it was God's punishment. God, everyone who opposes him would fare badly for it. Qing Nun was lying on the ground, unable to get up. The monster reaches him. Qing Nun just thinks he would die there, but just as the worst was about to happen, the fog passes and the monster retreats. Yuan Li yells that they were finally saved. Wu Xuan, seeing this, thinks that in the end, Qingnan was saved because the fog dissipated. This means he would return with him to school and, if that happens, clearly the actions before would fall on the director's ears and this could bring great problems. In that case, Wu Xuan thinks the only way is to deal with Qingnan right there. As soon as everyone returns to their human form, Yuan Li and Qing Nun were sitting together, and Wu Xuan was behind them with a knife in his hand, ready to attack them. The clock on Yuan Li's wrist starts working just in time. The clock warns that the distress signal was received, and help is 5,763 meters ahead. Yuan Li thanks, and says he would finally leave this hellish place. This prevents Wu Xuan from attacking them there, as there wouldn't be time. Meanwhile, in the hospital, Lin Yuan wakes up and sees Sumu by his side, all happy that he finally woke up. Sumu says she would get water for Lin Yuan, but Lin Yuan sits up in bed and asks where he was. 
Sumu says, this is the medical room of Yenching University. She says Lin Yuan has been sleeping for three days. Lin Yuan says that's a long time. Sumu says the doctors said Lin Yuan exerted himself so much that he was completely exhausted, both physically and mentally. And it's a big surprise he woke up in three days because he had exerted himself a lot. Lin Yuan thinks it really makes sense. The side effects of entering the red lotus form were much greater than Lin Yuan thought it could be. Lin Yuan asks how the other people were. Sumu says everyone was fine and that they had already started preparing for the new phase that would begin in the arena. Sumu reports that this incident caused several deaths. Only one person from Jinan Best University and one from Huatian Best University survived and consequently dropped out. And because of this, the next stage was postponed by 14 days. Lin Yuan reflects on having faced Beast King level monsters and how the future of many was interrupted there. But, unfortunately, that's the path for a beast soul master. There's nothing to do but to become stronger. Lin Yuan asks Sumu if she knew why that monster was attacking them and if it was really because of the little monster he was with. Sumu says yes and highlights that director Wang Ting mentioned that the little monster is likely the reincarnation of the Black Dragon Emperor Nidhogg. Lin Yuan is surprised and asks how that's possible since Nidhogg was supposed to have been dead for hundreds of years. Sumu says that even after Nidhogg's death, its crystal core was never found by anyone. Lin Yuan pauses to think and says, they've reached the point where Nidhogg's core was somehow transformed into the little monster. Lin Yuan begins to worry about the little monster, asking Sumu what they will do with it. And if there's a possibility of using the little monster as a subject for research. Sumu says she doesn't know what might happen, but director Wang Ting asked for Lin Yuan to speak with him personally, after waking up. Lin Yuan said he would meet the director, but began to think this could mean a farewell between the two. Lin Yuan frowns and says, he definitely won't just stand by waiting for the little monster's death. He'll do something to prevent all this. Lin Yuan, slightly irritated by all this, begins to remove all the medication he was receiving, starts to get up, and asks Sumu to immediately get a medical discharge report for him. Sumu is scared by all this, telling Lin Yuan to calm down since he had just woken up. Lin Yuan looks at Sumu and says, she should know him better than anyone there. He needs to do something to get better faster. After some time, Lin Yuan was in the training room and merges with his beast soul. A system window opens, showing his current status. Giant black lizard beast, weak status during the growth period, duration 127 days. The consumption of evolution points can shorten the remaining time of the weak state. Talent rating, SS level, two star beast king level, height 33 meters, Weight 14,200 kilograms. Attack method. Bite, claw attack. White ability, warm light level. A, atomic breath level. S, red lotus form level. SSS, red lotus pulse level. S, red lotus atomic breath level, SS. Secret ability. Nine transformations of the beast god, tiger transformation domain, kill, prototype field, beast god weapon, blue thunder claw level of the beast commander. Beast king level energy storage crystal. Wind spirit rune level of the beast king, remaining evolution points, 1,237,045. Seeing this, Lin Yuan almost cries out of sorrow, because due to the weak state he is in, he really fell to the two-star beast king level, and his weak state will last 127 days, which is truly regrettable for him. Long tries to cheer Lin Yuan up, saying that at least he already has the domain prototype, and, as he recovers from the weak state, his strength will return to normal. Lin Yuan asks Long how he could resolve this weak state, as he can't wait all this 127 days. Long says Lin Yuan can resolve this using evolution points. Long notes that he did a quick calculation, and Lin Yuan would need approximately 62 and a half million evolution points to solve the problem. Lin Yuan cries upon hearing this, as this amount is very large, enough for him to ascend to the Lord level in one go. But unfortunately the tournament will continue, so he has no choice but to quickly regain his strength. Long and Lin Yuan were looking at the system. Lin Yuan thinks that this red lotus form depends on ingesting a large amount of nuclear energy in a short period of time to help the host forcefully enter the red lotus form. His own form is significantly enhanced. 
Lin Yuan is surprised and realizes that he should have a second micro-nuclear reactor before he can use it. Long says that Lin Yuan is very smart, but he also receives two strong abilities named Red Lotus Pulse and Red Lotus Atomic Breath. These are exclusive abilities of the Red Lotus form. Lin Yuan, with shining eyes, says that he no longer has money, is currently broke, so he cannot negotiate something like this. Long says that this is determined by the system, and there's no need to discuss this with anyone. But fortunately, Lin Yuan still has many lower beast soul crystals to use. Lin Yuan says that's fine. Then he will go back to doing it like the old times, and a pile of lower crystals appears beside him. During the night, someone goes to the director's room and calls him by the door. The director responds that the door is unlocked, so they could enter. Lin Yuan enters and introduces himself, saying, Hello? Director Wang Ting says that he finally appeared, as the director had been waiting for days for this visit. Director Wang Ting tells Lin Yuan he doesn't need to be so formal with him, as this time, he did something that surprised everyone. He alone nearly defeated a Beast King-level monster and still protected all his companions. Lin Yuan says he was forced to give it his all, as the situation was truly desperate, but thank God. The director arrived in time, and Lin Yuan could finally rest. The director asks Lin Yuan how he did that, and Lin Yuan says he was just lucky. The director smiles and says everyone has their secrets, and if Lin Yuan doesn't want to share his, that's fine. The director smiles and asks if Lin Yuan wanted to take another medicinal bath, just for him, as a reward for fighting fearlessly against death and risking his life to save his companions. Lin Yuan is surprised and asks if it would really be just for him. As with this, Lin Yuan could return to his maximum strength, or maybe even surpass it. The director tells Lin Yuan that he doesn't need to be modest now, as Lin Yuan's contribution in this incident was fundamental in saving the lives of other students, and, with that, the Minister of Education gave a subsidy, fully reimbursed the medicinal bath, and also provided a King Beast grade crystal core. This makes Lin Yuan extremely happy. Lin Yuan takes the crystal in his hand and thanks the director for it, but Wang Ting looks into Lin Yuan's eyes and says, he also has reasons to help Lin Yuan so much. The director tells Lin Yuan to recover as quickly as possible and become an absolute god in this competition. With the power that Lin Yuan has been showing, Clearly he is the greatest weapon of the demonic university. Wang Ting cries, saying that unfortunately, after the end of the first trial, their university had been in fourth place among the best. Lin Yuan tells the director to calm down, as this was only temporary. The director looks again at Lin Yuan, and says he went from substitute to the university's greatest asset. The director asks if Lin Yuan could bear such a heavy burden. Lin Yuan responds that being there already shows all his determination, and whatever comes next, he will give his all and do anything. Wang Ting pats Lin Yuan on the back and says he is now very confident. Lin Yuan looks at the director and asks if the little monster really is the reincarnation of the Nidhogg. The director says that after the tests they did on the little monster, the result was 99% similarity to the Nidhogg not to mention that the energy inside the little monster is extremely large. The director emphasizes that if it reaches its final prevalent form, it will become the second Black Dragon Emperor. However, there are still some doubts about this matter. Two days ago, the army wanted to interrogate the students involved, but director Wang Ting did not allow such a thing. Moreover, the director obtained the adoption rights of the cub in the name of the Beast of the Demonic City. In summary, Lin Yuan no longer needs to worry about the little monster's safety. This makes Lin Yuan extremely happy. Lin Yuan thanks director Wang Ting for his kindness. However, Wang Ting holds Lin Yuan back and says he shouldn't thank him yet, as raising monsters is unprecedented, and dragons represent a very great danger. The director emphasizes that he really managed to keep the little monster, but everyone is watching it, so he should be very careful. Lin Yuan says he already knows how to repay this favor, he will show the true strength of a beast of the demonic city and win the championship. Wang Ting smiles, happy, and says that with those words he feels much more at ease. Wang Ting asks why the little monster respects only Lin Yuan. Wang Ting says the little monster is extremely bad with other people. No one dares to get close to him. Lin Yuan smiles a bit and says that maybe they were just alike. Meanwhile, outside, 
Vice Director Xiang Wei was watching all this. A man appears behind him with a completely strange face, saying that it had been a long time since they had seen each other. Xiang Guai says that this man has the nerve to want to meet in this place. The strange man says that if it weren't for Xiang Gui's problems, he wouldn't need to take these risks to meet with Xiang Gui. But Xiang Gui starts to say that the recovery time of the Nidhog is much earlier than expected and that this is no longer his problem. Not to mention that Director Wang Ting and Su Dian have already taken measures related to this. There is nothing Xiang Gui could do. He should just be thankful that no one noticed that all this was caused by one man. The strange man says, it is almost impossible for these idiots to find out that it was something intentional. However, the recovery plan is of great importance and cannot allow mistakes, so we must be more careful in the future. Xiangi says he can't understand why the cult wants so much to revive the Nidhog in the national competition. The strange man says that this plan is not just to revive the Nidhog, the real goal is the competition. After reviving the Nidhog, it would kill all the geniuses of this year and leave them buried in the mountains of dragon bones. This even surprises Xiangi. The strange-faced man says this will become the most sober era in the history of Beast Soul Masters. They want this generation of Beast Soul Masters to create a fault. In the Yanjing Bath Center, Lin Yuan has just arrived, and looking at everything, he thinks to himself that he never imagined returning to such a wonderful place. Thus, he throws some crystals into the water to start preparing it. These crystals he has just thrown are of the Beast King class. Lin Yuan stops and looks at the water, thinking that this bath will indeed be extremely luxurious. He takes off his clothes and begins to enter the water, placing just one of his feet first. He can already feel a majestic and pure force, his body already seems lighter. Long appears and begins to congratulate Lin Yuan several times in a row for absorbing 5,000 points of energy at the Beast King level. Lin Yuan remains focused, absorbing as much energy as he can, and this continues for five days. As soon as these five days pass, Lin Yuan opens his eyes, gets up, and begins to leave the water. As soon as he dresses in his robe, he calls Long and asks to open the system so he can look at his attributes. As soon as it opens, the system shows Beast Soul, Giant Black Lizard, Status, Growth Stage, Talent Rating, Level SS, Beast King level, 9 stars, peak height, 45 meters, weight, 15,600 kilograms, attack method, bite and claw, ability, warm white light level A, atomic breath level S, red lotus form level SSS, red lotus pulse, level S, red lotus atomic breath level SS, secret ability, 9 transformations of the beast god, tiger transformation domain, domain of death, beast god prototype, Weapon, Blue Thunder Beast Commander, Level Claw, Energy Storage Crystal, Beast King, Transformation Point, 20 million, Spirit Rune, Rating, You have successfully embarked on your own path and comprehended the level of the Beast Lord of the Field, Evolved to. Long interrupts and informs that 60 million points were deducted from the evolution points, so that Lin Yuan could relieve himself from the state of weakness. Lin Yuan asks Long if these 20 million points are enough for him to ascend to the Lord level. Long confirms that they are. Lin Yuan sits down again and concentrates, and begins to ask Long to distribute the points according to what he requests. Lin Yuan starts by saying to spend 1 million evolution points to strengthen the toughness of his scales, another million to strengthen the sharpness of his beast claws, another million to improve body shape, and another million to increase the capacity of the atomic reactor. Long interrupts him again and says that Lin Yuan's status has reached the maximum allowed for the 9-star Beast King level, so he needs to surpass the current level first. Lin Yuan looks at Long and asks why he can't ascend to the Lord level, since he is at the maximum. Long thinks for a moment and says that it could possibly be because he doesn't have a deep enough understanding of the area. Lin Yuan asks if there is any solution to this. Long says there are two options for Lin Yuan to choose from. The first is to spend 5 million evolution points, and the second is for him to understand it all on his own, without help. Lin Yuan thinks about it. Spending 5 million evolution points at once is usually not a good choice. But he is not lacking in evolution points now, and the realm of perception is the key to reaching the Lord level. Lin Yuan asks to spend the 5 million evolution points and enter the secret realm. Long is happy. 
claps his hands and agrees. Long approaches and touches Lin Yuan's head, saying that five million points have been spent, and an exclusive secret realm has been opened for him. The secret realm of killing. Long wishes Lin Yuan good luck, who falls to the ground with his body trembling. Suddenly he begins to be sucked into a hole and thrown into another dimension. He gets up, takes off his robe, and starts to walk. The realm warns that his senses of sight, hearing, touch, and pain have been completely restored. Additionally, Lin Yuan's soul strength has been strengthened to help him improve his understanding. Lin Yuan starts to observe his surroundings and thinks that the sensation is the same as the simulated battlefield during the previous exam. He wonders if this can really improve his understanding. Suddenly he hears a noise and starts looking around again to see where it came from. Suddenly, several huge monsters appear by his side. One of the monsters jumps to attack, but Lin Yuan remains still, just looking at the monster. In the blink of an eye, he merges with his beast soul. Lin Yuan thinks that the secret realm is called the Realm of Killing, so he was going to do exactly what the name said and create a great slaughter. Lin Yuan starts to attack the monsters wildly, tearing them into several pieces. One of the monsters tries to attack him from behind, but it causes no damage. Quickly, Lin Yuan finds himself surrounded by several monsters attacking him at the same time. Lin Yuan starts to get irritated and thinks that if the monsters really want to die so much, then he would fulfill that wish for them. Lin Yuan releases a strong blast with his energy, throwing the monsters in all directions. He starts to control the direction of his shot, hitting one by one, pulverizing all the monsters that his power touches. At that moment, his killer instinct starts to take over him again, and he starts to think that killing, destruction, will dominate everything. His ease burn with fire as he looks at the burning bodies of the monsters. He is enjoying this and thinks that killing is the right thing to do, this is the way to kill. He wonders if he can be like the demon dragon crocodile he faced in the forest. The smell of blood in the air urges him to want more. He thought he could use his own territory to suppress the enemy's strength. Another monster appears in front of him. Lin Yuan stares at the monster. He lifts his body, and his murderous aura starts to approach the monster and travel around the monster's body. The monster starts to tremble. Lin Yuan wants to see the monster trembling in fear just with his killer intent. He observes and thinks that, although he cannot be suppressed with strength like the demon dragon crocodile, from a spiritual level, Lin Yuan decides to call this killer, Aura, the power to kill. Several other monsters start to come towards Lin Yuan, who is surrounded by his power to kill. He looks at them all and thinks that if just his aura is not enough for him to use everything in the field, he could always resort to the old force. Lin Yuan lifts his paw and prepares to attack. The monster tries to bite him, but Lin Yuan hits its paw on the monster and, with his terrifying strength, completely destroys the monster's body. Lin Yuan thinks that, as long as the battlefield is filled with deaths, he will always be stronger and with more possibilities. Half an hour later, several bodies of monsters were on the ground. Lin Yuan was enveloped in smoke. He screams, his body was with the blood of enemies, his power to kill surrounded his whole body. Another horde of monsters starts to approach. Lin Yuan thinks this is already the fourth wave of red-scaled beasts, and the strength of the red-scaled beasts has also been upgraded to the Lord level. Although there is a killing field, the problem is that the number of red-scaled beasts is very large, and they are still at the Lord level. Lin Yuan thinks that with his current strength, it is a little inadequate to fight against this number of Lord-level monsters, but as soon as the monsters get close to Lin Yuan, they stop and do not attack, just staring. This makes Lin Yuan think that, as much as he wants to continue, his goal seems to have been achieved. The five million evolution points were well spent. Suddenly, Lin Yuan returns to his human form. Long appears and congratulates him for advancing to the Lord level. Long points out that Lin Yuan created the two abilities, Death Shock and Killing Blood Armor in the Secret Realm, and the system has already fully incorporated them. Lin Yuan is happy with his result, but still not satisfied. He wants to experience the killing of the Secret Realm again. Suddenly, Lin Yuan feels something and turns quickly, screaming. It was just Boss Huang who was carrying Lin Yuan's food. He was trembling completely because he felt something strange in Lin Yuan. 
Huang apologizes for arriving unannounced. He then begins to say that he just wanted to come down to bring food to Lin Yuan. He had seen Lin Yuan training earlier, so he didn't want to disturb him. Lin Yuan smiles and thanks him for the food. He asks Huang to help him find a bathroom so he can take a shower and leave. Huang agrees, but inside, Huang is terrified. He wonders if Lin Yuan is really an ordinary student, as he feels like he is in front of a killer. Such a terrifying aura came from Lin Yuan's body. After a while, Lin Yuan arrives in his hotel room and finds Wang Jin on the computer. Wang Jin asks Lin Yuan how the medicinal bath was. Lin Yuan replies that it was perfect, he almost completely recovered and really needs to thank director Wang Ting for it. Wang Jin says that his father really had great faith and hope in Lin Yuan's strength. Lin Yuan looks at the computer screen and asks what Wang Jin was doing, which was so focused. He replies that he was checking the new arena rules. The arena competition is divided into three stages. In short, ten teams draw to compete in pairs. The winning team goes to Group A, and the losing team by seven goes to Group B. Let Group B play one more round. The school with the highest score will enter Group A. In the first stage, ten schools had five wins and one loss, and four losses, five wins and five losses. In the second stage, first, the first in score, two wins and two losses, four schools. In the third stage, defeated two of the last four champion institutes. Wang Jin says that the six teams in Group A were drawn and competed in pairs, and the three winning teams advanced directly to the final round. The four teams in Group B also compete in pairs, and the two winning teams will compete again in the end. The only team that wins Group B will advance to the final. Finally, three teams from Group A and one team from Group B compete for first place. That is, if you win in the group competition and enter the winning Group A, you can advance to the final round without winning again. On the other hand, if you lose to the loser of Group B, you will have to fight until you reach the final. Wang Jin sighs and says that currently they are in fourth place in points, and the probability of being promoted to Group A is not very high. If, by chance, they enter the losing group, the pressure will be a bit high. But if they can't reach the final, it will be very embarrassing. When they were trapped by the Black Fog, they killed so many monsters and they were not counted in the points. This was really a big loss for them. Lin Yuan smiles and says that no matter, this arena competition is the chance for them to turn things around. Wang Jin smiles, but asks Lin Yuan if he knows who they will get. As soon as Wang Jin says the name, Lin Yuan is impressed and asks if they wouldn't face the Yanjing Beast in the first round. Wang Jin starts to say that this is not the case. The one they got was Jinghang Best University, and this time they were in third place in survival battle points not to mention how impressive the director was. This almost made director Wang Ting furious to death. Lin Yuan starts to remember the boy. His name is Yan Tong. Suddenly, Lin Yuan receives a message on his cell phone from Zhao Shan, saying that at two in the afternoon, they would attend a meeting with Wang Jin in the hotel conference room. In the conference room, everyone was sitting around the table. Lin Yuan and Wang Jin arrive. Lin Yuan smiles and apologizes for the delay. Zhao Shan says that's no problem, and asks them to sit down. Zhao Shan looks at Lin Yuan and thinks that just a few days have passed and he is already at the Lord level. Lin Yuan takes a chair to sit down, and Wu Xuan says that some people are so insensitive that they lowered the school's ranking so much, and yet still had the courage to come to the meeting. Lin Yuan smiles and turns to Wu Xuan and says that, from what he said, he must have contributed a lot to the school's points. So how many Lord level monsters has he killed? This makes Wu Xuan nervous. He replies that he definitely did much better than Lin Yuan. Then, Lin Yuan sits down and says that, anyway, he was just a substitute, while Wu Xuan was the vice captain, which means he was stronger, right? Shang Gui interrupts the two and starts to say that everyone was already there, so they should start the meeting. The director starts the meeting by saying that everyone must already know that the first opponent they would face was Jing Heng. So he passes the word to his son, Wang Jin, to analyze the specific situation of the Beijing Hangzhou beast. Wang Jin, a little discouraged, thinks that everything involving information is left to him by his father. Wang Jin starts to say that there are two players on the Hangzhou representative team that deserve special attention. One of them is Fang Qi. This is the vice captain of the Jinghang representative team. 
Fang Qi is the new student of the Beijing Beast. His beast soul is the Red Flame Giant Monkey. He is an offensive beast soul and has extremely strong offensive capabilities. He is a seven-star yet-to-be-determined beast king. This guy fought against Jushan, the captain of the Xuchuan Best, and although he lost in the end, his current strength has not been confirmed yet. Wang Jin smiles and says that, as the opponent is the vice captain of Jing Hong, why not send their university's vice captain to fight against Fang Qi? Wang Jin looks at Wu Xuan and asks if he has the courage. Wu Xuan shouts that there is no need to worry, because if he really knows him, he will surely fight. Wu Xuan thinks that Wang Jin did this on purpose, as he knew that Wu Xuan had previously lost to Zhu Shan. Song Lan says that, according to the format of the arena competition, it is not easy for the two to fight precisely. Wang Jin points out that this is exactly why they need to study everything and create tactics and make the battle order as favorable as possible for them. Lin Yuan asks if the order of the two sides would not be chosen at the time. Wang Jin says that, in fact, no. The order of the first five players who can compete in the arena, competition must be presented before the start of the competition. Only the last five players can adapt to the situation according to the situation. Lin Yuan is not very pleased with this and says that this is really a tactic. Wang Jin takes his control and continues the explanation, saying that the next is the captain of the Beijing Beast Troop, Yan Tong. Everyone looks at the television. Wang Jin continues saying that Yan Tong, the team captain, is a different beast soul, known as Word Beast, which is a special type of beast soul. His abilities are speech spell and true word creation, his ranked strength is classified as Lord Level. However, it is quite suspicious. Wu Xuan laughs and says that if these are the pieces of information Wang Jin collected, it's worthless, as there is nothing useful there. Wang Jin does not like this comment and asks what would really need to be something useful. Should he find out their birthdays and horoscopes? Wu Xuan starts to mock Wang Jin, saying that according to the information passed by him, Yan Tong is a Lord Level. However, this is impossible. A soul master of only 14 years being a lord level soul master, no matter what Wang Jin thinks and talks about it, it can't be true. Wang Jin turns his face and says that if Wu Xuan is not able to do something similar, it does not mean that other people can't. Wang Jin says that words are not enough, so he would show some combat scenes of Yan Tong. After Yan Tong turns on the television, we see Yan Tong walking alone through the open field as if he had nothing to worry about. Suddenly, an explosion happens in front of him. Lin Yuan already realizes that it is a two-headed earth dragon. Yan Tong looks at his lollipop and thinks that it will be wasted again. The monster comes out of the ground right in front of him. Yan Tong throws his lollipop away. The monster prepares to attack. Yan Tong begins to merge with his beast soul and quickly takes its form. Lin Yuan, watching this, thinks that according to what Wang Jin said, his beast soul has two special abilities. Words can be followed, and the mantra can create things. Lin Yuan is eager to see how they actually work. The monster attacks, hitting its tail on the ground and throwing rocks everywhere. Yan Tong remains calm, even with several rocks flying in his direction. Suddenly, a wave of energy begins to circulate his body, stopping all the rocks. The monster and Yan Tong stare at each other. Yan Tong begins to use his powers, and words start to fly by his side with enormous intensity. These words start to move towards the monster and bind its entire body. The monster begins to scream and try to escape. Yan Tong just tells the monster not to move. The monster stops. Two huge swords appear in front of him. Yan Tong orders the swords to cut. In seconds, the swords cut off both heads of the monster at once. Yan Tong returns to his human form, opens another lollipop and continues walking normally while the monster's body falls to the ground. After that, Wang Jin asks who in the room would still doubt Yan Tong's strength. Everyone remains silent. Wu Xuan, after seeing Yan Tong's strength, begins to tremble. Chu Tianyi, seeing this, becomes a little apprehensive. Lin Yuan does not show fear. He is just thoughtful. Wang Jin, seeing this, is scared, because Lin Yuan had fought against the dragon crocodile without showing any fear. How could he be finding this difficult? Suddenly, Lin Yuan says that Yan Tong left without taking the monster's core. Wang Jin is impressed that Lin Yuan, after seeing all that strength, only paid attention to that. 
Director Wang Ting asks Chu Tianyi how he feels after watching the video. Chu Tianyi responds very calmly that Yan Tong is indeed very strong, probably at the Lord level, but he can still fight against Yan Tong. After hearing this, Wang Ting smiles and says that this is really the style of his students. If Chu Tianyi is so confident, then Wang Ting says he would remove him from the list of five people to ensure that he can really face Yan Tong. Chu Tianyi remains very serious and thanks the director for allowing this to happen. Director Wang Ting thinks that if Chu Tianyi really defeats Yan Tong, they would have won half the battle, but even if Chu Tianyi loses, he still had his biggest trump card, Lin Yuan. After half an hour of meeting, Wang Ting smiles and says that this is what would be decided. The first to fight would be Wu Xuan, the second Yuan Li, the third Qingnan, the fourth Shen Chang, fifth Su Mu. Wang Ting emphasizes that this arena competition is a critical moment for them to show their talents, so everyone must give their best. Everyone shouts and agrees with this. After a few days at 10 o'clock in the morning, the arena competition officially opens. Wang Jin in the audience complains that they do not have a good view as they were placed in the fourth row and not in the first row. Song Lan says that unfortunately, there is nothing they can do about it. As the order of appearance in the arena is determined by the ranking of the main schools in the survival battle, Wu Xuan intervenes and says they know very well who did this to them, but Chu Tianyi says that doesn't matter. Wu Xuan should shut up and stop talking nonsense and just recover those points in the arena. Wang Jin turns to Lin Yuan and asks if all the monsters that Lin Yuan had killed in the fog were worth points, they would be in first place, right? Lin Yuan thinks a little about it and says that probably wouldn't work either. As they can see, Yan Jing leads by a good number of points. Wang Jin says that Dragon Crocodile should be worth at least a hundred points. Lin Yuan turns and says that, first of all, they did not kill the monster, and secondly, the education department asked them not to do anything about it let alone bring it up. Even though Lin Yuan emphasizes that, even if he could, he wouldn't want to lose the compensation from the education department. The announcements begin in the arena, asking everyone to welcome all the leaders, teachers, and students to the second arena competition of the National Freshman Contest. The presenter says he is also very happy to witness the confrontation between all the geniuses of this generation. He begins to invite the competing teams of the first round, the representative team of the Haiyu Beast and the representative team of the Yanjing Beast. Wang Jin says there is a one in nine chance of Haiyu hitting it, but there really is no one who can do it. Song Lan says that fortunately, they can also take this opportunity to see what the strength of Yanjing is. Lin Yuan says that with the strength of Haiyu, he fears that it will not be able to force anything much greater than Yanjing. Wang Jin points out that although Haiyu's reputation is not bad, the difference between them and Yanjing is very large. The presenter invites the first competitor from the Yanjing team and the Haiyu team to enter. Three guys enter the arena. Lin Yuan recognizes them and asks Sumu if these were the guys who had attacked her before. Sumu with an angry face says, Yes, all three tried to take advantage of her. The other three fighters enter the arena. One of them says he has been waiting for a long time and will finally be able to fight. This fighter is called Luo Ji. Long Jiang goes to him and tells him to remember what they talked about before. They should not fight with all their strength. Luo Ji says he already knows that. Luo Ji turns his head back and says that these three are just trash. He could fight alone against the three. The presenter says that this battle will pit Luo Ji against Xiao Han. Having said that, the presenter officially declares that the competition has begun. Xiao Han says he wants to see if Luo Ji is really all that he says he is. Luo Jie replies that unfortunately, he doesn't have time to engage in conversation games, he only has one job there, which is to clean up the trash from the arena. Xiao Han transforms into his S-level beast soul, Silver Moon Poisonous Scorpion. Lin Yuan looks at him and thinks that after the beating he took in the forest, his strength has risen from the 6-star Beast King level to the 7-star level. Luo Jie begins to merge with his beast and transforms into a beast, the audience is scared by this, as they have never seen this beast soul before. Just looking at it, they felt fear, as he had two wings on his back as strong as an ox and looks like a tiger. Xiao Han, seeing this, is already a little scared. Luo Jie quickly begins his attack. Xiao Han notices this and uses his secret ability, Silver Moon Thrust. His stinger begins to glow, 
but the fierce Luo Jie doesn't care about it and continues to advance without hesitation. Xiao Han begins to use his stinger as fast as he can, but Luo Jie dodges all attacks and mocks him, saying that it is extremely slow for him. Xiao Han continues attacking, but Luo Jie continues dodging without difficulty. Xiao Han can't believe that there is such a big difference in power between them. Luo Ji prepares to finally attack, but Xiao Han manages to stop him, using his stinger again to attack first. Xiao Han says that even a genius still has flaws. The stinger was close, almost hitting Luo Ji. Then Xiao Han thinks that finally the first victory would be his. But Luo Ji dodges and says that Xiao Han is really trash, as he just has to see a small flaw, and he bites the bait. Xiao Han realizes that Luo Ji left the flaw on purpose, but now it was too late. Luo Ji, with just one attack, cuts Xiao Han's stinger in half, causing him to scream in pain. Quickly, Luo Ji approaches Xiao Han and hits him with a very strong blow, smashing him against the ground and winning the battle. The presenter interrupts the fight and says that the result has been decided. The audience goes crazy with Luo Ji's strength and also with his cruelty. Lin Yuan is not so impressed by this, and just says that this Luo Jie really had some strength. Wang Jin asks not to underestimate him, as from what he heard, Luo Jie has enough strength to compete with Long Xiang. The presenter invites the second competitor from each team to come up to the arena. The first one comes up and introduces himself, saying his name is Liang, and asks Luo Jie to give him some advice. Luo Jie tells him to stop talking nonsense and show some relevant skill. Liang insists, and... As he merges with his beast soul, asks again for Luo Ji to give him some advice. Quickly he merges, and the battle begins with Liang's attack. But Luo Ji dodges and realizes that it is really interesting. But suddenly, Luo Ji is caught by the attack he thought he had dodged. Liang takes the opportunity and uses his attack, causing pain to Luo Ji. Liang looks at this and thinks it's working, but this makes Luo Ji extremely angry. He says that just because of this, the two still want to trap him. Luo Jie uses his wings and strength and breaks free, shattering the tentacles that were holding him. Liang is scared by this and decides to use his secret ability, Thunder Sky Curtain. Several lightning bolts begin to appear around the arena. Luo Ji, with one of his legs, says that this is just a small trick and begins to cut the lightning bolts that were going to hit him. Liang can't believe this is happening, as Luo Ji had disappeared from the arena. But suddenly, he appears behind Liang and says that, unfortunately, it's the end. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon, and like the video. Thank you.